recoge cuando quiera yo ya voy a tener y me dice que yo guapo y también tengo un flow que mata. ¿Quién va? Las drogas se venden como fruta, paraíso de los gatos, tú disfrutas, paraíso de los gantos. Bebiendo jarabe con dos p con más adelante. Coca dry tranqui, mocato sin el mando, haciendo lucas como Andy. Paraíso de los gantos, ya ve. Entonces p se los fumes se ponen fuera de tu idea. Entonces p que hablan p de mí, que ahora que les parta cuál. Paraíso de los gantos, los mato en 30 segundos. Peluche ya no water, los no va y flow bate. Dale con la carcha, somos los niños de la calle atrás, ni carte. No me eche el aliento más, solo a buscarte. No te pongas filosófico, me pego el descarte. Dan, dan, dan. Estoy dripping como un carro, con los clones y con los cortes. A ver, cacho se reparte, de estos titos si te paro. Para eso de los carros, con los clones y con los cortes. A ver, cacho se reparte, de estos titos si te paro. Para eso de los carros. Yo solo tío me voy a jugar, tú vas. Si lo pagaste ni pa paraíso de los gatos, tú disfrutas paraíso de los gantes. Bebiendo jarabe con dos pum, con más adelante. Si no no se chan, fumando chante con la chanta, haciendo lucas como Andy. Paraíso de los gantes. Hasta esos se los fume, se ponen fuera de tu idea. Hasta esos se los fume, se ponen fuera de tu idea. Mundo se los fume, 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 se los fume. Ya ve. El paraíso de los cantos
te pare, tú sabes, baby, que yo soy una gárgola. Moviéndote culo, papi, tú te pones a rezar. Que sabes que yo te pongo bici. Y me cambié el cuando te veo dreaming con alguien más. Tú sabes, baby, que yo soy una gárgola. Moviéndote culo, papi, tú te pones a rezar. Tú sabes que yo a ti te pongo bici. Y me cambié el cuando te veo dreaming con alguien más. Sin compromiso, mami, dale hasta el piso. Con esa carita linda yo no me complico. Me papi, si fuera yo mi cuenta, tiempo te la hay, baby, yo no lo medito. Mm. Se esconde, no, nena. Papi, pa' mi mente en ese caso no es dilema. You make me hit in rojo y me voy a Mándame un día y nos comemos en luna llena, ey. Baby, pégate, muévelo y se va, eh. No te hagas lo que todos saben que es Gantel. Ponte en esa pose para saber cómo se hace. Soy una gárgola, salgo de noche con todos mis gatos derrapando hasta en los coches. Vita encendida, todo de roce, la vivienda activa para el perro hasta las 12. Un, dos, tres, con la nalga para el piso, la vivienda sola, nadie le da permiso. Prende y pasa, lo seguimos en casa, que yo tengo un par de amigos para quemar la sasa, oye. Bandida, pero tú eres una atrevida, cuando baila está encendida. Le pide al DJ que ponga el show y con la blue que grosería.
Y quién me dice a mí que hoy no voy a salir? Y quién me dice a mí que hoy no voy a salir? Yo lo que quiero es bailar hasta que el sol salga aquí. Dame ron, dame ron, dame ron, 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 
Stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Two teams have already qualified for playoffs, and today, the final two spots are on the line. Who is going to make the top four? There's only one way to find out. Stick with us today, because this is day five of Masters Madrid, coming at you live from the Madrid Arena. Of course, I'm Golden Boy. You got Mimi. You also got Kakuka. And uh, Kakuki, yesterday, I heard yeah. you commentating some uh, some Heretics action. Did you uh, like it? It was awesome. It was great to... It was. I mean, the energy in the room was yeah. absolutely electric Didn't yesterday. answer her question. I did I liked it, Ben. I said, I liked it. <laughs> she, he, did, he did. He did say that he wow. liked it. I'm Maybe. gaslighting him You're on not frame listening one. to your host. Come on. No, typical, I don't typical listen Typical Mimi, to just ignoring things. Because I was listening everything. to her the whole day. Uh, yeah, I get the bias. I see it here. Uh, but it's great to have you back on the desk with us. How was that experience, though? It was great. Um, I think that we were very looking forward to that moment. It's sad that Heretics lost, but yeah. hey, that's the competition, and we're happy that Paper X made it back, oh, yeah. you know, the win. It, it, it was still exciting. Let's actually go ahead and talk about what we ended up seeing yesterday. <laughs> no, 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 because it was actually that last map was unreal. And, uh, of course, if we take a look at what happened yesterday, starting off with that uh, very very clean, let's say, for the first map, 2-0 uh, uh, Loud versus Fan Plus Phoenix. I think that we were surprised. We are also very looking forward to if we were going to see that Phoenix action finally came into fruition yesterday. Well, there was Fun Plus Phoenix, but there was also yeah, a Phoenix for Loud as well, but we knew there was going to be the Fun Plus Phoenix. Yeah, Loud, honestly, pretty dominant there. Send FPX home, but they had a much better fighting chance on the second map. We then went on to this absolute banger. Wild. It was where, a banger. In, in my opinion, it looked like Team Heretics was the better team for the majority of this, for those first Are you saying two that maps. just because no, I'm I'm no, saying that because that's true. They were playing excellent throughout this series. I think but Coach they, Alex felt the same way too. Yeah, he did. And they, they just let it slip a few rounds towards the end of map two, end up on this map three. And then in the second half, Paper X just come alive. And for the first time this year, I think actually looked like Paper X. Yeah, exactly. I was seeing, you know, uh, Benji Fisher just, just standing up, being like, sit down, sit down. And Paper X was like, sit down? You, okay. you want me to sit ben? down? I will sit down. Yeah, they, they did not. They, oh, okay. Well, uh, for those who can put the context together on that one. The, that being said, though, I do want to say uh, emotions were running high on that stage yesterday, and it was 
awesome to see how passionate our players are here. Of course, here are the matches that are going to be on the docket today. You're going to have Loud versus EDG, and then you will have Carmon Core taking on Paper Rex. So not a quick, uh, or sorry, a quick turnaround, rather, for those uh, for Loud and for pa Paper Rex after yesterday. It absolutely is. But it is wild that we're sending two of these teams home today. I think someone could make an argument for, for any of these four squads being in that top four. Yeah. Uh, these elimination matches are going to be so tense. Exactly. And as we are going to just have half of the teams, we could potentially have no EMEA in those playoffs or no China at all. And it would just wild. be the battle between Americas and Pacific. Yeah, which would be like... That's so surprising <laughs> to say, too, if that happens. Especially for Pacific. I was like... I was such a hater coming into this event, and both of their teams have just gotten so much. I wasn't a Gen G hater, but Paper X in particular has gotten so much better throughout this event, in particular that last match. Yes. Now, I believed in Gen G the entire time, and everyone I did was too. You're not special. Well, I, I, I think actually, a lot of people did. My mom called me and told me that I am quite special. So really? thank you so much for that. I trust your mom too. I trust your mom. I trust my mama. But in any case, so hi mom. Uh, that brings us to today's Mastercard fan poll: Which team has the best shot of making playoffs? Scan that QR code. Cash a vote. We'll go ahead and check out the results in just a little bit. Curious to see what you guys think because it really, it's anyone's ball game here. And also, don't forget, use that hashtag Masters Madrid as well as hashtag VCT across all the social media so that you can see your stuff appear on the broadcast. Uh, but, you know, I, I was told as we were getting ready for today, you know, I'm the host of the show. I like to think I'm the captain of the enterprise, if you, you will. Uh, sure. and, and, and I was told, hey, we're going to do this game and uh, you're not hosting it. Kakuk is hosting it. So yes. what do you have for us today? Exactly. So I know that you two have enjoyed, have been enjoying your time here in Madrid, but I wanted to put you guys to the test, bring those buzzers in, uh, and see if you've been paying attention to what is out there in Madrid y nada más. So it's Madrid <laughs> and that's it. And that's all. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, this is very easy. The function is very easy. I'm going to show you four images. Okay. One of them is not going to belong to Madrid. And we have to so buzz it's like, in. spot the odd one out. Okay. okay? You guys you ready? Some rules? You can play from home. Okay. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. First one of all, which uh, of these is not Spanish cuisine? Migas, oh. fabada, polenta, or gazpacho? Uh, okay, Alex? Gazpacho. Gazpacho's from Andalucía. Oh, Come on. no. no! Mimi, you want to give it a try? Polenta. Polenta is yeah, actually, actually Italian. Yeah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm not mistaken. So one point goes for yeah. Mimi. Yeah. Come on, Alex. I, I, I actually, actually didn't know that. I'll, I'll bring that. you some gazpacho because in Mercadona they have a very nice one, so I'll, I'll bring oh, you some. Please, I will no really worries. Like it so much. Thank Next you so much. picture. I'm proud of you, Mimi. Um, Thank you. Which of these places is not in Madrid? La Puerta de Alcalá, Cibeles, Don't Gran Vía, o Las Ramblas? Before buzzing in. Is that yeah. the rules? Yes. Right. Well, I just violated okay. it. Go for it. No, okay. Go for it. Go for it. Um, what is not in Madrid? You're very fast, so I am hoping that you get this Cibeles. one right. Nope, Cibeles is the fountain in Madrid. Alex? All right, it will be uh, the Puerta a la, uh, Puerta no. de Alcala. No. No? Actually, they're both. I, I mean, you've already, you know, you're both wrong, but you want to go? Okay, maybe? yeah, it, Las Ramblas. Las Ramblas, actually, Las Ramblas is like in like Barcelona. Because ah, ah, okay. okay. next event, I, next time we will go to Barcelona, right? And I'll show you around our Las Ramblas. Not okay. in Madrid. All right, that's perfectly yeah. fair. All right, what okay. we got next? Okay. okay, so no point for either of you. Let's go on to right. the third one. After yeah, getting it wrong. Which one? This one is especially for you, Mimi. Okay. Ta Tailored to you. Which one is not a metro stop in Madrid? I, I got No, I busted. I need to read them first, guys. She's got to read the question, I've Mimi. I've <laughs> Go for it. La Latina Sol, Callao, o el Paseo de Gracia? I've been to three of these, Paseo de Gracia. You're right, exactly. Paseo de Gracia is also uh, in Barcelona. For this one, she wins. Two of these are on the same line, and Seoul is the main all station. All I'm going to say is... I love this girl. All I'm going to so say is... <laughs> I mean, all, both are on line five. Seoul's a major interchange. I don't know what Paseo de Gracia... Paseo de Gracia is actually in Barcelona as well. Oh. Mimi, nice. ma'am, can she read the question? No. Exactly. Okay, next we, we need to play fair. We need to play fair, okay? Uh, so let's hands, go... Hands behind let's my Let's get into the last one. Let's, let's, let's get into the last one. Okay. This one is worth a million points. Ay, Dios. Which of these museums is not in Madrid. El Museo del... Maybe! Oh, wait, I thought you I answered the question. You I need to read, read the answers, answers too. <laughs> I don't know how this works. I'm going to just... Uh, okay, I'll tell you what, guys, you have, you, a good show. <laughs> you have a good show. I'm just going to walk <laughs> off, if that's okay. All right, go, Mimi. I just, no, I, I cheated. You can... Well, honestly, first. I'm still, like, not 100% sure, but I will go Museo Thyssen de uh, Borne... Borremisa. Borremisa? Uh, no, that's actually here. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay. Mimi, you want to give it a try? Um... 
Museo del Prado. Museo del Prado is also here. It's actually the Museo Picasso. Didn't you see that it's a... Oh! Oh! Yeah. And Museo Prada. Picasso, funny enough, is also in Barcelona, even though Picasso is not from Everything's Barcelona. Everything's in Barcelona. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, leaving the hint there that maybe next time we you can go to Barcelona. You more metro questions. Yes. I would have <laughs> won. Maybe well, give me a park question. Throw that yeah. in. And also, I mean, I've basically just been working and going to the hotel <laughs> and then working and then going to the hotel. So, Maybe yes. I've been wandering around. She's, <laughs> she's working She's a walker. Wake up earlier. I'm a sleeper. You, you're not. <laughs> Sure. Rising and grinding like me. <laughs> when 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 your knees hurt when you hit 30, you talk to me then. All right, guys. So you're barely a day over 25. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. No. I don't believe that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive into our first matchup. No more funnies. We're going to talk about some video games for a moment here and talk about this matchup that we're seeing here. And and what I really like about this is very rarely in esports do you get uh, two teams that mm -hmm. made very minimal changes. Aspas, only player that has not been that's not in this lineup, but yet yes. these guys have ran into each other time and time again. Exactly. And this is the third time. Currently, they're in that 1-1 one -one situation. And it's so important because Loud kicked EDG out of the previous uh, uh, champs in yes. 2023. Not only that, if we take a, a look at the other match that they played against each other, it was EDG taking them out of Master Tokyo. Do you know also what's, uh, you know, funny synchronicity is that EG was who sent them both into the lower bracket. So they, they have an enemy in common, but it's more important <laughs> to, to face the enemy that you have in front of you. And that last match was so important between yeah. these teams. Yes. It was a top six game to make it into the top four. If EDG had won that, it would have been their deepest tournament run ever. That was the breakout year for EDG, and it was shut down by Loud. So they absolutely have a pressure to win this rematch. Yeah, this is going to be an intense game 100%. But for now, though, let's actually send it over to Mika, who's standing by with nobody, and I mean the player. I hope she's standing with someone. Hey, Kong Kong, can we pull you aside for a quick question? The legend right here. So this is, you know, this is your third time playing up against Loud in an international tournament. So I was just wondering if you were looking to settle the score or maybe get revenge uh, for FPX the other day. 这也是你们第三次在世界赛场上和老的碰面了 um, I think it's not really good thing to have too much pressure on our shoulder. Maybe we just want to focus on our own thing and play well in today's match. We need to, today's match first. All right, it's going to be an exciting one. Good luck. Apologies for that. It was Kong Kong, but still, you know, always great to hear uh, from the ace of this team. And it's a lot of pressure, you know, for these guys coming into this one. I think a lot of people had EDG songs high, especially after they dominated their region. And now they're in a position where they could just be going out before playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for this team, I think this would be a big break if they were to get grouped at this mm. event. Like I was mentioning before, all of their 2023 year was this uh, upward trajectory. They were always placing better at every international tournament they went to. If they lost here, it would be a big difference. But thus far, this event, we have seen this squad struggle. In particular, this last match against Gen G, they dominate map one, and then they absolutely 11 fall rounds to total. bits yeah. in the second two. 11 rounds total between maps two and three for EDG. That is crazy. They the were shut down. Same one 11 that they had at the, uh, um, well, that's 11 rounds that they got against them in uh, every yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't sound no. very good, right? But no. as you were saying, Mimi, 2023 was the year for this, guys. This year has not to be any different. Uh, they managed to make it out of groups time and time again, but it was never easy. It was always uh, right before they were kicked out of the tournament that they were uh, able to push through and make it to playoffs. Yeah, it really felt like their confidence was faltering. Players not going for the fights they normally would. And, and then it got to the point where players are kind of taking risks, going off on their own and just getting picked apart by Gen G. But it was a different story, map one of that series. Uh, we saw this squad going out and looking excellent, playing against a Gen G that admittedly was looking pretty weak on that ice box, but players like nobody in particular were, were excellent there. Yeah, exactly. I think that the difference when we have a nobody showing up, I mean, this is, this is, and actually uh, showing up is massive. I feel like he feels uh, so comfortable when he's in the sky. I think that he was one of the main reasons that they were able to close this split in the way that it was happening. We know that Ken Ken is explosive. We know of the aim of this guys, but actually when they make the utility fall into place at yeah. the right time, you see the EDG that, that makes support, your dream. 
when that, that back line support has his exactly, back. Oh boy. Exactly. It's not you don't feel like you're crazy supporting this team just because they come from China and they do these crazy things. Yeah, for EDG, they they play a very slow style. They build up on their yep. attack sides around Kong Kong, around setting him up for a pick. But that means there's a lot of feast or famine about him. And yep. if he doesn't get that open, what, what? Feast or famine. Sometimes they be feasting, oh. sometimes oh. they famine. they be famine. I love learning <laughs> I don't <laughs> like saying be famine like that. <laughs> um but but yeah, when they're when they're putting him in these positions where he's taking risks, always taking these opening kills, you really need to see the rest of the team kind of step up. And for me, when they were in those man down situations, when Kong Kong wasn't getting them that opener, that's where their fundamentals were falling apart, where they mm. were taking these individual risks. Because in the past, we've seen an EEG that's actually really good at still finding the advantageous fight in these late rounds and, and saving these moments, even when Kong Kong dies. But what was wild was that they lost, despite the fact that Kong Kong was playing like Got this. It. Like, it, it was ridiculous how good this guy yeah. was. There, it's very clear that, like, when that support system is behind Kong Kong, right, yeah. they can make magic happen. Mm. But you really need that to be consistent because Loud will punish that. Yeah, exactly. I think that going back also to those fundamentals that Loud is going to be punishing, I think that Haodong has given us a very good tournament, probably not the other day, but the previous one, the first that, that they played, it was amazing. If we take a look at the head-to-head -head between the two duelists, between Kong Kong and Quake, I think most of the questions in Loud this year were actually about this player. Is he going to perform? the roles that he bought, the, the agents that, that he's playing, is it going to be fit in the team? Well, if we get top Kang Kang, like we yeah. got the other day, and we get top quick, this can be a very, very close matchup. But we haven't seen top We're quick. We're still waiting exactly. for top quick. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't really see it in Americas either. The, the team has continually repeated this line mm. that he's not replacing Osbach. We're course. not trying to make him the same team. But you still kind of have to draw that comparison to the way the team plays. Yeah. They build a lot of their comps in a way where he's playing the Phoenix, playing yeah. the Yoru. They're going for these wild double or triple flash compositions. And when he's playing on those roles, it's fine to be a lot more of a role player, to take a step back, almost be an initial uh, an additional initiator for the squad but when they're playing maps like breeze which we saw from them get really dangerously yes. close against fpx we really need to see more from this guy when you're at the pro level and you're playing a map like breeze you, your jet really can't be exactly. double negative if you want clean wins that was against fpx edg have a hell of a lot more firepower exactly when you go against seat teams that shoot this hard is something that you need to rely on and also when we talk about loud even though time has you know gone by this is the team that we always address as the world champion yeah. team you know as sen was there in the past eg well that's a, a, another different story it's actually but quite this fascinating is always, who right? else do we yeah. still think like, he's a world champ <laughs> I mean, Every single time that they're I, I, on stage. Because I think it's just the fact that, like, Sadak himself holds himself to, like, incredibly high standard. Mm. But then on top of that, too, it's just, like, when you look at the players and who is out here. Because even Paperx doesn't, doesn't get that same kind of, like, yeah. respect, quote unquote, where it's yeah. like, they were, they it's were like oh, not, something I, crazy. I, is, it's not a, it might have been a paper. I think they get the respect because even though it's been two mm. years since they won that championship, the core of Sadak and Les and them, and in particular, to focus on Sadak, stays yeah. with this squad. He is a player that, no no matter the roster, no matter the team, no matter who's around him, he is a guy who is out there defining the meta mm -hmm. with whatever version of Loud it may be, enabling young players to be their absolute best and being highly competitive at a global stage. And the thing is, they are still fundamentally loud. What's more loud than coming to a global event, looking yeah. really tragic in, in their first series, losing something no one expected them to, showing up to the second and looking utterly revived. This team has kept its identity through year after year, and that's all about Sadak. And hear me out, I think that last year, Probably we we got the wrong idea because of what happened in Masters Japan. Uh, to just refresh your memory, guys, uh, what happened is that the teams that were first seed didn't have to go through that group stage, right? They yeah. got right into playoffs. But actually, it was the teams that went through the playoffs that surprised us the most. For example, EDG. Loud, the moment that they start playing, they get, I, I believe it was 2-0-2-0. Yeah, it, yeah. it was the whole time. So it's like, what is going on? I don't even remember on? them there. Someone exactly. said that they were there. I was like, I don't remember. Is the, is the, <laughs> that, that kind of effect that maybe they did not get to warm up. They did not get to get uh, those officials together before the big action happened. And the year they won the world championship, it was the same thing. 0-2 at yeah. Copenhagen going out yes. there. That was a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, this is a loud team who, who has had moments where when they're finding themselves, when they're in those early stages of development, trying to kind of put a pin on the meta, they do stumble sometimes. Yeah. And that's a real opportunity for yeah. EDG. Yeah, man. Innovating's a tough job, you know, and Sonic's been doing it for a minute Not now. Not many other teams take the risks that Loud does. Exactly. I, I couldn't agree more, and I think that's one of the reasons why we hold this team to such a higher standard. But for now, though, Mika Fab standing by this time with Cowanzine, and I hope I'm right. Hey, Cowan, Zian, big match coming up today. But, um, you know, you guys mentioned, have mentioned before uh, that
play against Chinese region is quite scary. So do you still feel this way even up against EDG, you know, a team that you guys are very, very familiar with? We have Arthur here to help with uh, some translation. Marcelo, é, a gente quer saber o que vocês estão achando do embate que vai ser, porque já mencionaram antes sobre a China, e que a China seria um adversário complicado, complexo de se lidar, porém vocês vão pegar a EDG hoje, que vocês já são mais familiares, já estão mais, meio que em casa. Qual é a sua opinião sobre? Cara, basicamente a China é, um, é um, uma região muito forte, e sempre um jogo difícil contra eles, ontem apesar de ser 2 a 0 foi um jogo muito difícil, foi 3 a 1 na Brise, e contra a DG vai ser mais um jogo difícil, a gente perdeu uma vez para eles em Tóquio e ganhou de 2 a 1 a última Champions, então vai ser um jogo muito difícil dessa vez. Overall, China is a very complex like opponent, like if I had to say, uh, yesterday despite we winning for like 2-0, it was a very like tight match overall. Uh, we, we do indeed have some, let's say, experience like against DG, one victory, one loss, but we are ready and prepared. All right, excited to see it. Good luck. Thank you. And of course, I expect nothing less from Loud. Just a second ago, we were talking about how this team, we always regard them top of class, honestly, because of the players that they have on the team. But what I find really fascinating is that Tuis and Kawanzi, not on that championship winning roster, uh, but we also hold them to that standard because of what we've seen them all throughout last year. These guys were so impactful. There's a reason why Sadak puts his trust in them. Yeah, there, there absolutely is a reason. It's because of his ability to develop these talents to be at the same level of those teammates that were exactly. with him when he won the championship. He imbues that into players like Tuis, like Kawa, and I think what all Loud fans are hoping for is that we can see that same development from Quick. Yeah, exactly, and we see it regionally with them in America, so we needed to see it back to uh, translate it here onto the big stage. It, it, it would be to nobody's surprise if they were the winners today, and it would still be considered a big upset if EDG is is the one that makes it to that uh, playoffs and Loud gets grouped in this part of the tournament. Yeah, it, the standards are incredibly high and obviously we've been talking about him the entire time here, but we gotta give him his flowers a little bit more here. Sadak, the, the, the guy who calls the shots, the man with the plan, uh, you know, in, and what's even great about him too, he's not just an IGL, this guy could frag with the best of them too. So it does feel like Sadak, he's gonna be a big difference maker as always in this match, Mimi. Yeah, his, his game yesterday was electric right yep. uh, occasionally Sudok will have a game we talk a lot about this in America yeah, yeah, where yeah. he shows up and he's like F it I'm gonna win yeah, and, and just falls out yeah <laughs> and starts taking some risks going for some individual plays but executing on them incredibly well yeah, it, that, that is what has always been a fun thing to watch with Sadak. And, you know, I, now I think uh, we're wondering what else do they have up their sleeve here? Because coming into this event, Breeze was the perma. We yeah. constantly saw them getting rid of that map. Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, they picked it and everyone's like, what the hell? <laughs> it was so confused. And they have not lost Breeze. At the beginning, we thought that this was just a bait for the other teams to just buy into it or maybe just leave it as a big question mark because they other teams wouldn't even consider it thinking that, they, that this is what was going to happen. But seeing two is also playing on the Viper on this map, having them having those two showings. Let's say also that they were against pretty unorthodox compositions. I still yeah. think that this needs a bigger test to yeah. actually resemble that they are very uh, prepared. But now it's Lotus, the map that they don't want to see, see. And if you think about it, across all the other regions, we've seen so much Lotus, That's so true. much Sunset. It's such a popular map that in preparation for this tournament, if there's a map that you don't feel very comfortable with, it's very, like, yeah. we can understand why Loud decides to just remove it from the Yeah, but what makes this even more interesting, though, is that, yes, Loud make that make those decisions, but it feels like this is a Loud that's starting to find that form again. Do you feel like that they are in a front-runner position here, Mimi, to, like, be, well, you know, like, the team that could do the thing that we always expect them to do? Top four performance, high placing, so on and so forth. Not yet, but this yeah. match could prove it to me. Okay. The, the reason I'm still hesitant is a few things. First of all, the map pool. We, we've thus far only seen from the maps they were playing the Phoenix Breach back in Americas. We've only seen the Ascent, which they changed to Yoru, yep. still looked shaky. We saw their and sunset, sunset yesterday, and I thought that was excellent. But we still don't have a lot of answers on how this map pool for Loud compares to the rest of the competition here. I 
also think we have not seen enough from Quick thus far. This guy needs to step it up, especially on the maps they're playing Jet, especially if they're going to be letting Breeze through vetoes. That map is so, so flippy. I think it's really dangerous if they let it through today against CDG. Exactly, and the bigger test for Quick is going to be on that Breeze, especially if he goes up against, we don't know Estelle if the map is going to be picked, but it doesn't yeah. matter if it's Breeze, if we uh, might get some uh, ice box, you know, like mine would be too mild uh, for it. But uh, to get one of those aim test duels, where even if things don't go well, what is going to be the protocol to have your uh, your duelist player feel comfortable enough so he doesn't like give up on the situation? Yeah, I mean, watching Loud in that first match, and honestly, towards the end of America's, I was feeling a little bit like, it, it's so over, being a Loud fan, sad <laughs> life out here. And I'm not fully on the, we're so back, Loud's gonna win the event train, but we definitely saw the glimmers of that. And I think mm. some said, I wanna talk more about that. That was a great example against FPX. They implemented the comp perfectly, the way that they were fighting for extremity control, the way they were calling around the map, and also the way their players, like Les, like Tuis, were stepping up to the plate. is starting to give me kind of the glimmers of the Loud who shows up as a top dog at internationals. Hopium or Copium? I think that's... I think that's hopium. I think okay. that's real like, honest hope. Okay. Today, today is the difference between hopium yes. and copium. Uh, we'll Absolutely. see. We'll see. All right, guys. Well, that's beautiful. You should be a poet. You <laughs> <laughs> should put that in a book somewhere. All right. Earlier, we asked y'all wonderful people back at home for the MassCard fan poll. Which team is most likely to earn a playoff spot? And the results are in. And y'all chose Carmine Core, which given how hype everyone was about this team coming in a bit, it doesn't beautiful shock blue. me. In a beautiful blue. It just goes Wait, what color, color is it? is blue. It is blue. Oh, it's that's deep. wonderful. Mm -hmm. you, you know, back to our previous topic of conversation, I would love to have like a live, laugh, love sign in my house that just says, the difference between hopium and copium is you. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. <laughs> Maybe you are the poet. I actually me. hope you someone makes better. that sign. Home that gets hire me. Really <laughs> oh man, look, guys, there's like so much that we could talk about here, but good news is we're going to find out where we're playing because we have the map select standing by. So let's find out where these players are electing to go. Welcome to Map Select presented by Omen. Loud was drawn first in the matchup during the draw yesterday, so you'll be a higher seed. Would you like Team A or Team B? Team B. Team B. So, EDG, you will be Team A, and we will start with your first ban. Ban uh, Ascent. Ascent. And then your ban? Split. Split. And then map number one from EDG. Icebox. Icebox. Side on Icebox. Attack. Attack. And map number two. Sunset. Sunset. Side on Sunset. Attack. Attack. Next set of bands starting with EDG, you have Bind, Breeze, and Lotus. Bind, uh, bind Lotus. Band Lotus. Your band, you have Bind and Breeze. We ban bind. Ban bind. So map number three by default is going to be breeze. EDG side on breeze. Attack. Attack. All right. Good luck to you both. Good luck. Good luck. Something that really stuck out to me there was Lotus yeah. going going a little further down the line than I was expecting Kukuka. Yeah, exactly. Uh, EDG has been also banning this map, so I was surprised. It was a little bit of a push and pull of yeah. who's going to ban it first. That's a game of chicken. Are we both going to be living it open? What is going to be happening here? And we see it is EDG actually that decides to ban it. So Loud is very, very convinced they do not want to face EDG on this split. I think this is legitimately a very good map pool for EDG. They're starting on Icebox, where Loud tends to be good on that map with the Harbor Viper, but they play one of those KO Sova flash comps that can fight into those walls really well. If they get a win there, they take Loud to Breeze, I think they have a real chance of winning this series, but I reckon it would be in the 2-1 fashion. For Loud, on the other hand, I think they want to avoid going to Breeze at all costs, in my opinion. I've not been impressed with any of the looks they've shown on that map thus far. I think that thus far, like individual form is so important on that map. Yeah. It's the, it is the map where that is the most important. And I think EDG beats them in that regard. Yeah, exactly. I completely agree with you. Also the confidence and the resilience that both of these squads have shown into when it comes to that last map. For some of them better than the other ones. So I'm, I'm scared in both regards to how, what happens when this map goes the distance and especially when things are not working. How, how are the solutions that they're going to find if some individuals cannot re really show up? It, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how all that pans out. But what I'm really excited for is honestly what this would mean for EDG if they yes. could win. They get revenge 
revenge on the team that knocked them out of champions, that stopped their excellent 2023 year. Yep. They get revenge on the team who just eliminated FPX, the other Chinese team representing here. And they get to make it into top four at a global event. They've been on this long, long climb, up mountain after mountain, to really be considered a top contender at international events. I think if they win here, if they're one of only four teams in the playoffs at Masters Madrid, it's really a chance for, for no one anymore to deny their form compared to the rest of the global competition. And this is a great opponent to, to, for, for doing so because if EDG has, has advanced, has progressed, has developed as a team, uh, all of these individuals should be yes. able to go head on head with, with, with but this. But how do you feel about the structure though? How do you feel about the fundamentals? Because right. I feel like Loud just have That's that so thing. in spades. That's the thing. This is a great test and let's say one of the final tests for, for this squad because Loud has played against most of the teams out there. They've been around for yeah. so long. They have such, uh, they have so much experience. They've played against every single playstyle. They know how to read onto all of these different situations and outcomes. So if they are able to even put on a good show, it shows that EDG, even if they're not, you know, top four, even if they were to lose, we need to see if they're on the right track. Yeah, this is really going to be decided by Icebox in this series mm. for, for me. For Loud, they play the Harbor Viper. Their fundamentals are so exceptional on this map. Their retake protocols are on point. This is a map where Les absolutely thrives on the Viper. And for EDG, we've seen some success. It's been a mixed bag in the past. They're playing yeah. the more default comp that, honestly, this Har Harbor Viper comp tends to do pretty well against. I think this is going to be make or break early in this series. Real quick, I don't know if you guys see our, our poll down at the bottom of the screen there but when we started this poll it was it was all out and as you guys were talking selling people on EDG I was seeing the numbers start to go up a little bit I don't know you, you feel like you guys are making some, some believers out there we should sell some bundles maybe <laughs> I think yeah I feel like this is pretty spot on I in my mind I think this is a 60 40 in favor of loud I think yeah. louder favored because their fundamentals have looked better Experience, in their last matches I yeah. think they have a, a stronger read on the meta EDG still playing basic old stuff from last year for the most part mm -hmm. and but for EDG there's always the upset potential the individual form has been electric. Kung Kung has been great. And it's just a team that no matter what form they've shown before, they always step up to their opponent. Yeah, exactly. Is the, the old guard versus a newer guard that we saw in 2023 make, looking to make a change also in 2024? Yeah, this is going to be an excellent day. Who's going to make it out into the top four? Let's find out. Is it Loud versus EDG? We got Carmine Core versus Paper X. Day five of Masters of Madrid starts right now. Was it hard, like, losing Jing and having to basically fill that hole? Mm, yeah, of course. I mean, he's been a big part of Paper X and finding someone that as good as him would be very hard. We had a new player. I mean, yeah, he's ready to show what he got, you know, this tournament. So, yeah, wait and see. I think it's just myself that not being confident, you know, because all the players in Paper X are, like, top-notch in the world. It's normal that you have sort of pressure. Quite honestly, I think we absolutely need to see more out of Monyet. When it comes to a tournament when you're not hitting shot, it's really hard to get back, but my teammates have been helping me a lot going through this. For us, it's just where we're all like very inexperienced, so like all this is new to us, and we all just want to like do everything that we can every single day to prepare ourselves for the situation. Carmine Krupp. Their playstyle is the same like us, actually gonna be like a creation team against a creation team. I'm really excited for the blood that Para mí ser líder o líder do do da molecada, né, do dos garotos. Eu queria muito deixar uma boa impressão neles, que eles se divertam jogando. Algo que que é uma uma honra para mim. 
新面孔的出现嘛，对于我来说也就还好，就因为我也可能打了两年世界赛了，然后我自己也是一个二十岁的选手，所以说我觉得我也是小孩，他们也是小孩。A gente chegou até aqui, como que chama confiança, confiar um no outro, confiar um no mesmo, que vai dar tudo certo, dar o nosso máximo e sempre com um sorriso no rosto. Mas eu espero que vocês saibam que nós sempre estamos em frente, em frente de nossa imaginação, em frente de nossa frente, em frente de nossa frente. E depois, quando vocês verem o ZMGZKK, vocês vão ver o seu rosto. Between two teams that could very well go the distance in this competition. On the one end, you have EDG, a squad that's coming into this one, holding the entire region of China on their back because they are the last remaining Chinese team in this competition. But on the other side, you have Loud, a squad that has been here before. They have reached the top of the mountain and they are looking to get back there again. Two teams synonymous with their regions. EDG has been the number one Chinese representative for as long as China. China has been at global events. They've constantly been on this upward trajectory, and Loud was the one to stop them last year. They have a chance to do it again if they want a shot at playoffs. Exactly, and America's looking to be the strongest region out there for now. They could be that for just a second if Loud manages to win both them and Sentinels, making it on to playoffs, showing that maybe 2024 is not the year of the rookies, but the year of Americas. It's possible, but for EDG, if they're too win this one they get revenge for fbx this is the team that just knocked their compatriots out yeah and there is certainly going to be a lot of tension on that stage because as we saw yesterday right in the uh in the paper x game uh in, in, excuse me the paper x heretics game you know when you're in these elimination matches you're in these high pressure moments right you got to wear it all out there on the stage and kakuka i think both of these teams they're going to do just that we, we, both teams have like very famous gifts of them like mocking yes. one another so i think it's safe to say that we're going to get some more uh, moments like that hear tonight. me out we all remember <laughs> kangan Kan standing up and just showing that operator and we all, all remember sadak just going eh, what yeah. are you doing I don't yeah, know. yeah what is that what is that is that a toy i don't see it's not hurting me uh but yeah definitely we've seen how the character ha has also impacted the players from yes. your own team and the the your your opponents so today especially jumping onto icebox a map where individuals are so important i think that the start for both of these teams is going to be very important sentinels for example uh, on their first match probably one of the reasons why it got so close is that they were losing up uh, uh, on the earlier rounds then on the second time that they played around they were so comfortable at the beginning of the maps if loud can also have that kind of mechanism they can join their competition and when we talk about the history there's only been one change that's qck on this map he's playing the jet and he's going up against a man who many consider the best operator player in the world it is going to be a trial for fire by the guy that they say isn't replacing us boss but on some of these maps he is being asked that yeah. on on ice box on breeze he has to step up to that plate against kong kong yeah this could be a moment here for QCK, and we'll have to see if this is gonna come to fruition. Of course, for Kong Kong, he could very well shut it all down here, but it's time now for our first pistol round of the day. So let's go ahead, send it over to your casters. You got Mitch and Tom. 
Thank you so much, Golden Boy. Yes, we're here in Madrid, ready to kick off this game, Tom. The pistol's going to be underway in just a second. Quick thoughts on Loud and EDG before we get into this one, because we've seen this matchup before. Yeah, and it is 50-50. Uh, one team won the first, one team won the second. They have both gone back and forth. We've even seen it across the stage. Sadak versus Khan Khan, the sort of faces they've pulled, even mocking each other at times. So I think this one might just get fiery. And honestly, I'm, I'm so excited to get into this matchup. Well, the pistol round is kicking off with EDG on the defensive side here on Icebox and Loud already making their way up towards Nobody. It looks like there could be a fight on his hands, but Nobody really spotted them down below. The info's there for EDG and the opening pick is two, but a trade back as Loud looked to quicken the pace towards this site. Nobody's tucked into the corner, has an opportunity to catch him on the way, but again, just fades back. Nice shot by QCK. The advantage now for Loud, but the players have fully rotated in. And EDG will attempt this retake moments from now when this wall falls or when they step right on through it to spam the game for now. And a wide swing from QCK opens up all the space. Loud have got their pistol in the bag. Yeah, a solid start from then and kind of what you expect to see on this attack side. I think EDG are going to be waiting to get onto theirs. That was where they had the real success. Of course, this is one of those matchups where I, I almost feel like teams were playing a bit of chicken when it came down to the veto. Uh, obviously, the initial ban coming through from EDG of Ascent was very surprising, considering Loud have looked shaky, their identity looking a little bit lost, but a map that they smashed them on at champs and maybe just having some flashbacks. Then you've also had the removal of Split, and both teams sort of floating Lotus, their perma ban, until we end up on the map's run. I feel like we've ended, so I want to say, somewhat in the favor of Loud. I, I feel like their map pool just that little bit deeper. But when EDG go into their opponent's map throughout this tournament thus far, they have been very, very good. Well, this round doesn't have a lot to speak for, but the flank up by Chi Chun, the sneaky play on mid. And he had been spotted earlier, obviously, as we saw Sadik take a bit of an engagement with him. So Loud aren't allowing any free space to be taken by that defensive side. The problem here is if they do feel boxed in by Chi Chu and any potential B pushes, they'd be running into an A stack. We can see EDG have fully stacked up that site. As you can see, Loud are not looking to commit blindly. They've spread back out and found some space. Mm, yeah, yeah, I actually think that that's really important that they go back and get that fight because it does put the doubt in the minds of their opponents a little bit. EDG were able to stack up on A because they had the information that they had control for anybody rotating back. Even still, though, with 40 seconds left, it does look like they're going to be pushing into the EDG stack, which is probably one of the only ways they could really take any damage in this round. You know, this is perfect. You've taken down Chichu. At this point, you assume there's someone left. towards B. They'll hear the Viper wall go up. You don't have control of mid, so the rotates will go towards that side. But there was nobody there from EDG. Everybody still patiently waiting on A, and now's their chance to get some value. One kill is all they'll get. A big stop by Loud. Even though they run into the stack, they find all the value. The second round, put their Viper down. cleanly nice. in their pocket. Yeah, nice work from them. Just taking their time. Obviously, on the other side of things, EDG didn't really have anything, so I don't think they're going to feel too hard done by by the fact that they don't really get too many kills. Now they're looking to invest back in with the rifles on every single player. Now, I do think it's going to be fairly important for EDG to get off to a good start in this series because we, we've already seen that a couple of times in their match versus Gen G. They did very well in the early and then they seem to teeter out a little bit, slow down and louder a team that will punish you if they're able to get off the mark. Here. And this is one of the players we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on. As it was said on the desk, he may not directly be coming in as an Aspas replacement, but when you're coming up against a player like Khan Khan, you need that star power. Already though, Smoggy off to a flying start. Cowan Zine is dropped, Sova gone. And it's definitely going to make things a little bit more difficult now that you don't have your initiator. Yeah, one of the things they've been struggling with is QCK getting into sites and without having a Sova to reveal them up. It's going to be a bit tougher. Now no flank protection either as Sadik falls. This is how these rounds typically go when you slow down the pace. You're not going to win most of the fights you're taking. And in this case, none of them so far. The final attempt will be to group up to make some value out of this lower buy round for Loud. They want to drop a couple of weapons out of EDG's hands, but just look how patient and passive this defensive side is being. They're willing to give up the site control and play the retakes together. Yeah, they've already got them pretty much boxed in once again. The same push has come through from Chichu. Nice work from QCK, though. That'll be Khan Khan down, making this one at least a little bit more competitive, trying to get a bit more aggressive as he's going to go through the utility that has been placed down. That flank is the major danger, but with how far forward they've actually gone, 
I don't know if there's anybody that can actually be picked off. He needs to go huge from this position, and while it's only going to be the one kill, there comes Chichu in from behind, and Lass is left to try and clutch this one versus three. There probably isn't anybody else you'd want, but even he can't win out that one. Not the end of the world at all. I mean, they get the two kills. It's sort of bare minimum done housekeeping in a round like this. They didn't overinvest. You know, you said there were some rebuys, but again, fairly minimal considering the lack of losses. It's all right for Loud. This is the formality of early Valorant out of the way. It's sort of weird to not see that third round one. Most of the games we've been covering, Thomas, it's been pure chaos by now, but well, Paper X game later on. Stay tuned for yeah, that. To be fair, we have been doing <laughs> China versus Pacific in every game so far. So I, I, I think it's understandable why some of these games have gone the other way. Even still, though, this is where things get interesting. QCK has been doing well in the early rounds as well. This means he's already going to have himself Bladestorm and an extra 4,000 credits in the bank. So he's pretty well stacked get out of my way. to go for this early push. Haodong's going to be the one under pressure. and. Almost has to fall back completely. Doesn't have any support, so his main goal is just going to be to delay as much as possible. And for the other side of things, they're just taking their time. Yeah, rightfully so. Bit of map control, pushing the EDG side out of position, grabbing orbs and looking for picks. As you said, QCK has had a good time on the way through, a difference from some of the series we've seen. And now he's got the Blade Storm to try and pick these players off. But after seeing that control, grabbing their orb, and not finding any advantages being given away, they're rotating back. Yeah, I think they had no plan to ever go in this direction. The spike was dropped outside deep on B. There was no one going to retrieve it. This was all an attempted ruse, and when I say attempted, it has worked wonderfully. There's currently only one player left on the site, but EDG have made the realization. Pushing players up mid, got nobody deep in control. They've also got Chichu rotating in, but they are about to be under some serious pressure. It's the right call again. Same thing we've seen from EDG. Just a passive play on A. Very confident in their retake game. No big ultis online to help them. And a few shots through the wall that actually hurt Konkan. He's down to half HP. A little below. Not going to be ideal for the fight back through. The plant seems to be secured. The cove broken and a snake bite down. But that's not going to deter them. Now it's time to fight back in. And they've already lost their entry, man. Konkan down. Kalanzine still in position. The Bladestorm looking to find value. Players up top as well. I mean, Loud are not playing a retake on this. They're not trying to deny the defuse. They're trying to deny any boots on the ground. But they've lost a few fights. Two ease is very low. It's, they've got to be extremely oh, careful here. And with less down, even more so. Sonic dropped. And it's only the 30 HP. Two ease left to try and close this round out. Already being stuck to halfway. Two ease needs to time this just right. And the shot is perfect. <laughs> Definitely got a little bit dicey in the end. I think that pre-fire shot from Smoggy basically made it interesting. Because up until that point, I was like, yeah, 3v2 post plan. You've still got less alive. I'm like, okay, I'm not really too worried for them. And then he hits that shot, and it gets very interesting. The thing is, though, I feel like so far Loud have been fantastic with their orb management. They make sure at the beginning of the round that the reason they push B is to get to ease that orb, or that orb even. And then he moves back in the other direction plants as well, so then he's able to actually use the Reckoning. So that's what kept them back for so long. That's what allowed Loud to garner so much space. And OK, it gets a little bit dicey in the end, but the fact is they got the round under their belt. I really like the way we just saw that round play out. Uh, as we said, right off rip, Loud had a game plan, and it didn't look like EDG threw any spanners into the works, try as they might. We saw the re-aggression when Loud had gone up on B of Haodong. He got behind yellow and actually had really good spacing uh, in making it there if Loud had have been committing. He's been quite good at that, at reading the ebb and flow of the round. Here, he's made the right call. Stand behind that wall because Loud are coming in to get the plant on B. Oh, he's, he might have an opportunity here. Oh, the opportunity's gone. Yeah, he was hoping that he could make the player vulnerable and then right-click them as they moved away. I don't mind the idea, ultimately only having a classic, but now it's looking like a formality. Not much invested and more. What was invested was actually <laughs> at least a Guardian onto Kankan. He's immediately dead already, though. We're actually going to see oh. that Hunter's Fury thrown in. I, I guess they really believe they could take this round away from them. Chichu's managed to find another one. Maybe they might be right, but Sadak still just holding down the fort. Smoggy's found one more. Eventually, though, it does look like Loud are going to stabilize, and that's a pretty big ult to commit off rip, right? I mean, it's not even like they were already positioned to, to have a chance. They just went whole hog a one on for one it. trade and a post plant. And they had pistols on the way back through, and post plant. Yeah, it's just... 
just a bit strange. Timeout from EDG. And, okay, looking at where their ults are, it's not like they're going to have a huge problem in the ult economy. They've got a couple big ones coming online soon. Uh, one thing that's drawing my eye, though, is the fact that Sadek has a lockdown now, and they're not going to have too much to deal with it. They're going to have to rely on other well-placed utility. Yeah, at least a lot of ults other than that are coming online. That could be the reasoning from EDG, is make this one a bit more costly, have a chance to win the round, and then we've got one ult online, and three very close. So it could just be an argument of, okay, we don't actually just want to have them all at the same time and then just spam one round. But yeah, definitely a, an audacious attempt. Again, though, Loud already 4-1 in the lead. As said, I, I feel like expectations are there for both teams to have their strengths over on that attacking side. I think that's where we've seen, uh, especially EDG, really, when they did manage to beat out Genji, they were really good on their attack. And it's where Kankan really came alive. That's my major worry, though is so far in this tournament, going by ACS, going by ADR, going by the most stats that involve kills, Kankan's at the top. Right now, he has one, which is not a great sign of EDG are going to be winning this because there have been serious vulnerabilities. Even, even games that they've lost, he's still been in the 20 plus kills bracket. So I'm a little bit worried for them at this point in time that if he doesn't come online, which I'll be honest, I think he will, but if he doesn't, this is going to be a, a blitz of a game. I mean, we saw a good attack side from EDG on this map up against Genji, but we're going to need to see them build those foundations here on the defense. So far, it's been pretty lights out from Loud. And the movement towards B, quick. They're making a lot of noise on the way through, but again, it has the same vibe as before. Just look at the dots on the minimap falling back. They've dragged a huge rotation from EDG. There's now three players on the B side, one close by around mid, and only one man. Standing alone is nobody on the A site, up on pipes. And if he doesn't move quickly, he won't have a way to fall back. He's going to have to commit to this angle in the next couple seconds, unless we see him retreat. And, well, he's now stuck. He's going to have to hold his ground and take this battle with the lockdown in play. I wonder what the idea here is. Maybe a flash from afar to allow him to swing oh! in the corner. Maybe he'll just go for it. Just the one to be found. That's it. It's a pocket of space. Khan Khan has managed to survive at the back but now there's a rotation in the other direction once more still a player lurking around this position how long waiting patiently but he has to be careful that he's not caught out there are a lot left. of players pushing from a lot of different angles he might just no he's missed the timing just by a millimeter that's enough and actually jichu's now gone down again this round is starting to get really dangerous there are so many angles he has to be careful of and Les is going to win that first how long caught in no man's land and for 4v3, it might be down to just one. Two E's waiting patiently. Loud have managed to recover from a position that looked really dangerous to making this round look comfortable. I think they've just had a really, really strong mid-round decision. I, the entire... We, we had two rounds ago where Loud seemed to be in control the whole way through. They had their game plan and it worked perfectly. EDG didn't put them on the back foot. It looked like the same thing here, even with the disruption of nobody finding a kill. Right now, Sm Smoggy grabs one, but it's too late to get back in to deal with two. Maybe he can do some more damage and that may be, well, it's turning to a reality. That's a free kill one for him. Remaining. But even still, the reality is Loud have just gotten away with Highway Robbery, stealing this out from EDG. It was a close one that EDG might even have had the upper hand in, but they got chopped up into individual fights all across the map just by not having a read on what the hell Loud were trying to do. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because I think for how long I can kind of forgive, like he ended up surrounded because of where the battles went elsewhere, but every other player ends up alone. Like, not a single one of those fights was tradable, and Loud just play off that. Just position themselves fantastically well. And yeah, the mid-round calls were great, because that initial take for them, even using a lockdown, it didn't go very well. EDG did well, but it's just the way that they play in the mid-round that was sublime. Now 5-1 up over on that attack side. This is definitely looking a little bit ropey at this stage. Khan Khan's going to try and pad the gap. He has had a, a quiet match so far. Got his second kill in the last round, but it didn't really matter too much. Now his blade storm definitely has potential. Here. Well, that potential is not realized this time <laughs> around, is it? And I think the other problem being that okay, Chichu might be able to get them back in, in in the next round for retakes. I doubt he's going to be using lockdown here. And there's a hunter's fury online for Kalanzine. He's not going to be deploying that anytime soon, I reckon. So there's a 
like the, the the safety nets that appear to be forming underneath EDG aren't really there. Damage being done. It actually is keeping Loud's economy pretty low, despite a 5-1 lead. If they lose a couple more players here, it will end up being costly enough that EG might be able to reasonably force an eco out of this squad with one or two wins, depending on how investments go. The reality is there hasn't been a lot of hope in these rounds, and this one's not really the one to give us any extra. If Lass goes down, it could be an advantage, or if he gets the kill, just one away from a Viper's pit, and he's sticking around. This looks like it'll be his fight, and not one he'll win, but that does still get the pit online. Costs your rifle, but it doesn't give Chicho an orb. He already had the lockdown. No, no, again, it, it, it ends up actually being fine. Like, Loud may not be keeping these as clean as they'd like, but they're still comfortably able to buy for at least a couple of rounds. Their ult economy, again, has been fantastic. Someone's tripping out. And for the side of EDG, they're already going to be taking their second pause, and I don't blame them, because these rounds, even though, okay, there's been casualties, I don't think any of them have looked particularly close, like, especially once you get to the second portion of the round. And they need to start getting onto the board, because sure, there's expectations that their attack side is going to be better, but they need to actually have a, a decent sort of foundation to actually build upon because let's not pretend like loud are just going to allow them back into the game like they've got some fantastic players over on their side that like you'd bet your house on at least one round less is just going to win it like let's be real he has been one of the best players i, I would say in the tournament but of the last year two years like you, you could keep going back he has been up there so i i, I think at this stage there needs to be a, a decent change and edg in the past chichu there was that interview where he said they really do rely on their coaching staff they learn a lot they take a lot well let's hope the second pause is where they get that we saw a lot of conversation about coach alex's pause yesterday and the impact that it had for paper x them going on to win like 11 out of 13 of the next rounds Maybe that can be the case for EDG here. They don't even need it to be that strong of a statement. Just this attack side to at least have some legs. Remember, even the best teams in the world will refer to those pistols as coin flips. And you don't want to be going into that with one round <laughs> in your bank. Big problem for them. It's not like uh, EDG have no ultimates, but Loud can one-up them. They've got the exact same plus a Reckoning. That could help to root out the Viper's Pit. And, of course, the... Uh, Locked down on Chichu, as we said, not really going to be that threatening when Kalanzin's still up. Yeah, he's, he's probably just holding the Hunter's Fury for that exact reason, so... Already? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> he, he, no, he wants to kill. He's gunning for blood, and he's going to get it as well. Might even get a tag onto Smoggy, not far away. Nobody's been having a, a bleak time over on this A-side. Smoggy does well, but he has to give it up. The Reckoning is going to force him back completely, and I imagine we're going to see, yeah, it's, it's an up top plan because they're just going to play this one passive. You, you want to go for a lockdown? Sure. We're going to be sitting so far back that it's not even going to matter. And I'm also starting to have a look at that rotation coming through from Les. He's looking to backstab them. He's going to be caught. That's the only downside. But maybe they'll think he's around middle, not up here. No, they're checking it. And he's won the fight with two snake bites and a post plant. You'd imagine he'd be setting up for that right now. But instead, they're committing more resources with two he's moving through mid. This is a counter to what EDG just put through. The lockdown used, but their back is now wide open. And as they push forward, Les is doing exactly the same. Snake bite up top just to secure no, no defuse. But there's no one near the no. defuse. No one near the spike. In fact, as two he's is about to realize. Players swinging into heavy traffic and you know it's not nice to have four kills in a round and have to go and save but that's the reality for edg seven now on the board for loud yeah this one's going to come up as a red bull clutch but there was nothing even particularly clutch about that that round was over about 20 seconds ago like loud came in again every single round we're witnessing they have a game plan they know what their opponents have okay they've got a lockdown let's put ourselves in a post plan that doesn't allow that to work. Let's have Les come around on the flank and basically just put this round to bed with the amount of doubts that their opponents are going to have. Like, right now, this is looking like a masterclass from Sadak and Loud, and EDG haven't yet turned up to the party. I think that's spot on, Tom. It's been a really rough one to watch if you're an EDG fan. For Loud, well, we talk a lot about the curse of Masters for this team, and it looks like it might be on its way to being broken. Seven to one. A strong scoreline and a strong start as they once again 
on the side of Loud, push EDG out of control over B long. Do they actually go B this round? Or are they just going to no. take the orb and go no, back? No, it's, it's got to be an orb. See, they I haven't left it. the lurk. I think they're going B. It could B. be the Viper's Pit also, you they, know? There's no one lurking. It's a B take. Uh, you actually are spot on with that one. Uh, previously, they've always had that extra player behind. This time, it's commitment. But EDG are committing. They haven't played like this up behind yellow. It hasn't been spotted, but the reveal now gives away the game. That's a disaster for Loud. Or for EDG, pardon. It's a, it's a miracle for Loud. Yeah, you know, Free you as know. can be. QCK took some damage, and yeah, honestly, that's it's a disaster. Over. It's, yeah, <laughs> EDG are going to win the round. Easy peasy. Oh, man, it's it. they can't get anything to, to fall in place for them. Even there, it was a Cloud Burst that wouldn't fall in the right spot. Oh, there we go. The three players at this stage might actually just go for this. But again, Loud's post plants have been sublime. Uh, it hasn't even been particularly close. That knife was nice. It, it's basically caught everybody. They know <laughs> where they are, but there's nothing they can do. And Kawazine, he is not looking to be kind. Already spawning out Chichu, an awkward fight. And he is still surviving. Timmy the turret trying to help out at least a little bit. Looking to reposition. Take the fight! He's going to get rid of Smoggy as well. Just removing the weapons that they're trying to save. Finally, they'll deal with him. <laughs> but again, the round is over. It's been over for another 25 seconds. They're, they're just looking to fight to hold their guns. That's the game at the moment for EDG. They are fighting a, a different battle every single round. Like we saw the previous one, it was on A. They pushed up forward to try and deal with the post plant. Ended up being flanked themselves. Round was over. This time, it's all the whole squad is here to deal with this one Sova lurking in two. The funny thing is, I feel like there, Kong Kong tries to fall back, get pinged by the dart. I don't know if that's intentional, but it seemed like it could have been because he then gives away. Okay, maybe there isn't someone else there. QCK just runs around the corner and headshots him anyway. Like, <laughs> it made no difference what the plan was. Get out of my way. It just, it just domes both. And QCK has been having a, a much better performance. The setup's been there. Let's not beat around the bush. Well, Chichu's at least going to get one. And no trade. Uh, actually, the high tide kind of helping them out here. Another one for Haodong, but Sadak has found two in response. Yeah, Tuis hasn't had the best round with his util there, chopping up the map to stop them from being able to keep control of mid, but EDG took it by the reins. Chichu on the flank. Spike planted. Good position, but Sadik is still up, and he's on his way back, so that util Welcome is going to be online. Has to be broken. Now they know. Now they're ready for the fight, and a little closer than expected. It's Kawanzin looking to take Chichu down yet again. And on this Aww. angle, he's not losing a clean shot to the head. Viper's Pit went up and online, and that is stopping any chance of them defusing. Surely they've got it. Oh, that's actually a nice recon up top. It hasn't caught him, but it's given away that he's there. Maybe the spams can find value. Kan Kan's got to wait a moment as nobody steps forward. He's dodging the spam, but Kawanzin <laughs> steps in. Un an unexpected play. Even the pit dropped in the end for Les to find that kill. Tom. This is looking like a mismatch on Icebox. Yeah. EDG's map pick, and they've yet to get off one round. And it, this is a masterclass. It, it, genuinely a masterclass from Loud. It, it seems like their decision making has been perfect pretty much all the way through the game. Again, this started off with a decent individual play coming out from Chichu, but then Sadak pops up, they get into the afterplot, and the second that spike has gone down, my belief in EDG winning the round has gone down to about 5%, because it just hasn't even been remotely close. Nine to one. We've already seen this happen once when they played Breeze versus Gen G. EDG didn't show up to the party in this map, and it's not looking good. Kan Kan has been diffed. That's not something I think has been said in his entire career. Oh, he's been hot this tournament as well. One of the big reasons I was coming in here believing in EDG, but man, I can't even point to one player not showing up. One piece of the puzzle, the whole puzzle's missing. All I've got is the front cover to think about what could have been. And hopefully we'll eventually find those missing pieces. EDG are searching frantically. It's a Hunter's Fury pulled out of the bag. Not finding its mark just yet. Some damage, but Sadik and Les quickly trade that back. Very few defenders left standing. In fact, now just one. Smoggy's on all fours. Aodong tries to get back no, towards him. No, and he can't no, no. a single shot. It's Sadik to utterly demolish this squad. I mean, he's been doing it so far with his calling. This time he takes it into his own hands. 10 to 1. I didn't enjoy that. Oh, this is hard to watch.
Yeah, they used the Hunter's Fury there, and they didn't. They used, actually, to tell a lie, they used the No Command yeah. and the Hunter's Fury, and they didn't even get a kill in the round. I, I think we've just got to start thinking about map two. That this is not even remotely close to what we were expecting coming into today. And we've already seen in the past the, the back and forth between Khan Khan and Sadak. The sniper and the sniper's mocker. And wow, well, two and 11. Normally, I, I'm not one to highlight the kill feed. It, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's not particularly relevant in most games, but when Kong Kong goes, as said, the number one when it comes to ACS, ADR, kills per round. He has been up there in every single stat this tournament. Right now, he is non-existent. Haodong doesn't even have any shields here. That's how bleak this is at the moment, <laughs> and they just can't catch a break. You Not even run. connecting their shots at this point. Oh. No one can even hit a bullet. I think they're mentally oh, boomed. No, 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 no. They don't even know if they'll get a kill this round. No, it's nothing. It's a, it's a flawless no, round to end the half. Can, can we just call it there and go back to? Switching sides. I think I think I might have just got EDG's I coach comms there. Was that you or them? <laughs> I, I wouldn't blame them. That's a tough one. But you rarely see a master class like this. And you got to say, those first five or six rounds, it was all static. This guy pushing and pulling the map perfectly for his squad, with his squad. EDG didn't know what to do. In fact, we caught up yeah. with static earlier let's on. For a bit. So let's hear a little bit from him. No, no, miss. Matías, también conocido como Saji Haki, soy el capitán de Loud. En preparación para ese para ese juego, yo acho que fue mucho más a gente tener confianza que podíamos virar ese es, esa situación en la que a gente está. Entonces, el segundo mapa fue fue difícil, mas yo estaba con mucha confianza, sabíamos que a gente podía. Yo sabía que podíamos traer eso de vuelta, entonces pedí para que les confiasen en mí que que iba a dar todo cierto. No secrets about this on the way back through. Sadak just stomping onto site. But a one for one trade, the number so favorable towards Loud. Garantine closing in, it's all on Autumn. This guy has been a rock star for this side, but a brutal position, a brutal round to potentially go home on. Has he got the heroics in him? He's got so many targets, so many threats. He can't do it! A gente já se enfrentou no passado contra a EG. Sabemos que é um time muito, muito bom. A EG, em particular, é um time que sabe muito bem trocar o ritmo da jogada. Às vezes ele joga muito devagar, às vezes ele joga muito mais rápido. E isso faz que seja um pouco difícil de ter uma boa leitura contra eles. Né? Às vezes a gente ele faz lurker. É, é, realmente é difícil. Joga muito bem com o Pedro no ataque. Então, tem uma variedade estratégica muito boa. Para os fãs, amamos vocês. Muito obrigado pelo apoio. Vocês são Incríveis, espero que vocês assistam nós, continuem apoiando nós. Se fica muito cedo para vocês, peço perdão, é o que temos para hoje. E é isso, um beijo gigante e muito, muito apoio para nós. Well, Tom, Khan Khan said in the video earlier on that he wanted to strike fear in the hearts of his opponents when they saw his name. Well, they're gonna have to look way down the scoreboard to see his name on this map. That is a rare thing. And on the attack side, Tom, I, I, Kick him down, there's right? basically no hope. <laughs> there's essentially no hope. An 11 to one comeback, Mini couldn't even make this happen. Tom, give him a ring, see what he says. <laughs> Bone a friend? Yes, or 50-50. Let's see how good Mini's Chinese is. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he's a man of many talents. To be honest, I, would, I, I wouldn't him. even I wouldn't even be surprised. No. But here we go. Eleven to one. It has not been a good start. Still, potential of a turnaround in the next map, and at least maybe some life in this pistol round. They are going to be able to get off to a strong start. Less looking to find one Whoa. back so clean with it. They've got to be careful not to let this one slip away. Already looking like it could happen. Chichu eventually will be able to find one. Kawazin is very close. And I almost feel like Chichu's tempting fate. They have got themselves in a massively advantageous position, though. An open plant that normally you could only dream of. Multiple positions. Actually, I think the cross may be missed here. The headshot wasn't even needed, but he has managed to find that first kill. There's no chance, though. With the time so low, look how far back they're playing. Still with a reveal. You'd have to force one of the fights. 
Smoggy's already tucked in. At this stage, miracle work needed. 45 HP as well. Nobody cleans it up. And there it is, Tom. They've doubled their rounds. It's a consolation prize for the time being. Oh, don't hold your breath. Yeah, I, I, I want to actually see if they can just even build into it on an individual level. Well, like, I, I Khan Khan needs a warm up. Yeah, exactly. This is basically his his aim labs before his aim labs. Like that's what I want to see. Just taking the time to sort of get themselves into a good position because they've come in cold and they've been shut down by Loud, who have looked fantastic throughout this map. So I think even just a few rounds, getting themselves feeling more comfortable back on that stage, it could be a pretty big deal for the side of EDG. And in this round, as you can see, there, there's no real safety net. They're just going straight in with those rifles. Chi Chu won't be the one to invest a full gamble, but already with the drone, giving away where this push is going to be coming in. The full force of Loud will be coming in on the rotation. A few upgraded pistols, but for Sadak, the only goal, slow them down and see if they can do a bit of damage. What a, what a round it would be to take off them, but yeah, you're right. The goal here is just to drop rifles, run that cost. Boy, giving Kong Kong that little boost of energy. Playing with the outlaw, waiting for this wall to fall. I'll have some targets. Loud, very patient, but Inichi are starting to make a read on this. There's a lot of players around here, some utility in play, and the spike is on its way back towards A, leading the charge by himself. It's a little concerning. If there was still a lurker around A, nobody would have a... Uh, I mean, he's 68 HP as well. He'd have a serious fight in his hands, but it looks like he might get away with it scot-free. Although, actually, the timing is it's kind of poor here as he goes through the wall. Kawansin's waiting. Now the spike's down. There's a rifle there, but it can't be retrieved. Chichu's lurking around mid to catch those rotates, but he's going to be spotted in a second. In fact, spotted now. Now he's stuck, and there's players swinging from all directions. Oh, no, Loud please. all of a sudden are in a 5v3. 12 seconds left as the spike is planted, at least. They can breathe a sigh of relief. The clock is now on their side, and the players pushing back in haven't got big weapons. Even the kill they got on mid was just a sheriff, so nothing being retrieved. Kawanzin already fallen. Okay, EDG are starting to get their hands on the reins again. It's back under control. It's not looking too scary, although a couple players are low. The time is ticking. Oh, no, it's only one. Kan Kan, this is his chance. His aim labs, right? He just needs to hit a few shots, and it's Sonic again. Oh, 12 rounds for Loud and ADG probably wishing they could have just jumped to the Thrifty. next map. This is more demoralizing. That was a, that was a MasterCard Thrifty. Was it, Tom? Did they not buy? No, they didn't force buy that? I think it was it was two ghosts and then classics and yeah, they, I think they even, I think they picked up the sheriff. <laughs> even the sheriff that he got two more kills with was picked up. He didn't, he didn't even buy the sheriff, Mitch. He didn't even Aww. buy that sheriff. It's okay, because they're going to map two, man. They're really good on their opponent's map picks, Tom. Yeah, there we go. Well, fair play. He's fair, got an Odin in me. He's got an Odin in Okay. Oh. Khan Khan's managed to, to get to. Maybe, maybe, no, who are we even kidding? No. There's so much still that needs to be done. Still three players standing for either side. The early battles at least being even. I thought the Odin had a possibility. QCK, they're, neither has spotted the other. Khan Khan is just Look literally down. next to both of them. They will walk past. If anybody turns around, they're just going to see him sat on a perch. I think, there we go. Eventually he goes down. No, 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 Smoggy again has traded, though. It's the players with the weapons. Still, that push up from Tuiz and obviously the turret no longer online. As they do look to head in towards this A site. Wrap rounds coming. You can see less. It's just waiting, watching, buying extra time, even putting. The wall up just to slow them down that little bit further. This is all an attempt to try and just give opportunities to his teammates. At this stage, he should know exactly where these players are coming left. from. The snake bite again, just to make them that little bit weaker as Tui's continues his sneaky little play around the back. His opponent's none the wiser that he's going to be right up behind them. First kills free, and he'll close it as well.
it has been a map to forget for the side of EDG as Loud come in with one of the most dominant, if not the most dominant performance we've seen in the tournament so far. They are one step away from making it to the top four. Nothing but smiles from Sadik up on that stage, and I'd be surprised if I saw anything else. We know EDG are good on their opponents' map See picks. That sign. No. <laughs> okay, we're gonna toss it. I don't want to talk about that. We'll let the desk maybe bring it down after the break. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings.
Hey guys, I am here with SCK from Loud. Congratulations on that uh, first map. Okay. Um, now, the team has shared previously that this tournament is very challenging for them, but despite that, Loud has been very consistent with their energy. Um, who on the team contributes the most to keeping that energy up, especially for very important matches like this? I think that Sazak is this guy. He always like uh, have a smile on his face. He always like time to, treat, to cheer and uh, make it the, the environment really good. I'm a kind of I'm a kind of this guy that always listening music and all of that. So we have a little bit jet lag, but uh, the energy will be growing up because uh, we like are happy to be here. All right. Well, it certainly looks like that. He really looks like a really happy guy. So uh, let's see if Loud can close this out. Well, they have plenty of reasons, Mika, to be happy because after a 13 to 2 trouncing over the Chinese number one seed, Loud show the world that they are very much here to play and maybe even here to stay. That was honestly, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That was just straight up brutal. Like, I mean, what is going on with EDG? Back to back, they start a map with an 11 to 1 half against them. They crumbled in that Gen G series. They show up here against Loud and they look like they are crumbling again. This is not the team we've come to know from EDG. Loud absolutely picked them apart. Yeah, definitely. It looks like the, the logic that EDG applied to pick in this map, by the way, their pick um, was, okay, we beat Gen G on this map. Gen G beat loud uh so therefore we should be able to beat loud but it, lo it looked like a rock paper process. scissor it looked like a rock paper property. scissor kind of situation transitive property i said process of elimination yeah <laughs> oh, i was wrong that, you were right neither of us actually passed uh, fourth grade <laughs> mathematics <laughs> but yes like it, you can see the logic there but I it, it's just I, I can't uh, that but, was but there's no me, logic in to that me, game. It's not about it's not about the map pool. I, I think they could have showed up it, to any map and looked yes. like that. It is about yeah. confidence. This is totally. a team you look at their faces, no one is yelling, no one is making noise, no one is giving that energy that EDG thrives on. Think of when this team is at their best. Kung Kung is up, standing, screaming, yes. he's he's shooting an operator at the camera. They're showmen when they're great, and right now they look completely deflated. But we do have to give loud credit, because they did still play a really good game, in particular that attacking side, I thought that Tadak was calling an absolutely stunning match. Yeah, exactly. And then we picked up a couple of good examples because Mimi, you're completely right. It's all about that mid-round calling. We know that both of the teams are very, very hard shooters. So it's only on fundamentals and actually the reads on the map that you can win in this matchup. We were seeing that uh, EDG was getting a lot of the kills in some of these rounds, but they are unable to close them up because of the adaptation and the moving around the yeah. map that Loud was having round after round. You know, maybe they won two rounds, but let's think about the two rounds that they won. The third round, right after, uh, you know, Loud is on a bonus, and then Pistol on the second half. This could have perfectly been, exactly, this could have perfectly been a 13. Yeah, it absolutely could have. It was just inches away from that happening. But but you see in the rounds, there's a variety of the calling for Loud, mm. even when they're yes. losing. They're going for a lot of fakes. They're going for these interesting ideas with the Beast. But, and I think we have seen that historically. When they play this, this Harbor composition, they really have a lot more kind of adaptability than with the comps when teams are playing without the harbor. Without the harbor or without the double controller in general, most teams are, it's just an A-hit simulator. You go there always, sometimes you throw you in a B-hit, you have to fight deep. But yeah, it, it's so different for this squad, the, the the variety they have. Well, let's go to the aim lab shoot around real fast. We'll check in with Chichu and we'll continue the conversation regarding EDG. You know, something that I thought I would never see as I'm looking through the stats, uh, you know, because obviously we're looking at Chichu here, uh, but uh, Kong Kong, four frags total, like the whole map, which yeah. is like heartbreaking because shut down you, completely. He, and it was, and you would see him on screen here and there. It didn't feel like his his aim was pretty was aligned there. Like it it wasn't like oh you know it was like big battles. No, it honestly just felt like he was just getting diffed. Yeah, exactly. Not many things were working on the side of EDG for their first map again. And I repeat, this is the map that they chose. Now we should be moving on something that. Theoretically, Loud is going to be more comfortable in. Yeah, and honestly, the wildest thing to me about that match, besides the crumble as a whole, was that QCK Amen. was diffing Kung Kung. Popped He's off. the guy we were saying needed to step up, needed to be great on the jet. We hadn't yeah. seen him at his head, peak yeah. yet. And he was out there, he was being set up beautifully, yeah. and he was dominating Kung Kung in the opening kills. But you're right, Bea, we're, we've hit a reset point, we've mm -hmm. gone into sunset, but man, am I worried about EDG. It's so hard to reset. Not just, you know, sometimes you lose a match, you can wipe it away, but this is now two maps in a row where it's been the same story. 
Yeah, probably they ran out of fuel maybe too soon in the tournament. We were talking about, is Loud top notch right now? Are they going to be, you know, are they really up there to be the winners of the to of the tournament? EDG right now is not looking like a fair uh, uh, opponent to them because Loud, yeah. after what they did yesterday on Sunset, how good they were feeling, how everything was falling onto place. A 13-5 against FBX, where they have, the FBX were having crazy rounds. I think that Live and Ultim were final bosses. For this one, things are getting even harder for EDG. Yeah, very much out of hand here. Here comes the Agent Select. And, you know, we're getting ready here for some Sunset. You're going to see QCK. He's going to be rocking that Phoenix. He's going to get right in the face of his opponents as much as he can. Yeah, the biggest goals of Loud's comp on the defense is extremity control. With that breach, with their multitude of flashes, they're really good at holding down space in the mains, in fighting forward against EDG. Yeah, they don't the have that same initiator power to fight back in. So for EDG, I think this attack side is about getting mid control, baiting out util, going yeah. for these late round hits if they want to win. But that's all out the window. This is a map about confidence. EDG need to remember who they are. They're the team who's been dominating in China, who comes to international events and beats the best of them. It's absolutely unacceptable for them to go out with a whimper. This team needs to remember why they're great. And watch out because Loud might have the read onto them. We know that EDG likes to play it slow, likes to play it with time, but Loud with this composition and with that first map that they gave us, they want to take it all and make it into playoffs. Is this how it ends for EDG? Will Loud push forward into the playoffs? Let's find out. Send it right back over to Mitch and Tom. Thank you so much, Golden Boy, and our wonderful analyst desk. Tom, as we move into this next one, you know, I pity our analysts for having to look at that last one <laughs> and break it down, because it, it's tough to be nice to EDG after that. It was a really, really rough showing on yep. their map pick, but the promise, a good on their opponent's map picks. Tom, you opened up the series by saying that. I hope to God you're right. Well, that's the thing. We, we now have to do what EDG did and forget that ever happened and then move straight on. And Loud, they run quite an explosive comp. Kicking it off on this defensive side, you can expect aggression, you can expect pressure. And basically, EDG have to forget that that has been a rough performance. Boombot, gone. Shock dart counted. Now going to be looking for the split straight through into mid. And still, though, there are plenty of players from Loud around these angles. QCK already, as said, is looking good on the last map, looking to try and take control. And it's less than how long with the first couple, but Loud have come out on top. Still a bit of a struggle to get in towards B main, and well, oh, Spike dropped everybody, split up. And it's only Khan Khan left. He's fired off to find Kalanzine the first, but a double peek quickly secures the round for Loud. And that's another pistol underneath Loud's control. All three so far have gone to them. And for EDG, it's going to be a minute before they can heat back up. They're down to pistols. Yeah, I, I think it would have been nice for them just to get off to a good start on this map, try and, as said, forget what happened. But the fact is, it's always difficult when Loud play the way they do. Like, I, I feel like there's going to have to be real dedication to just being wary of where QCK is going to be, because he could be everywhere. But the fact is, he is going to pressure all over the map. He's going to have supportive utility from Cow and Zine at times. He's also going to be looking to farm up those ult orbs, because it really does help with the aggression. So I feel like EDG are going to have to play their defaults well. And in the last round, particularly, losing B main like that and having no way in, that was definitely a problem. Immediate spams through the smoke. Well, Haodong's definitely got the shorter end of that stick. Les has been tagged up a little bit, and Tui's is down. Okay, yeah. EDG, they've got a little bit of punch packed in this one. For the defensive side, they've lost full mid control. So it's time to go walkabouts. A side is under threat from behind, so they're going to secure the front. QCK's already made it past, but the timing is key, and he's picked his angle. Picked the right angle indeed, Ooh. although the shots don't land. The flash in hand, and it almost cost him his life. But the timing was good. With Haodong down, the heal can be found by QCK, and he's out of there, actually. He's just going to give up the control entirely. Yeah, not wanting to try and stick around versus the pistols. The thing is, though, the B site is under the control of their opponents. They don't really have the the cipher that we've seen from many others, from Chichu on the other side, that gives them that extra bit of information. We've seen a lot of teams really utilize Spike the cipher on this map. Lesto executing Khan Khan. He was one of the major dangers. Look at the rest of the weaponry that's available for EDG, and it definitely isn't pretty. Take flight. And even an extra kill or two, though, in this post plant could be huge. Well, this is it, especially with the plan spot, right? Like, this is all about spamming. The downside is 
two classics. Uh -oh, Not dude. really going to have the best at times. Um, Nobody know where to go. Down the mangle eventually in a okay. kill with Chichu on another. Now there's a real chance for damage. Shock Dark close, and the spray doesn't land. Kawanzin's now the last man standing. He might not even be able to win this anymore. If he does, it's going to be at a heavy, heavy cost, and he's out. Fair play. Uh, that was a point I, I had absolutely no belief in, in the fact that EDG would be able to take that home. Already getting themselves a MasterCard Thrifty, and that's going to be a huge boost to the confidence. Some great individual ability there, but also just the goal to just sit in a snake bite and then peek after the two pulses. That, that's one of the few moments you're going to see an aftershock, like the changes that they made to it from three pulses to two actually making a major difference, because otherwise he is dead. One enemy remaining. Just about made it out with his life. Hit the shots. And even with the shock darts finding them, a player swinging who's got a fully auto rifle when you're so low, right here. just didn't matter. EDG have got their early start. This is what we wanted to see. I thought we weren't seeing it with the pistol. The smile on my face is loud. Now have the weaker weapons. And EDG will face off against them with confidence. Con Con straight around that angle. And Les, one of the major, major dangers is already being dropped. Both rifles that Loud have are now on the floor. And this is a confident looking Con Con. Was already looking dangerously missing in the last map. And he did have a rough performance the last time they played Sunset as well versus Paybreak. So I was a little bit worried, but the fact is this round decimating less to ease now. Again, it's about getting a kill, getting anything, make things more costly. Uh -oh. They know exactly where he is. Now, not shooting it might bait the idea that he's round the corner, but <laughs> Khan Khan is making sure. He's not giving anything away. And to bounce back off pistols okay, and then go into a flawless right. round, that's about as good of an economy boost as you're ever going to get. Well, they lost the pistol. They're 2-1 up, and they've got a showstopper on Kon Kon, a player that was, as you said, just completely missing on the previous map. A player that is really the reason that people are believing in this squad being able to pull it across the line because he's been so strong this tournament. And I was terrified. If he didn't show up here, the game was already over. But. Very early on, we found out that he's here to play. And round number four is going to see a full buy for both squads. I'll run it back online. Okay, he's insta pop the showstopper. Oh, no. I, again, I, I, this just has to be a moment for Lau where they just give up the site. Almost played straight into the retake. He's garnered quite a bit of space, but because he's gone the direction of elbow, they actually haven't managed to get into an afterplant position off of the back of this. And maybe almost trying to sell the idea that this was a ruse. I, I like this from EDG. They're now breaking the door, and I feel like this is putting in some real hesitation in the side of Loud. Like, they're clearing things out. They've seen absolutely nothing on A after your opponent bursts a showstopper into the elbow. This is a really... This must be a peculiar round for them. And now just patiently waiting. Timing going to be everything. I think Sadak caught a glimpse, though. He saw one. He might have seen two. Decent shock dart as well. Some damage done. EDG on their way through, though. They will make the A play with QCK securing mid and now looking to move forward. This is where I expect to run it back. And indeed, it's already popped. He's Ooh. on his way through. Peak is good for some damage. QCK focused on the site, gets dropped eventually, but he's back in the fight now. Alongside Kawanzin, who's just burned up all his util. You know, that flash didn't manage to root anyone out of position, but the Molly certainly has. They're all low and, well, sat around the same position, just nobody who's up on full. He's the first to swing, post on the wide angle, and find quite a bit of control for himself. The plant still to be secured with 15 seconds. They need to find a safe haven to get that done, and it's the corner up close. Nobody has to hold strong with him down. The round is already done. The unit magic. Come on, there we go. Yeah, I saw Sadak on 1 HP, and there was a moment that maybe there was some belief, but yeah, a very odd round. Like, I, I don't mind the ideas from EDG, like the, the star, I, if that was the game plan, because they take so much control with the showstopper. Okay, that's fine. Then they pause, which I definitely think puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. But then they don't really take that space, and they take so long to get into an afterplant position and lose the battles in mid. That was one of the major detriments to the round, was that you already saw Loud having such a, a large advantage that, okay, I, th I think nobody ends up doing quite well to at least make that one look competitive, but ultimately the round doesn't go their way. Now, luckily, as we've mentioned, plenty of cash available. Yeah, there's no struggles, no struggles whatsoever. But the side of EDG, even uh, Hunter's Fury online to work with, something to fall back on. Close to getting a null command as well. 
revealing area. Two east. Well, he might have his by the end of the round. We'll see if that has any impact. Round five starts off with a spray and Khan Khan getting put in his place by Kalanzine. As we saw that, that was just blind fire straight through the smoke, but an angle that's going to be very frequently spanned. Again, now louder, able to fall back into these more passive positions. Tui's about to be put under pressure, but the fact is he'll probably just fall back off of this, call for some rotations. And you can see louder starting to group up together to potentially make Damn. a play back into mid. Now this is being watched by Smoggy, and because of that, they are just gonna have to fall back. Chichu potentially wanting to try and find some sort of trade, but in the meantime, they have again completely given up this A site. But as we've already witnessed, louder very happy to go for the retake. Might be one player shy. Chichu was patient. An angle that was checked before many out. times by Loud on the way back through, but they decided to leave it open this time. That's going to delay the rotates to A, and even allow EDG to get into position on the post plants. Although, Chichu might not be there to help them out. I don't think he's expecting QCK to be quite that close. I will take him out of the retake for a while, buy some time for the squad of EDG to bunker down. They don't know where these players from the side of Loud are. I, I mean, again, QCK is on the other side of the universe. Oh, the, the paranoia could oh, be he's, perfect. They've gambled it the right way, but there's no one to follow up on it. There's, there's no one there. QCK is caught. Okay, Haodong's in a good position, only the one to be found. They know where Smoggy is, so they're holding the angle. Clean as can be. Nobody, though, still holding strong. He sees the oh, shoulder, but he no. can't get the arrow off. Or the bullets, either. Couldn't decide. Three rounds for Loud. Yeah. Uh, they've been good in these retakes. I, I thought for a moment that uh, that paranoia looked like it could catch all three players as they went for the retake, but wasn't quite placed out. Well, it was placed well, but there wasn't anybody to actually capitalize off it. And then in the end, it just came down to some slightly shaky fights. The Hunter's Fury as well, close to being devastating, but close is not going to win you these rounds. Still, though, EDG are going to be able to bounce back once again. They still have the finances available to them to invest in this round. Now the A site, they've been able to get into the post plants. I, I actually think a lot of their problems right now is the fact that they are trying to play the map so much. I, th I think they've been given quite a lot of opportunities on A, but they always have a deficit by the time they get there. You know, when you think about how those retakes were established for Loud, 30 seconds before Spike goes down, you have players being dropped. You have QCK miles out of position, even caught on the rotate as well. Despite that, they're still able to get a good stranglehold over the side. You can see why they're confident on the retake game. Now, EDG, this time focus on B, but there's a flank watch from Chichu. He's caught two players pushing up, but I don't know that he has a way out this time. Stone was good, and they're closing the distance with a Phoenix Flash soon to round the corner, and Chichu's in so much trouble. But in the meantime, the spike's being planted, so Loud again have to go for the retake, but as we've said, they're pretty happy with that. Yeah, they, they've done really well to isolate the flank every single time. Chichu hasn't managed to really get anything. And now it's up to the heroes on the other side to try and hold this one down. QCK off to a flyer. Khan Khan waits to go to the corner, looks away, still manages to snap back. But again, it comes down to one. Nobody already spawning the first, just looking to try and wrap back around into that 1v1. The dart should reveal the player on the spike, knows exactly where Sadak is. I'm waiting for him to try and tap that. It's gonna come down to one. And Sadak is a safe pair of hands once again, loud will convert a fourth round into their favor. And for EDG, it's close, but no cigar. Sadek's been leading by example in so many of these rounds. Big one for him to close out. This should be giving them a, a pretty good lead. As I expect EDG to take a much lighter buy. Going to be some serious deficits for them. And the way back in, you're, we're seeing again and again that this squad when they have disadvantages, they're able to fight their way through. With the advantages, it got close this time. <laughs> they're still winning those clutches, and that's all they need. And the weakness is actually not that apparent on the side of EDG. They're going for all light shields, which is allowing them four rifles to play with. So still some very good potential to this buy from the attackers. My ultimate yeah, ready. You look at the ults, that, that's the major deficit that they have already getting the run it back online. Hunter's Fury, again, they, they look perfectly set up if they end up in a retake. And, and that's what Loud have been playing for in these rounds. Good start though, getting rid of Kauzi and also getting rid of a boatload of utility. 
and EDG are not going to just run off the back yeah. of that entry kill. You could see a fast rotation in from Sadak, and instead, they're looking to fall back to the other side of the map. I know exactly where you are. I mean, we've seen this a couple of times from EDG. Now with a little bit more information to play with, they're still seeing that these positions are being held, and Loud previously pushed up on A to try to seize this space. That's not the play this time, and it's red on the other side. Chichu yeah. sees that. He wants to take the space for himself. A very late flank. 35 seconds left on the clock while he's creeping up elbow. We see the B site under heavy threat. Less in the corner. He hasn't been pushed out of it, but now he's being spotted. This could spell danger. Oh. Nobody being tracked. And he's down low. So is Haodong. Everybody, in fact, has seen their fair share of combat. Haodong, though, wants to take down Les. Forced forward, and Dewey's was waiting. A quick double for him. A triple, in fact. And it looks like it's all sealed. It's QZK even popped the ulti as well. He's running it back. <laughs> taking down Smoggy. Little showmanship for five to two. Yeah, they, they look like they're right back in the driver's seat. Uh, they a shaky start to this map for Lau, but four rounds in a row once again. They have just looked superior so far throughout this map. And the, the funny thing is, on the entry, you watch both players at the back of site have all of their utility taken away. The second it comes back online, the snake bites are perfect. The counter utility, the smokes they're putting down, just making things so much more awkward. And then also you just have two E's just pop in anyone's head that even looks at him for a second. Well, I think that's also part of it. You have Les in the corner firing with his rifle, letting them know he's there. He throws the snake bite. Player gets close. And as soon as the second one's fired, he's running at him to punish him. But oh not able God. to. Not when Tui's is there. Quick shut down to this round with three fast kills. QCK right down on mid. And so is the whole force of yeah. Loud. You know, four-player mid push with a Phoenix leading charge. It's not easy to deal with that. <laughs> Chi Chi's just like, I got B, guys. Yeah. guys. Guys, I've got B. On the upside, uh, they, clear. they've kept their credits for the next round, Tom. That's, uh, I think they're pretty thankful for that now. Yeah, he, he had one hero rifle to try and do some damage. And I, the worst they thing is that I feel like they've already made the realization that he must have pushed through behind them. Nice shots from Chichu. They need, need oh. a whole lot more, but <laughs> somehow Sadak, even when he doesn't have his gun in hand, still manages to just dodge the bullets. Six to two. It's a little bit more costly than maybe it should have been, but I don't think Loud are going to care. An operator in hand, an EDG. They, I feel like we're right back on Icebox again. Five rounds in a row, a pause taken, and the coaching staff once again given a chance to try and stem the bleeding. At least there's already been a bit more promise to this attack side, though. When we saw this pause come in early on Icebox, it definitely felt like it was a bit frantic. And it proved to be, as the map went on, Loud had them read like a book. This time around, EDG can't afford to have that happen again, but there's a major difference, which is that KonKon is online. I think now they've sharpened their weapon from the last map. They just need to find the crack in that armor to take these players down. There, there's not been too many weaknesses on display for Loud in this series. Yeah. They've only lost four rounds so far. Yeah, their retakes on the A side have been sublime, so much so that they were pretty happy to actually give it up. And then their hold on the B side with less at the back of it have also been fantastic. Now, he's only there with three kills, but it's just the counter utility that comes out to ease the support that's there. And then obviously at times, QCK just taking that aggressive push. And as we've said, throughout this tournament, he has been one of those players that's under the microscope. He's replacing big shoes, whether right here. that player didn't make it to this event or not. He's a talking point. And in the last two maps, honestly, he's been sublime. He has been a nuisance for EDG to deal with. Top of the board right now. Here we go. EDG with an investment. Rifles onto the board. As said, A site has been a good place for them to get in. The problem is the retakes from Loud have been on point. This is it, Tom. Like, you know, Tui's posted on this angle up in hand. Game hasn't really got started for EDG yet. An opportunity to claim this A-side as their own, oh, and oh no, away. right away. The timing is found, the space is taken, and Tui's is right back out of there. Hey, he just leaves. He's set up again for another angle with the op. It's going to be smoked off, but my goodness, 
Tom, this is, this is not an ideal start for EDG. No. Nobody down. They're not going to have a lot of info on the way through. But the, the thing is as well, Loud aren't just sitting there. They've already taken B main control, realizing there's no one there. So the rest of the team are able to rotate in early. They're, they're able to claim so much space because the fact is the lurks from Chichu have failed every single time. So they're already there just pounding utility into these players. Chichu's desperately hoping to try and find something, but you expect it to be searched for, and it may not even be needed. The flash from QCK is also just perfect. Haodong low, and they're waiting. Les is just watching. He knows that Chichu's eventually going to try and make his move. The fact is, Loud at this point are just reading the script. A paranoia into the back. The blinded player stuck. A Molotov that they step into. This is all just perfect. Loud can do no wrong, and Haldong, he has to wipe the entire squad, and QCK is instant on the trade. They're running a clinic on EDG at the moment. Just fantastic from Loud. Run it back, and Viper's pit online for next. Two away from the rolling thunder on Kawanzine, with seven rounds on the board. And near no promise for the side of EDG to get back into this series. The door is being shut on them, Tom. And, it, and I mean, so like every single piece of this replay is so good. You mentioned the push up on B main. It gave them a little bit of information. But from there, the rotate comes in. Les leaves B main, moves to mid, waits for the lurk. I mean, they, if they had the coach's notes in front of them, yeah. they still right couldn't here. predict it that well, mainly because I don't think they'd be able to read them. <laughs> you never know. They're a team of many talents at this stage. To ease, maybe in a little bit more trouble than we've seen before, as they look to put the pressure on much faster. I don't mind this approach from EDG. The fact is, a lot of the time, they've been given this control by Lound. They're already going to spot. The Sadak is here early. Again, though, when you have a run it back in play, you're more than happy to just go for a retake. Hunter's Fury thrown out. Nobody just desperately trying to find an opening kill. That That's one of the things that EDG have pretty much failed to get in almost every single round after shock and spam! What <laughs> from Kawazin? He just predicted where his opponent was going to go. Running back now in. Utility set up to try and play QCK into position. They're watching for it, but he still takes down Khan Khan. That advantage was never had. The spam almost eliminating Haodong. Wolbang in. It's just one left. They're cleaning house. Loud making this look so easy. Another flawless round to make it eight and two. It's a hard one to find hope in, but I can swing it. Hope for EDG? Maybe not. Hope for Loud in the future oh, of this tournament? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hell yes. If they keep playing like this, they're, they're back in contention. Because that's been the thing that's sort of been a bit shaky for them so far, is, is they've not looked bad, but they've not looked like loud. Yeah. This yeah. is looking like loud. This is looking like a, a champion's winner. You know, this is looking like a team that I have disagree. been at many events before. They have looked like loud. They've just looked like loud at a Masters event, not, <laughs> not loud at any other event. But now, finally, we're seeing this team at a Masters be able to put up numbers one map already secured. Yeah. More than halfway to getting this one in EDG. They haven't even got off the, the starting point. Two rounds on their attack. One player already lost to start this, and it's Chichu. This is why you're going to see those breaks pumped way down. They have to watch B. They have to watch A pushes. And with those extremities being watched, there's only one man you're going to rely on to try to punch through this defense. It was Kon, Kon sent through for spams, finds nothing. They are just looking for an opportunity right now. Do you know, I wonder, I wonder if like Genji is out there going, well, we can't play them again, right? Because we already played them. And then Senna going, well, they're from our region, so we can't play them again, right? It's just like <laughs> both seeing who can make the better excuse as to why they don't want to play loud, because I wouldn't want to face them. Of all the teams they're seeing, look to make it to the playoffs. They're looking fearsome. Now a gap, while well, it was left for a millisecond. Quiet Sadak, I think there might have even been a flicker of a knife in his head for just a moment. Seconds left. 30 seconds. They have no map control. They are just looking to take it to the elbow. The flash, perfect. He hasn't killed anyone yet, but QCK, he just slaughtered every member remaining of EDG. Any questions that were being asked Last of this man now? Gone. Gone. 18 and 5. He's had a field day on the defensive side, Phoenix. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about him struggling to break through the sights at the entry roll, but uh, 
I'm not even sure what role I'd call this. He's just shooting people. He's he's <laughs> playing attack on defense. 18 and five, nine to two. EDG, one last chance to put a round on the board here on the attacking side, make it 9-3 at the half. Uh, it's not a lot of hope, but it's a damn side better than what they'll be facing otherwise. Coming into it, they're up against the Viper's Pit. They're up against a rolling thunder, as well as just what Loud have been bringing to the table yeah, again less, and again. Has Les actually used the Viper's Pit the whole half? I think he just used it now because he was like, oh. I think that is the first. I mean, when, when have they needed it? No, you know, exactly. Unless you're going to lock down B main, which again, hasn't really been challenged for that aggressively and certainly not successfully from EDG. Uh, there's been no Bama. pressure, zero pressure from this squad. You know the little the little like challenges you get. He's just like, "Oh, I've, I've got to do my challenge, so I'll just use my ult in the last round." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to use <laughs> one more ult to get my points. <laughs> He's trying to complete the battle pass, guys. Go on. I mean, I, uh, okay. Ambitious. Ambitious to the rolling thunder on the back of the reveal. This is going to be big. That's caught quite a lot of players even towards the elbow. It's keeping Kong Kong in position. The ult was used. Smoggy can be revived. So Loud might want to compete for mid control. Maybe this can work out for exactly EDG to force yeah. another fight. Instead, Clown Kounzi wants to try to get oh, a little angle. He's got a spam on it, but he's traded out. That's what EDG wanted. The man advantage sits in their favor as they move towards B, and they're bypassing this Viper's Pit entirely. Sadik needs to be careful here. He's playing a risky game up against Kon Kon. The flank is underway as well. Look, Chichu's thread the needle straight through. Yeah, the thing is, it might actually end up banned for him. I think the steps will be heard, so he should be able to catch Tui's this time. Sadik can stop it. He's Ten been seconds. expected, and even still, it's looking like they might finally get another round. Not quite anything for Sadak. And now it's left on to Les. Finally, after a long hiatus from the board, we do see another round, the last round of the half, go the way of EDG. But let's be real, Mitch. This has not been a, a pleasant outing for them. No, it absolutely has. Uh, EDG coming up against Loud. I think we we're all expecting this to be a close one. After what we saw from EDG in this tournament so far, the Paper X game, for God's sake. But here is Loud, a team we talked about being on weakened form. And they've got nine rounds set to close this series out 2-0. to zero. EDG need a lot of hope. I'm not the one to find it. Maybe we can hear some words of encouragement from Haodong after his last game. 大家好，我是EDG的浩东，在队内担任IGL，还有燕尾，感觉自己还需要很多调整的地方吧。其实他们打的东西一直是一成不变的吧，我个人感觉是这样的。但是其实今天的失败的更多原因是来源于我们自身
is in play from EDG. We've seen a lot of teams go for the retake on this side. Paranoia is still available, shock darts, an extra flash for Smoggy. They have the utility to do it. The question is, the Loud even let them get that far? Well, there's certainly been a lot of promise on the Loud retakes, like you said. EDG look to capture some of that magic. Smokes are down. The retake's underway. Flank spotted as well. Loud have a good idea of exactly what EDG are trying to do. The crunch comes in and they're ready. Con Con dropped right away, but a quick fight back. EDG still have some life in them with Smoggy picking up another. It's down to a 2v2, but QCK stands strong. Nice shot oh. by Smoggy, but the molly at his feet. Too hot to handle. 10 rounds for Loud. He's looking like a different beast today, but genuinely. This QCK is someone that well, was clearly seen by... That's the thing, at this point, I think that you could give Sadak anybody, and if he goes, yeah, he's good to go, we've just got to believe it. It wouldn't matter who it is at this point. I, I think he could bring back some, like, 40-year-old FPS player. Maybe he could bring back Lothar. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> FPS player? I don't know about that. If it was a hey, he plays Valorant. If it was a card game version, sure. <laughs> wow, toxic. I believe in you, Lothar. Here we go. Ten to three. It's flash. <laughs> well, plays. Kawasaki's just taking down the two players who were lined up ready. QCK is looking to try and heal himself back up. Bear in mind, Konkan has actually invested an interesting one. I didn't expect to see a, a Spectre Light Shields. But I, I guess just the scenario is so bleak, he was hoping that maybe he could bridge the gap with some... Not, not even that, a hero spectre. I don't know if that's ever been said. And well, I understand what he was going for there, trying to hit a timing on the player droning, but it's safe to say, Sadak had friends waiting by. Well, the pistol Thank rounds you. have been going to loud again and again. This time, though, they're able to build on the back of it. This is the real tragic thing. Just look at the timeline there. Round two and three went to EDG. They upset them on that yeah. second round. I even remember, Tom, I said, now nah, we've got a game on our hands, didn't I? I had to say that. Here we are. And for EDG, you know, there's a lot to talk about in their previous games. In this one, though, five rounds across the series so far. Loud have just had complete control. Their buy round here represents a, a chance to put the foot down, at least make this score line a little bit closer. But again, the man winning those opening duels doesn't change. He's taken damage and now finally dropped. And Kankan's made it out a lot. Kalanzine's dead to the nade. He just stood in it. Smoggy's taken down less. Okay. Well, it, it started out poorly, but it's been recovered. It was starting to be recovered oh, nicely no. by the side of EDG. Not again. Not in rounds like this. Chichu no. player pushes a smoke Ow. against him, and he wins it. Come on. Wow, just can't lose. No, not a third the time. Not a third time. time. And it's not for <laughs> EDG. he got three kills pushing through smokes. 12 to 3. I could That's chop point. up every one of those kills and say EDG were unlucky in every single one. They they should have won that round. I can't believe the two has just got away with that. That's absurd. Like every single one of these is him just peeking into an angle, puts the smoke down, runs out the smoke, kills the guy, goes back into the smoke, runs back out of the smoke again, and kills another guy. And it just and it, <laughs> even Sonic's face is like that doing? was just dirty. Oh. I feel a little bit ill. 12 and 3. How do you think EDG feel on that stage? Oh, we've, we've casted fast best of threes in the past. Had our fair share. Yeah. Gambit versus Crazy Raccoon. That was the one that was one <laughs> that to remember. Was a, that, was a <laughs> that, was, that was maybe even a little bit quicker than this. It occupies a very small slot of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. Oh, I can store that in a $2 USB. Well. Nine chances to close it out based on what we've seen so far. You know, Tom, it's anyone's game. No, not really. This has right. got to be the one time. It's a it's a concrete conclusion. This time out from EDG, I definitely admire them for taking it. Get, They'll get hey, to stay on the same yourself. stage a little bit longer. Oh, no. <laughs> Double their time on stage on this map. No, I'm kidding. But maybe they will. Not just because of the timeout, but because of the rounds they'll win following it. EDG won my heart.
I even remember on the desk yesterday, I said, this is a team I've massively underestimated. The second I stop underestimating them, they fall apart. Yeah. But I, I think, as you said earlier, the, the one real benefit, well, the one only benefit is the fact that we are seeing Loud in terrifying form and looking to make their way through to the playoffs. Playoffs that, well, we definitely want to see them if they're going to continue up their run like this. Smoggy, Flash is good, but less is there. Playing counter once again. Chichu about to be under some serious pressure. They're trying to counter out QCK, but he ain't stopping. He knows there's a guy stuck in the corner, and he's going to clear him out and take down Karkan as well. This man has started off this map in real form, and he's looking to finish it in the same way. Kawazid is going to put another in the dirt. It's left all onto nobody. And the fact is, nobody is standing in Loud's way, closing out this series. A obliteration of EDG as Loud make their way to the playoffs easily. Looks like the curse is finally broken for their Masters runs. They've made it deep into the tournament. Top four, and they've looked so damn good doing it. When we talk about teams looking weaker, Loud were top of the list coming into this event. We thought they would do well. They struggled, they stumbled, but my God, they found their feet. On the other side, EDG, GG, and well played indeed. This tournament has been remarkable from this squad so far. A shame to close out their final series like think, this, but it's yeah. definitely not representative of what they've been able to bring to the international scene. I think Khan Khan will be a name most teams are scared of in the future, just not in this series. Yeah, especially when we know what the next Masters is going to be. I, I think he is going to be a name that everybody is going to be shouting. Unfortunately, after victories versus Paperx, a close game versus Genji, it wasn't quite to be today, but for Loud, this was a statement matchup. They came in a team that had beaten them before in a Masters, a team they beat in a close series at Champions. They have obliterated them in this matchup so good, and now look to go through into the playoffs. And as said, if I'm one of those top seeded teams, I don't want to match up against Loud. Well, thanks to their Phoenix, this most certainly was a quick one. 24 and 7. A player that we've highlighted on the desk throughout this yeah. event as having struggles. That's what the community narrative has been fitting into his role. So he looks pretty damn comfortable now and terrifying for anyone facing this loud team moving on in the tournament. And moving on with our games for today, it's time to throw this one over to the analyst desk. Thanks, guys. Uh, I mean, a quick day at work, you know? Uh, <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. Goodness gracious. I genuinely blown away. Let's just jump right into this real fast, go into our HyperX Reflex moment of the day because it is going to be QCK. We're going to give this man his flowers finally on the broadcast, Mimi. He had a lights out game. Quick really stepped up today. I mean, it, it, it seemed too easy for him the way this guy was playing. When he was on the Phoenix, he was working into these retakes incredibly well, setting up his flashes with his squad yeah. and also just fragging individually and it was the same on the jet this guy has a lot of doubters for good reason i'll admit i was one of them but i think he's dispelled a lot of that criticism with his performance today yeah. especially if he can keep this up into the playoffs yeah it feels like uh you know most importantly for this in instance here right especially for qck having like this big impactful game this should be a, a massive uplift for them right because we constantly talk about aspas was the 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 playmaker for the team was qck gonna be that guy and he didn't necessarily need to be that guy but i felt like we finally but got he's finding that here who today. he is yes, and i think that exactly. that's what really matters for yeah, yeah. loud finding what who they are themselves in 2024 yeah this is gonna be super fun to see what loud can do in the playoffs but of course that means we have to say goodbye to edg edward gaming uh an exit that i genuinely did not expect a I mean, grand total of five rounds won by the number one chinese squad that is heartbreaking mimi yeah, and this is a team, again, we talked so much about it in the pre-show, about how this team just kept getting better and better, but yeah. they, they really fell apart in these last two matches. The the mental was crumbling, the rounds weren't sticking together, what, what do you and think they it was? were up what against... Would you, what would you uh, chalk it it's to? It's so hard to place. Yeah. I, I really think that they just somehow, after that Gen G game, lost faith in the system, lost faith in themselves, and, and didn't find it in themselves to bounce back after. Unfortunately, they're home, but loud, looking good. What a day. But let's go ahead and hear from the man of the hour. It's Sadak standing by with Kukuka. 
Y estamos aquí con Sadak. Vamos a hacer esta entrevista en español porque la ocasión lo merece y obviamente él nos la va a dejar hacer así. Uh, we're here with Sadak after uh, that brilliant performance coming in from Loud. So the first question is going to be, what a brilliant performance there on Icebox. EDG picked that map, but you definitely show them how it's played. Did you imagine that it was going to be such a dominant performance? Sé que me has entendido, pero te repito la pregunta. Menuda performance que habéis tenido en ese Icebox. Ellos lo escogen, pero vosotros les dais una lección a impartir cátedra. ¿Cómo ha sido eso? Y la verdad, cuando vimos que ellos escogieron Icebox, dijimos, buenísimo. O sea, es, es nuestro mapa, nos sentimos muy cómodos, así que entramos con mucha confianza y la verdad salió todo bien. Uh, basically, when we saw that they picked that map, we were like, that's so good. We feel super comfortable in, the, in this map, so everything is going to go our way, and it definitely did. Uh, next question is going to be about QCK, about Quick. Many people have had questions about, you know, who he's replacing, and yada, yada. I know that he has not had an easy day, and I want you to tell us um, how he's feeling and how do you see his performance on the big stage. Ya sabemos que no ha tenido un día facilito. Quiero que me digas tú, como su IGL eh, y uno de sus mentores, ¿cómo estás viendo su performance y qué tal está él? Y la verdad, para, yo estoy muy orgulloso de él. Para quien no sabe, él durmió, durmió solamente dos horas. Esta noche se la pasó vomitando. Tuvo que ir al hospital, la pasó muy mal. Y le dijimos, quédate tranquilo, hace tu mejor. Lo que pasa es que el mejor del muchacho es muy bueno, la verdad. Así que estoy muy orgulloso, es un guerrero. La verdad que muy, muy orgulloso. Okay, so basically for those of you who didn't know, uh, QCK was sick, he only slept for two hours. They were telling him, hear me out, just do as, as good as you can, nobody's going to look down on you if you don't perform. The bad thing is that the worst of this player is actually pretty damn good. Well, with this, thank you very much. We will see you in playoffs. Anybody that you want to face off particularly? Eh, realmente no quería enfrentar al otro equipo de América, so Sentinels. Después el resto... Buenísimo. Así nos vemos en la final. Quién sabe. He doesn't want to play against Sentinels until the finals, so uh, we wait and see it there. Don't go anywhere. We have another matchup: KC versus Paperex. Right after this. It's the rubber band match between two teams that could very well go the distance. Two teams synonymous with their regions. EDG has been the number one Chinese representative, and Loud was the one to stop them last year. They have a chance to do it again. It's, they've got to be extremely oh. careful. Two, he needs to time this just right. Number from 4v3, might be down to just one. Very few defenders left standing, and back now, just one. Smoggy's on all fours. Ao Dong tries to get back no, to the no, 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 no. <laughs> Be right up behind them. First kill free, and he'll close it. Loud come in with one of the most dominant performances we've seen in the tournament. They are one step away from making it to the top four. We've hit a reset point. We've gone into sunset. Man, am I worried about EDG. And this is a confident looking car car. Combat, How Dong though wants to take down last force forward, and Tui's was waiting. A quick double for him, a triple in fact. The spam almost eliminating How Dong. Wolbang in, it's just one left. They're cleaning house. It's left all onto nobody, and the fact is nobody is standing in Loud's way, closing out this series. A obliteration of EDG as Loud make their way to the playoffs.
Red Bull gives you wings. Got this far, talking over all the problems like we live for it. Now that I'm waking up to how we miss the bar, fading out like an old song that never got a hit. Trying to tell me I was picking a fight, should have known that it was just a gaslight. Now you got me faded, jaded, all the time I wasted. Now that I'm waking up to how we miss the bar, fading out like an old song that never got a hit. back to day five of our coverage here at Masters Madrid and our final match of the Swiss stage is about to go underway. It's going to be the Blue Wall versus W Gaming. Of course, I'm Golden Boy alongside with Mimi and Kakuka and we have a great one for you. It's going to be Carmine Core going up against Paper X and I think a lot of people were very much uh, selling Paper X very short going into their matchup against Heretics yesterday and we saw a revitalized, rejuvenated, energetic Paper X, Mimi, that honestly we haven't really quite seen before, especially when, you know, they've always been known as the fun guys, having a good time. But no, Monyet was out there just talking all that hot trash. I had to make sure <laughs> I correct myself. Almost for a Almost second. pulled a brand for a moment <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, I'm, I'm people. I was the one who was doubting Paper X for good reason. How dare you people? Because they have not looked like themselves this entire tournament. But Heretics awoke yeah, no. the beast. Benji Fishy was standing up with yelling at them, telling them to sit down. And then the second half, they had one of the wildest <laughs> comebacks I have seen. Finally, this team was back paper rexing, right? All the individuals were popping off. They were flooding back into sight. They were making magic happen. It felt like the, the honestly, just the, the mystique of Paper X, of how do they win this, was back for the first time in ages. Yeah, exactly. And probably it wasn't just coming from then, it was provoked by the other team. Absolutely. As, as we were just watching, like the reaction is unanimous also on the side of, of Paper X. It would be so easy yeah. because after, what was it, 4K in four rounds in a row, like Heretics was just. I mean, they were getting stomped the first half. Literally. Yeah. And then they're like, 
you know what? Enough is enough. We're, we're not going to have it. And they go on to be the most paper eggs, just thriving in the chaos that they love and just uh, giving up the best performance that we've seen so far from them just last night. And let's not forget that Forsaken came into this event saying, ah, you know, I'm playing like a six out of 10. We asked Alex what he thought coming into this event paper eggs was going to be. What did he say? He said six, six out, out of 10. 10. Like they feel like they're coming into this event like so mid and then they end up walking on that stage. But again, just clapping they for were, they were. This yeah, is the first yeah. time that they have been more than that six out of 10. You look at the rest of that Heretics game and there was mistakes being made. Heretics was the better team for the majority of that one, but they have this wild ability to activate sometimes and come back. And, and that's what makes them such a scary opponent yeah. against a team like Carmen Corp, there who plays very similar. Sorry, there is, something that, uh, there is something that makes teams like Paper X, teams that have been in so many international events different from the others, mm. and is that they have the ability to peak when and where they need it most. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's very similar to Loud, honestly, in that Exactly, way. right. It's, it's a very good simile because uh, many teams will be, their peak is out of their control, right? They will have like a brilliant, outstanding performance, and maybe they, they feel a bit lackluster, like for example, what we saw uh, from EDG. Most teams cannot control it. If you're able yeah. to control it, that is more than just an ace on the list. Well, you know, we talk about this, but uh, the catalyst of it all was Munyet. He was the guy who got up and let everyone know who was boss. Thankfully, we got a chance to speak to him because Mika Fabs is standing by with him. Hey, Monyet, can you come over here really quickly? Uh, just a really quick question. So yesterday, your performance, that was a really strong statement coming from you. So uh, what do you plan on doing on uh, keeping the momentum going against KC? Uh, nothing special, actually. I just want to win today because if, if we lose today, me and Davai will lose the laundry at the hotel. Is that so? You lose the laundry? Yeah, because <clears throat> if you lose, like, you, you're you going to leave tomorrow, you know? Oh, no. Stakes are, stakes are definitely high yeah, then. Yeah. All right. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Brother, I get it. Dude, they're I winning the it. tournament. They're, they're winning the tournament. They yo, need to get the, the laundry got to get his laundry back, yeah, okay? Yeah. We're all, like, here. The theories. <laughs> wow, the performance chiming in. Just being unreal for the for team. They're playing for Meanwhile, in their minds, man, I have my, my mom's T-shirt. She's going to kill me <laughs> if I go back and I lose the T-shirt and stays in the hotel. They're playing for some clean draws. I respect <laughs> that very much so. All right, well, we'll see, though. Now, the thing is, you know, when you talk about Paper X, you always have to talk about something. S the, him, the player. The guy. Uh, the guy. The guy. Something. Chad, is this something? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no. It is. The thing is, though, something definitely was a question mark for us because we were seeing him a few times, especially on that gecko. It just wasn't Dude, really don't. clicking the way. I know Mitch is somewhere around happy that I mentioned it. And uh, I guess what I'm wondering here is, you know, Kakuka, like what yep. ends up happening with something coming into this? Because it feels like he has now just found that next gear that he really needed. I mean, we have to say that in, in, in Lotus and in that split, I think that he came back to life. He was he had to be like some of the, uh, um, in, in this series, uh, compared to what he was doing previous in the tournament, it's yeah. gone crazy. Look at this comparison. The rest of Masters, he's an average That's Joe. Success. He's a guy who shows up, who's playing the game, whatever. And then map two and three against Heretics. He's something again. He's winning every first duel he takes. He's out there dominating them. This guy's an absolute superstar and he wasn't playing like it for yeah. most of the event. But yeah. he locks Jet two maps in a row and he's enabled very well by his team. Paper X is the team where we have to talk about the individuals. We have to talk about the confidence because yeah. that's what gets them going. I they have these, these ideas of how they want to play the comps, of how they want to exactly. do it. But it does not work unless you have individuals like this team does. Seeing them online now makes them a very dangerous team yeah. for KC to deal with today. Yeah, I, incredibly, I incredibly fast, incredibly literally on your face. There are some of the things that as you're saying, not many teams can can go into that line because they just make everything seem crazy. Every All the action happens in like 10, 15, yeah. 20 seconds. And if you're not up to speed, you're, you're going to be late, Mike. All right, well, let's go ahead and shift focus to their opponents on the other side of the stage. It's going to be Carmine Core. Now, they're going to be looking for redemption here because they had to, unfortunately, swallow a tough defeat against the Sentinels. But this is a team that really met a brick wall, right, in Sen. And now, coming into this one, Kukuka, yes. we get to see what this KC team is, is, is made of as they have 
have to dig deep, which is something that, well, we have only seen once before. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah, exactly. We know that um, Casey, just because it's a very new team, they have only lost that one time, right? Yep. But we saw them failing uh, against Team Heretics back in EMEA. But after that loss, they went on a streak and just, just kept winning and winning until they got their revenge against them in the uh, final there at kickoff. Yeah, in the last match we watched them, they were playing a, a team who just went into playoffs looking fantastic. Sentinels, yes. and it really came down to the wire. I think the make or break in that game, though, was counter stratting and totally. the read that Kaplan and Sentinels had ahead of time. Here's one example to take a look at on their split, where they go for this Yoru play that we see from them a lot, where they set up this paranoia and then it gets punished by Sen. They overcommit to it. So here's the thing. Junkity is completely ready. I love that we're seeing it also in this lower speed. So basically, it's as you're saying it, he's going to be using the Euro Ultimate and he spots one, two, three, minimum, I would say three to four players. The thing is that instead of going back, instead of saying, this is not safe, they were a high likelihood that I'm going to go down. They commit to it. So to, to, uh, we're in a part in the in the tournament that is going to be a before and an after when we go into playoffs. Yeah. Set plays will get you this far. If you want to go into playoffs and actually be uh, a, a great contender to winning this trophy, you have to see beyond. And this is the turning point for KC. Mm. Will it be like EMEA kickoff where they take that loss, they learn from it, and they go on a run from there on out? Yeah. Or will it be like many a, a promising team that have come to international events before, hit that roadblock and fallen? That's the question for today. Yeah. Both teams have a massive expectation to make it out of groups, but only one of these squads has been under that pressure before. Yeah, well, of course, we have Mika standing by. She's going to get some words hey, with Mag Martine. Let's see what's going on there. Hey, Magnum, can we pull you aside for a really quick question? So a lot of IGLs, a lot of coaches say that PRX is a tough team to play against, especially for the first time. So how did you prep for this match? Um, so hello. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think uh, their playstyle is quite annoying. But I don't think it's uh, the playstyle. I think it's their individual uh, performance. I think they're quite insane. But uh, like we prepare like for uh, all of the other teams, and I think we are ready. All right. Good luck to the team. All right, well, this is uh, going to be a tall task here without a doubt for both of these teams, but they know the challenge is uh, at stake here for the both. Yeah, and I mean, that is really the question today. He can give an answer, but it only comes down to showing in the server. Paper X is the hardest team for new IGLs to play yeah. against because they play like no one else. You can prepare for how their util combos work, for the plays the players make, mm -hmm. but they will take risks that no one else will. Yes. And today isn't going to be about the prep, going to be about what fantastic counter strat and came up with ahead of time this has to be about magnum about this team and how a relic one of the youngest rosters we have here can adapt to the most chaotic team the hardest team to play for the first time in vct yeah exactly and the, there's many answers that you can give to this question right are we going to give them the space are we going to fight them are we going to give that chaos a little bit more if you just look at the compositions you might think that casey is the kind of team that is going to uh, uh, fight fire with fire right sure, for but sure. for when you see them play you see a different kind you see that they interpret the utility in a different way uh to get to, for for them to have different outcomes so i'm really looking forward to see what magnum is able to do today. all right well we got a, a few more seconds before we toss it to the uh, map so like want to get real quick uh, uh, predictions. Uh, they, you know, we haven't really done this in a while. So, how are you guys feeling? You Paper X, KC, Mimi? I mean, I think KC will win this okay. match, but I think it has to come down to the adaptation. I think that their map pool is stronger. They tend to have better reads. Paper X is still playing a lot of comps that are kind of weird off kilter. They're still figuring themselves out, but there's a real chance Paper X win. However, the, the necessity is they need to be playing like the second half of Split last night. If they can continue that energy, this is going to be a damn hard game for KC. Casey. Hear me out, we're in Madrid. I cannot see this going any other way. Casey has to make it onto the playoffs to say the very least. We already have Genji there. I think that they, you know, at least deserve it. Yeah, I, look, I, I'm totally with you guys. And it would be uh, a heartbreaker as well to not have, you know, any EMEA team in the playoffs. For either especially. of these teams, though. Imagine a, another playoffs without Paper X. What yeah. would that be? That's very true as well. Great point brought up there. There's still so many more questions. Thankfully, we do have the map selection ready to go. So so let's see where we're headed for this epic confrontation.
All right, welcome to Map Select, presented by Omen for match two of the day. Um, based on the draw order, KC, you are higher seed. Would you like Team A or Team B? Team B. Team B. So, PRX, you'll be Team A. And we will start with your first ban. Icebox. Icebox. Your ban? Ban Sunset. Ban Sunset. Map number one from PRX? Bind. Bind. Uh, side on bind. Defense. Defense. And map number two? Lotus. Lotus. Side on Lotus. Attack. Attack. Next set of bands starting with Paper X, you have Ascent, Breeze, and Split. Ben, ben uh, Split. Ben Split. Your band, you have Ascent and Breeze. Uh, ban Breeze. Ban Breeze. Map number three by default is going to be Ascent. Paper X, uh, side on Ascent. Uh, we play attack. Attack. All right. Good luck to you both. to move past them, their opponent in this competition. This is going to be a tough game through and through. For Paper X, they're a squad that really rides the momentum of the moment. But for KC, for Carmine Core, is it about being drilled, the structure, the plan of attack that they have here, whether or not Paper X will just blow the whole thing up. Carmine Core, they, they've been tested before, but this is gonna be something very different, something they've never experienced in EMEA, this is the day where if they where they have to figure out if they can adapt to a team like Paper Rex. We were thinking and saying that 2024 might be the year for the rookies. Well, KC should be the one trying to prove that. Of course, we also have a new face on Paper Rex, but yep. we have known them for a very, very long time. People are also saying a, a tournament without Fnatic, without Energy, without all of those heavy heaters, DRX. especially DRX. Yes, exactly. When is paper? When is going to be Paper X moment to lift the trophy? That's a great question because it's been some time. Remember, this is a squad that was runner-up at champs last year, right? They have had so many great opportunities in their career here, but to get Monier a, a trophy lift to, for this team to have that moment would be huge. I think it's almost more about Monier getting it for the rest of his team, stepping up, filling those shoes, bringing this Paper X squad back to those finals they've made before. But let's talk about the map, Vito because I think this is where it gets really interesting. Both these teams play very off-kilter comps. You're, you're not going to see uh, the same head-to-head -head of the default comps we always get in a match like this. We're starting on Bind, and last time they were explained this, they lost this map, but I actually liked a lot of the things they were showing with this Harbor Rays composition with Arena in there, too. I think they have really creative ways of executing the site and of, of kind of pathing their way around and setting up their Rays player on the dive. So here's the thing, right? I, I do disagree with one part. I was not very surprised because uh, I like the harbor, I like the intention, you know, of doing something different. To me, the Reyna was very lackluster. Sure. Like, I did not understand the final point on to why would you would choose Reyna mm. above something else. But you did... That was a something. Sorry, that was dreadful. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> do it on purpose. But the thing is, you you don't understand why they choose Zarena until something has a game. He has had a very slow tournament up 
until those last two maps yesterday. I think it's not the optimal pick, but if something is playing like he was last night, it is a dangerous pick for KC to go up against. Things for this team to watch out for is how aggressive Paper X is with these fast sight hits. If you're playing on the site, if you're playing back site A, you are going to get ran over. For me, when we're looking at KC, this is going to be about taking extremity control towards showers yeah. and long and playing off site to be able to flood retake. Exactly. It's the shower controls that in the uh, in the previous match threw Paper Rex off a lot. They were not able to regain that space and I think that this composition may have a lot of holes. Carmine Core and specifically Martin has to be the one finding uh, those holes and actually taking advantage of the situation. We talk so much about these Paper X individuals but the two youngsters Nere and Martin have been electric in Madrid thus far. If they can keep that up, if they can compete with Paper X, there's no doubt that Casey would be a player in the playoffs. It's time for our final match of the Swiss stage and to find out who will be remaining in in the playoffs, this is going to be a game with a lot of fireworks. So I think we're going to need to bring out the big guns. We got Pansy and Ipoc. That's incredibly kind of you, GB. But yeah, this game itself to me, Mike, is feeling like a question of form. We've seen these teams look hot. We've seen them look pretty cold at times. Where do you stand on this matter? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's a really interesting matchup in terms of kind of the, the style of both these, right? Without a Fnatic of old, without an EG of last year, this is the chaos meets structure, really. The best we're probably going to get it at this, sort of, at this event. We get straight into the pistol round here. Martin, typical position here, going to take a... Deep peek on the shore. Something a mind freak here. Mm. Seemingly aware of the possibility. And looks like Martin yeah. not afraid to particularly show presence. So that's going to be that card removed from the initial start. But again, it, it this this to me is just purely I have to wait and see what we see from these two teams, which sounds silly, right? It almost sounds like obviously that's what you're going to do. But because there's been such a disparity in the way they've looked leading up to this point. It's and also uh, taking into account yesterday's performance, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> it's the old, if you can carry that momentum across <laughs> to today. Well, I mean, then you summoned the Paper X of old, right? Or the one that strikes fear into every team's hearts because they are hard to handle. And it looks like Shin's going to be the one to have to try and deal with it. I'm going to try and depend a little on Magnum too, but he's been already forced away. Pressure on the site, and it's Monier there. Shin's gone down. The site is somewhat under PRX's hands. Can they confirm it, though? Can they get that plant down with any threat? Looks good so far, focusing mostly towards elbow to gain that control. Plants in times on their side, but there is presence on long here. Actually, the flank comes through, two towards long, one still outside Martin here, outside Hooker, and actually mind free going walkabouts here. Going to be punished for that. Magnum giving up a lot of space here, but Paper X can't really find it. Thomas, he's already on the defuse. Yeah, they need to get a challenge on that, and they do. Forsaken knows what he's up against, trying to do the damage. And Monier is firing off today. That's what you want to be seeing as well. Magnum, the last one alive, trying to play it back in from CT, but they didn't achieve half on the defuse earlier. A tap on the spike will confirm he's no longer on it. Something with that wide swing around. Paper X, good beginning here. You're comfortable here. And uh, really, with this flank coming through the TP, I think maybe Carmine is thinking there's two, potentially three bodies. Uh, I mean, with a lack of information and Magnum taking such a deep position, there's some real questions about exactly what's going on on site. Yeah. Got him. And, and one of the caveats to me is Monier. Now, we've seen his performance not quite to the highest echelons yet. He's, he's had some very good games when activated, but I mean, we all noted Benji Fishy calling him out and then what happened. But regardless, good to see him off to a very strong start. And Mike Freak, yeah, farming. Read it well. Dealing with Magnum and Martin in the very beginning here. Healing over here. Just going to be going through the motions. They've already done a great deal of damage. I don't need to particularly over commit anywhere. Just need to be you know, a little careful on the way back in in case anyone's trying to fill that space behind them after the contact towards B Long. <laughs> Mindfreak does actually give it up here in the right. Going to be played in on the Frank. An opportunity to maybe apply some pressure. Taking the long way around, though. Paperworks will get a clean plant. And let's see if any of those Three potentials down. could come in. No, nah, it's, it's looking good. Narrate's been caught. Last two. Not really entertaining much of an attempt. So Shin and Tomasi are going to have to just Kind of accept that this is going the way it's going. But but again, for Paper X, this is good composure shown here. 
in the second round. This should keep all those weapons standing, especially that prize possession in the hands of something. That's the key component to them going forward. And again, you're going to have the likes of that. Bulldog still in play as well. A couple of other little bits and pieces. Going to really bolster that going into the bonus. And for Paper X, this is a good start. Cool, calm, collected. No threats found here. I'm going to give it up to the spike just to ensure none of those orbs right could have been there, farmed Scott, on them. Right there. Okay, across all this weaponry as well, so I think round three very interesting for Paper X. Only really Martin will progress towards the ultimate. See whether or not they're going to take a proactive approach here to the defense, take the fight to Paper X. Even the sentence. That's all order, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like as soon as you say it, it's like, whoa. I want to see if they're up to something with that bonus as well. Do they have something in mind? I hate the fact that there's a player called something because it makes me constantly say it. It's like if you cast big, oh, well, okay, at least he's getting kills with it. And the rate's just been removed. He got, he got to look at this round and then it was just taken away. Unlucky. And now the sight hit comes in off the back. Already big pressure from Monier. Gap closing perfectly to Massey. Just massacre, that's perfect! Great work from Monier. Gets the upgrade, sits back towards showers. Job done. Those two will need to be saving here. There's no two questions about it. Well, the question, I guess, if Monier can carry that form across to today, that explosiveness still remains for sure. Only two left, obviously, Shin and Martin going to give this one up. Hello? <laughs> Device face. A little bit of a... <laughs> Something <laughs> stunned. <laughs> oh, you love to see it. Another moment where you just wish you had comms. I know, wouldn't yeah. it be great? <sighs> Man. That, was a, that was a nudge to production. <laughs> we can you're, see. You're uh, bold. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pray. Um, does Combine Core get to keep these rifles? I think they will. Definitely no one close enough towards Martin, but just curious if Shin was maybe going to get a challenge on that, but no. All good, no harm, no foul. But for Paper X, look at this gap close coming from Monier. The fact he gets away with this, and there was no awareness coming out from Magnum there, just seemingly swept aside by that. That's the audio we're missing. <laughs> <laughs> look, we're not allowed fun, all right? No fun allowed. How dare you request it? Oh, he's broken the back of Carmine Core. And if you're the Carmine Core fans out there, right, you're kind of hoping that they came out with a strong start. Maybe correct a little bit, maybe that confidence deficit they would have been playing with after being kind of pushed around. A lot of people saying they've been performing under expectation, which I think is a fair critique, um, because there was such high hopes for this team coming out of kickoff, and they looked exceptional, but hasn't quite lived up to that. And again, the pace is unrelenting. Look at this Monier and something instantly dominating the space, and it's going to force them to respect this. I would say Magnum is a little behind enemy lines, but can he make anything of it? It's going to be tough. There's only a sheriff in hand here. Oh, yeah. All we'll land. Are they going? Yeah, the gap closing now. Monier going to be put to test, put to task. Oh, that's rough. Blinded and Monier just popping off. Yeah, farm him up. He even spotting the right there. Over towards Shybox. This guy's on for it. He's absolutely on the money today. Any questions you had, Lauren? Hey, the opening five rounds here. Definitely a statement being sent. Carmine Court, you'd argue, the MEA counterpart setting them up for failure today, stoking the fire of Paper X. And you're absolutely right, isn't it? You're almost seething if you're thinking about heretics, because you're not. Sit they just down. play it down a little bit, yeah. Just relax, yeah. be humble, be like the fans on Twitter. Be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> how dare you give it, you know? Nilzinho hate club has just grown exponentially. <laughs> oh, God bless him. Well, let's see, does, uh, I think it's Martin there on the other side, yep. <laughs> Lovely early protocols. Again, we, we often kind of compliment Carmine Core and other teams with that, you know, the protocol list and, oh, you've got Eng in there, you know, you've really got, you know, those glimmers of Gambit, all, all of that fluff, but you, you've got to give credit where it's due as well. Paper X, yeah, but they're a little bit more simplistic at times in the way they approach the game. Obviously, mechanically is their, their high point, but they're still very diligent about any of these clears, always very heads up in their work. That's the definition of thriving in the chaos. They're able to create it and benefit from it. But a few other teams have. Slow down here at least by the poison orb. Snakebite to follow up. Right there. 
Oh, Simonia chomping at the bit. Taking a very aggressive angle here. Well, he's had Magnum's number. This time it's Forsaken, but it could have been either. He's absolutely been dominating this site. Now they're going to try and play in a little bit mid-tempo almost. Carmichael will try and take a little bit of space back here, but there's going to be no reason to fear them. They've been sweeping them every time, and Monier is just a demon. I, you can't get away from him everywhere they go. It's only Shin to fight back so far, and even then, just about converting onto Monier, but there's the back lines. There's still something with that operator. Still willing to take a chance. Does Martin get any more play off this? Couple flashes, but not a lot of time. One close. Yeah, Forsaken not even going to let him get off that spike. Paper X in full form here, Mike. And Carmine Cord don't have an answer. No, expecting a timeout pretty soon. Yeah. Carmine Cord to take stock and maybe come up with a way to, to really try and control the early round here because Paper X, uh, one of the worst things you can do is give them freedom, give them space to, uh, you know, do what Monia's doing here. Take really, yeah. really aggro pathing with your satchels, get up in the faces. And bring the fight to you. It's it's very hard to sit back and play retake versus a team like Paper X. So they always convert this space into a kill, maybe two, but uh, it's it's there's very few options to be honest with you, other than fight fire with fire. Yeah, it, it is that choice. Isn't it? Okay, we can sit super deep, play full retake, but we Paper X will keep pushing. Of course, you give not them back. You. you give them backside, they go spawn, they go yes. deeper and deeper. So. Uh, take space elsewhere, try and hold some part of it, but it's easier said than done. Teams with, you know, even bigger experience of struggle in this case. A lot of people, and when we talk bigger picture, Mike, while we're in this timeout, a lot of people look at Loud and go, okay, are they in championship form? You know, and, and, and how do they fare in this? You, you can't turn that gaze away from Paper X either because they're the ones who got to, you know, champs finals. They've been, they're one of the old gods at this tournament. They've still held on. Yes, there's been some roster changes. That's not a surprise, um, but still, they have that potential, and it scares me because round by round and kill by kill, I feel like we're getting closer to what makes them almost untouchable. Carmine Core certainly not touching it right now. Yeah. <laughs> One yet leading the charge, 10 and 2. Oh. Looking fired up once again today. A couple of ultimates power coming online here for Carmine Court. Martin still sitting on his, but away from the Seekers. Showstop around the corner as well, potentially. The next buy round for KC. Yeah. Brick's looking to explore towards B long here. Now Martin does have a TP, but it's very quickly going to get cancelled out. Yeah, he's cancelled out himself here. A pace change for okay. Paper X. Different site too. We've seen them hammering that A site. A little bit of the stack was in play. Nice from Shin, but <laughs> just the teeth marks left in the corpse down to four apiece. A little bit of a pause here. Maybe trying to identify where some of these players may be. They've got to have a so good idea. they're taking the TP, right? You, what was that? They're oh, just well, in well. full troll mode yeah. <laughs> here in this anti, anti eco. Left one posted up here, Mind Freak. Try and police these weapons. I mean, it's an operator, so oh, you know oh. KC are going to want it. Narrate the first to identify Mind Freak's position. Oh, yeah, KC now. They're running. They're just thinking better <laughs> of it. I mean, the guy's the Iceman. You know what I mean? You don't mess with that kid. He's just wild. But at this point, you're looking for silver linings and small bonuses. And Magnum has connected towards Devi, but actually going for the Seekers too. They're really committing on this one. Flash is turned. Something's well, got found one. a little bit of a heal here. So Alt's going to come in, but they're going to run low on time. Keep your mind towards Monier yeah, as well. Still in the case. Still in the mix. He has been a monster so far. But they didn't know oh, it was. been outdone. Magnum finds him and they seem so confused. KC were looking towards showers. They had no idea. Thrifty. They get away with daylight robbery on that one. Well, even at that moment, you're questioning the investment of the Seekers from Magnum, but KC yeah. explode back into this retake. Hey, they needed that, Mike. Stop the momentum. Yeah. I'm Potential, I mean, Marty, full, oh. full commits. Trying. Coming out, yeah, T Tomazzi, I don't know. Ah, Maybe the position out. wasn't relayed, but he's looking towards bench and showers here. Luckily, a second teammate to pick up the slack. All right, going to get aggressive here. I mean, there's bodies. There are plenty down here. Okay, you, you said it before, fight fire with fire, and they are setting Monier ablaze. They're going to carry on. Martin will in the challenge. They're getting down and dirty. 
something has quelled some of that aggression by taking away Martin, but still they have the man advantage for the first time in what feels like forever. Fast flank coming through as well. You can see already progress outside of hookup. Paperwork's got to be conscious of that now. Clearing with both of them. That was fortunate not to be a collat at that point. Very nearby. Narate needs to be careful because they've already slipped a little ahead. He might have heard Forsaken and he definitely knows someone's close by. So we try and Forsaken. Did what? Did he, s he just stepped out of the cove. Oh god, and device right here. They've got no idea. That's done. Quick break. Look, you can try and play Paper X in their own game, but they are damn good at it themselves. And there was just some audacious moments in that. I mean, Again, it's, 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 it's one of those moments where Narei's probably thinking, yeah, it'd be crazy if this guy just There's walks no out Why of his own he? smoke or cove or whatever it is. Something able to get a, I guess, a benefit of timing here, <laughs> avoiding the boom bot, unable to get tra uh, sorry, traded because of the dismiss. But Monia facing the showstopper. You hear the audio cue. It's one of those things. <laughs> and a, a tail as open. old as time. <laughs> you can do it once. You ain't going to be able to do it twice. Something now holding for this aggression. You can see him chomping at the bit, though. He wants in to Massey. That was bold to hold that angle. <laughs> Again, th this is welcome to deathmatch. Yeah. Welcome. This, this, is, this is now just... This is the sort of thing that you want to see from Kate. You don't want to see them to. lose an opening. You want to then back up and look to absorb a site here. That's just not going to work versus Paper X. They're allowed to execute onto you. I mean, Mind Freak's going to find himself a wide open A site here. Yeah. That the penny, the, yeah, the penny has dropped. After Tomazzi's challenge. Again, you can't really fault it. Like I said, Tom, Tomazzi's posted up, almost posturing a little yeah. bit that, yeah, we're going to fight for this site. Paper X, uh, another situation where it's just, uh, they, they're not willing to show any respect. Spike plan. Molly here, orbital strike, showstopper, plenty Ooh. of post plant possibilities here. I was just wondering actually how quick this flank's going to come through, but yeah, Mind Freak's. Got to be aware of it, right? Yeah, I mean, he dropped the smoke, he's back on it now. Yeah. He's going to look to orbital strike just for the dog. He's, 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 he's cooked it. Not ideal in that, and now Forsaken going to play forward. Paper X still starting to thrive, coming alive. Defy and Forsaken in unison. Send them packing. Carmine Court are trying. They are trying to play this scrappy game, and it just isn't working for them. Fortunately, here now, I have a lot of scoreboard pressure in oh. this first half, a six round deficit. We've only seen too much of a switch up here from Paperx, but still seemingly a decent read on the early round. Able to punish this. Aggression down a short time and time again. They've got to change this scoreline somehow. Otherwise, Carmine Core, their backs will be breaking from the heavy heart just looking at that scoreboard. It's 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 brutal to play against mentally because you're trying to you know, pick yourself up to be confident, to take challenges against a team who are running you down. And again, a little bit of variation coming out from Paper X here, looking at trying to adjust towards that B side, or at least an early indication of it. TP committed to it looks like. Actually, no. Going to decide to back away. Now they're almost faking that they've rotated, creating all this pressure, dumping all this util, but all it is is a switch up towards B-Long. But Magnum's going to sniff out. That was good information yeah. there and the Seekers. But they are going to go on this. I'm waiting to see Monnier dive in here. They've got to know that Tomasi is still around as well. You can see the Leers there. Martin has found Mind Freak, but they've got the site control. You can already see that they've started to really place their banner on this site. Look for the flanks. Look for the pressure on the back lines. We need that plant to come in for at least a little bit of safety for Paper X, which they've got right about now. 4v5, it gets Dicey. For Three Saken. coming through Hooker. Got to invest that little bit of utility to try and keep them further Look away. Look at the reflank, though. Look at Device's position. That could be huge. He's got to get there quick, though. Timing. Can something hold them back? Can he buy a couple of seconds here? That's all he needs. A couple of seconds. Device done so well. He does catch Shin. Forsaken then called in. It is just methodical in approach. It's a 2v2, but look at the HP. The walking wounded limping towards the site. It's just Magnum left alive. And that is just not going to work out. Paper X just outstanding right now. This is them in final full form in my mind. They have plans on plan. I mean, it's almost automatic as soon as the Trailblazer comes down long. Yeah. Paper X know they have to be explosive. Kill their Capitalize on that timing. Get ahead of the rotation of KC. 
Uh, again, you can't even really fault. You look at the minimap here, and, and when Paper X freeze on this first wave, the first pressure out towards Hooker, KC are immediately rotating. They, they, they know that Paper X are trying to find these timings. I think now Paper X starting to play with that a little bit. Subverting it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's so the pressure good. now. KC is so desperate to get a round win up. They want to be so active around the map that they create these holes themselves. This is our experience in play again. You know, we can give Eng all uh, the credit in the world. Paper X have done this to Everyone. countless teams. Countless Best teams. Best in the world. Best yeah. in the world through, through errors at this point, keep in mind. This isn't just, you know, a team that's only done it once during an Poison X on. stint when, you know, the meta was X, Y, and Z. No, this, this is a historic team who's been able to do this over a variety of errors. Look at it now, Shin's smoked look down long. And look what, they, look yeah. what they've done to him. This is all on the back of just the one wall coming through, but okay. Big Rex might have a mystery in here. Scout destroyed. There we go, this this could be it, but they've got to make it work with very little. Martin's got to be good for it, spots one, lets him cross. This is huge, the discipline is here, but can he drop the bodies? He can, that's two, a third needed, not going to get it. They still have a chance here, Paper X. They're up against what? pistols, what is going on? Something just flew in, Narei got a satchel kill. What the hell just happened? One of the most bizarre Mastercard thrifties you'll ever see. Yeah. <laughs> Something seemingly thinking he has double the range with a shorty. <laughs> <laughs> Very bizarre. And just after crediting them, this is a total misread of the situation. KC finally able to actually win out in one of those scenarios that I was saying wasn't really suiting them up until now. Yeah. Operator on, I believe, either side. Yeah, Narrate's got his something. Gonna go for it too. And now we're in a bit of a state of flux, aren't we? Things are a little bit up in the air. Are they, are they going for those double fakes again? Are they are they just gonna be you know pausing off to take maybe a little bit of space? What are they up to? Lots of question marks. This is gonna put Magnum through the ringer. And already Narrate gonna find something. So that's his opposing number basically removed. But the bulk of the hit is coming this way. So Tomazi didn't actually catch the stun there. Will result in the pit coming out in response. Big ultimate to draw out this early on. Tomazi did actually take some damage there. He's got to be careful. Among that exchange. Do have a third member here. Narrate has come across with the operator just to hold elbow, yep. There. Problem for Shin. I don't think he's going to take too much damage here and actually rewarded. Masi still trying to keep his head down. It's 10 HP in here. Yeah, a little bit of spam, a little bit of a shot going astray is going to at least drop the pit for them. That's a plant now. Mind freak and divide. Oh, oh going to be invested from Martin. He's going to try and lead the way. Can he spot these players out? Yeah. Did he see Mind Freak slip towards Elbow? That's the question, because he can try and divide and conquer. The flash is sent, they know it. This is good from Carmine Corbett. Can they have them? Yes. Alt upon alt, they are investing everything. And now divide in a 1v3. Flash still with Martin. That's about it. And yeah, that's clean from uh, from Narrate there. That's fine. He'll be happy with that. And they it give themselves a window to work with Mike. It's not much, but it's there. Like I said, you come out of this with an 8-4. Feels like a bit of a miracle with how this half kicked off. Yeah. KC with a course correction towards the end of this first half. I mean, look at the, the timeline here. Very, very quick response here. Yeah. From Paperx to apply this pressure towards Uka, but it's the Viper's bit that really slows them down, forces Paperx to reconsider their approach. And a crucial 4K from Narate, really the superstar, I guess, overall so yeah. far here in Madrid. 4K seat. Guys, a standout player, huge potential. And for an early crunch towards A. Paperx maybe waiting for that burst hit. Yep, there it is. Something they depended on before. Going back to it again, it was brutal. You saw it before. Monnier really ran rampant, but it was actually Magnum this time to hold him back. This is better, but he's not going to be alone. Narrate's trying to close the gap a little here. Might deny Forsaken. He does. Yeah. Good work. Boombot to follow, but there is a squad of three staring him down. The Cove is keeping them safe. Another satchel, another denial. Rotations are coming in. This is great This textbook. This is really good from Narrate. Again, from that capability before to this, but the rotation, Mike, they're, they're taking the TP, they've got a free sight. Yeah, something's looking for the backstab. Molly will go down, that will cut off any sort of pressure coming back through 
from spawn here in the raid, does he consider the possibility? He's got to, right? We've seen this. He's so conscious of taking that TP. Oh, fight on CT though. Not gonna be able to get the follow-up shins there. That is control from Devai. Delivers bullet after bullet perfectly. And now the problems for the final two, trying to play it back towards the site. Team looking to try and take control with that operator. Look through, see if you can spot someone out. But again, they're playing deep. They're gonna make him work for it. Spots something over towards Long. Spots Devai. They've seen both of the players. Can they close down on them though? They're not going. Oh, they do swing ahead. I mean, it's paid for X, and apparently Narei can see you just fine. Carmine Core just about back in this, Mike. Something unfortunately locked out of the site here with an SMG. No real possibility for him to get much done, but a beautiful recovery. You hate to say that at an 8 4 scoreline, but a recovery nonetheless for Carmine Core. See if the approach continues here for PaperX in the second half. And apply that same sort of aggression once again, Lauren. Can they keep it up? Can they keep that tempo up, Carmine Core? Scraping together those four critical rounds. Is it going to be enough? That is the question that is on our minds because it started off quite nicely for Paper X as they were able to put a sizable amount of rounds together. But this actually takes us to our Verizon high speed moment of this particular half. This one, we start things off with Monier. Good to see him, uh, you know, really picking up where he left off yesterday. Yeah, to me, these these first two rounds were about Casey figuring out how these side hits work with this harbor wall pathing one way and Monier having a lot of different variants on how he paths into this site. They were really punishing Casey early on. On. A big mistake to make is wanting to play back site to be able to flood back in against a team like this so you can fight them while they're executing. But with this interesting pathing and the way that Paper X plays with timings, that's almost impossible to do. So as this half developed, we started to see, I, I think, some good adaptation from KC, but it was only towards the end that they really figured it out. And this guy was such a big problem to solving that. Yeah, exactly. Time and time again. Uh, it looks like we're going to talk about Monia every single day, but he deserves it. And I think that play was also a very, very good example example, uh, low buy, you know, because it's a bonus, you, ha you, you, you have the ability to float them. That's exactly what you need to do on the side of KC. By the way, I was saying the Reyna not completely sold, and I, I forgot for one second that it is something, and he only needs to be on the operator. So, of course, I'm still looking at him for this defense side because of w the reason why you would play Reyna is to deny those traits potentially when you have the operator. If he has the same effect that he has in other maps, he's a very big threat. It was a tough half for KC, but they've rallied at least four. If they can win this pistol round, build some momentum on this half, right they can it. be strong. Their comp is really good at fighting for these totally extremities doable. and having really fast rotations with the Yoru. They're comfortable here. They have their confidence now. This should be a much closer half. Yeah, I see a KC that has woken up a little bit. I'm sure these fans are definitely adding to that momentum, but let's see if Paper X quells the fire. We're going to send it back over to Pansy and Hypoc. Eight to four. Paper X did nice. kick this off with a belting start. No Two ways to put it, but Carmine Core have clawed their way back. They found a rhythm, they found a solution, and he got them four rounds in pocket. But Mike, do you reckon they can hold on to this? Uh, I mean, it, it, it depends really on Paper X's willingness to apply the same sort of pressure here. Hello. Hang on, I thought he was just sassing onto site here, forsaken <laughs> with the punish over uh, the top look at of the truck. Flank. Look at the flank, there's four It's players. so fast. So as he's got to have heard, yeah, he's heard all of this. He's just trying to keep his head down. Trying not to be spotted. Oh no, he's just in the power. Oh, it's the lair. Oh, it's the lair. Oh no, Paperworks. Sweep through them in the blink of an eye. Oh dear. Flawless. Absolutely shut down on this pistol round. Oh, run it back for me one time because what on earth? I mean, credit to Forsaken. Not only does he find the kill, but stays alive long enough where this, this yeah. four-man flank, I mean, isn't really necessary. It's OTT, if anything. Yeah. I was the Lear coming in, and it just screwed him over, didn't it? One enemy remaining. Just oh. peeks out. Devai is still back here because he's dogged through. The Trailblazer yeah. comes through, opens up the first three players of Paper to come in. Tomazzi just peeks out of the wrong second. Satchel out. Got a force. Coming through something. Oh, the judge. Devastating. I know there's going to be more pressure, but he's down low, so he's got to be a little bit careful on the HP. Martin is already back by sight, but something still doing damage. Gets the heal off and goes in for more. Carmine Gore 
just about staying alive in this. Give themselves just a little bit of safety to get a plant. Flank Bank once again planted. from short. You see it's been pinged out here. The awareness is here from KC. Magnum reflanking it. Oh, yeah, he doesn't catch them though. Ahead of the smoke falling. Oh, this timing could be awful. Yeah, that's, that's Monye dead. Yeah. There's nothing he could have done. Mind freak now. Sitting pretty. Mind what can you smoke. do against three? Two towards lamps. Ah, there's too many bodies there. Can't mind core. There we go. Finding a little bit of an answer there for themselves, but I was a bit worried that honestly something's judge was going to be enough. Yeah, I, I mean it's scrappy as anything yeah. to kick this off. Something again, I, I don't know what range he thinks he has with shotguns. He's <laughs> <laughs> jumping out here to try to find another kill. A round two flip here for KC. Nice! Let's go, boys. Insane comeback starts now, yeah? Okay. Well, he's called yeah, it. All right. He's called it. God, why would you say that? That's literally how you just get swept. So, uh, we've had so many caught in 4K moments at this event. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh no 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 it's fine it's fine they've got two vans so yeah massive yeah. equipment advantage here yep yeah one yet and forsaken understand the shotgun range a little better than something he's just ambitious <laughs> he's just a little ambitious. you can't fault ambition no oh, there you go now there's the pause because you can see that Kai Kai kind of stunned oh, here, yeah. They're just like, what the hell's gone on? Because they don't have a beat on the rest of the map either, right? Like the A site's <laughs> completely unknown. There could be a flank on the way. They have no clue. Well, these are the sort of compositions that this sort of playstyle from Paperx does run rampant. With no Sentinel, there's so many question marks. Mm, the Bucky. How does one feel about the Bucky? I mean, if they, they're playing in long. They're, they're, they know to try and avoid the the danger zone here, but Monyet, a chance to make left. something happen I'm potentially waiting. here. I mean, he's inside the smoke. He's got the paint show out. You can deny the plant at least. I just feel like something's going to go wrong. I, I've just got no, a he weird deny feeling. The plant. Okay, went to the eats that. center of tube. He'll considered, but they don't really have the foundations. For oh, God! No, 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 the Bucky! Monier's on the site! Surely not! Shinna Magnum, please! What's going on? Monier isn't going to get away with this. Nah, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Magnum there grips hold of the round. Thank God the right click of the Bucky is useless now because Shin's down at 8 <laughs> HP. Oh, I got scared. There's a timeline where those right clicks are oh, yeah, one-shotting yeah. Magnum. Beaming him. Something is such a nuisance as well. You can see him just playing out perfectly. But the timing of this first kill as well. Nice back. Oh, done to him. After almost being cursed. In the pre <laughs> but um, we do see the buy coming out now. This could be huge. Seeker's available here for Carmine. The other side of things, something. Let's have his ultimate. Early showers control. For KC. We're expecting more aggression. I mean, 30 seconds in. Seems like it's going to come and Devi is the one with the punish here. Uh, Martin was able to scrape by with one, but the pressure isn't just on one side of the map, it's everywhere. Oh my god. Oh. Why feed the line that up? I don't. I felt it. <laughs> I got. Uh, what the hell is this game? Okay, so Tomasi has space on B, right? He's got them B sight. Problem is, Shin has about as much HP as he did last round. Oh, God. Tomasi trying to make something work, yeah. make this a little more comfortable. Shin will fall as well. Paper X double digits now. Three of them left with rifles. They can bolster that buy around it as best they can. But this crunch, it wasn't just here, though. Again, run your mind back. It was also Monnier at the same time taking this space. Yeah. And it just completely caught off Narei. One enemy remaining. You say don't die, fish. You say don't die. Because <laughs> <laughs> again, it's like you see, you see what three potentially four people on the showers pinch. You're like, yeah, yeah B's got to feel a little easy right now, guys. Like, oh, yeah. Oh. It's all encompassing from Paper X, and their ability to punish defaults like this is—it's just—it's tough to watch, but at the same time, it's beautiful.
Oh, it is. Careful, and, and the question is, how much can Forsaken hold Look on to? Fountain. He's being hounded. Yeah, because the hunting squad is on the way, but they've completely lost the A site. Fortunately, he's going to be trying to keep himself alive. Forsaken outplays Martin perfectly. But Narrate is there to try and keep this in their favor. The spikes in CT. What? They didn't check close right. Tomasi played in off the back of that. Now position noted, but that spike's still in CT. They might make a run for it towards B. They don't know yet. They don't know how this fight's going to favor. How does it tip the scales? You still have Monier in this position. What is this round? And what is that shot? How is he getting two? He shouldn't be getting two. He's got Seekers to deal with as well. They don't, they don't as well. Know. It's they an open idea. plant. They have no idea. Death creeping around the corner as the right now called upon. This guy is damn good, but he is going to need a worldy round here. Oh, That's maybe be he's it. got it. Pain shell back on Devi. Dipping down has to slip away. And now Devi in the 1v1. No flash, nothing. Five bullets. Oh, and Devi's got him. Devastating after the raid was this close to getting KC back in this game, but it is going to be 11 carved on the board for Paper X. Trading blows now back and forth. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Uh, and the fact that Mind Freak's in a position here to punish Shin. Narrate, unfortunately, uh, again, it feels like this is a, a free site. So he has the time and the space to get towards long, find a more comfortable angle. Heartbreak for Narrate. God, he tried. Almost made that happen. Such a volatile game between these two. Yeah. Like normally in these rounds, my mind yeah. drifts a little, but there's still stingers out. There's still sheriffs. There's still a couple of ults that could potentially come into play. Seen both teams capitalizing rounds like this. I mean, Monia's here with a judge. Our spike carriers down. Mind freaks just um, farming down, B. on B side. Oh dear. Buried. Um. Can't wait for the replay of that yeah. one. <laughs> what the hell just happened? It was a Prius moment. <sighs> Classic. Oh, we might see the end of the round, though. Last oh, year, Forsaken. So sharp to it. Magnum now left to try and recover. He's okay, got another one. A on. third on the round for him. Yeah, it's been enough to call in the ult, right? Like, this is enough. Can he get the... through? He slipped through the spawn. He has. They haven't spotted him. They didn't actually see him on the cross. That's huge. It gives him a little bit of time, right? Like, it's not a lot, but it's enough that he might be able to get a plant down. They have no idea. He could be an elbow by them. You know, they have no idea where he is. This is massive for Magnum. What position does he take up? He's going oh, to push go back on. towards spawn. And actually, Paperworks are splitting. He might have timing here on something. But, but does something slow down? Does he wait? Does he try and play this out? He's going to note Forsaken, obviously. He doesn't know about something yet. So he's going to have to just make a, a, the best educated guess he can. Is this a good enough position? That might almost help him a little. Something does have full kit, though. So that Leer, he's going to know it now. Which way? He's got to gamble. <gasps> Did something note him? He's looking this way. Magnum, can you clutch this up? Can you do what Narrate couldn't? You got one to the right, one to the left. He can't do it. Forsaken there. Well played by Paper X. That is 12. Map point on the board. Right down to the wire once again. KC still, uh, I mean, scoreline aside, yeah, keeping these cool. rounds close, Lauren. Yes. Like I said, trading blow for blow here. Enemy down. Oh. Yeah, farming. Farming nice. hookah. Purchase will come back for Carmine Core. Showstopper to work with. One away from the pit, two off the Seekers. So some tools potentially here. Can they keep Matt one alive? I think this patient start. Cautious. Because we have seen that Paper X will run you know, three men down, uh, you know, down B long. But we are seeing Monier this time actually pushing up towards A short. Holding. Uh, Judge, how long does he stick around? I think he's siding against committing towards it. Divide. Not actually relinquishing the angle. Stuck around on that, deciding not to fall back. There are two players behind him, Forsaken being one, and Mind Freak the other. You see, almost trying to bait out a rotation, much the same as Paper X did. But the re here from Hooker could be rewarded. They might even have to turn their backs. 
This is a disaster in the making. They have no idea. No, he's looking back. Great turn, but it doesn't matter. The executioner's here. Mind Freak gonna make something out of that. Two big kills found, but they have a player advantage for Carmichael. Three to the two. They have a pit to work with, though. Tomazi can lock down this site. Monyet gonna be able to find an upgrade here. Something's, Something's got ahead of the smoke. He's in, he's in, he's in, and he's got one. Martin's gone. He couldn't do any more, but he's bought enough time for at least Monier to get close by, get a rifle into his hands. One on site, one towards oh my god! Monier unleashing fury, but he couldn't fight Tomasi. Carmine Core live for another round. Barely alive, but they do it. Two examples of that energy being their downfall. A little overzealous, the approach from both something and Monier. Punished here, KC will find their seventh. One enemy That's remaining Mare's standing. Regardless, though, they are both looking absolutely electric. Mine's a mini. Do you know what? I miss mini. I do miss mini. I wish we could bring him out to these events, you know what I mean? Just still get him on a React camera. Oh, God, yeah, yeah that'd be great. <laughs> I think that's just called a watch party, but still. He's not figured that one out yet, which is great. So maybe we can still steal him. As it stands, though, Paper X still on the very verge of tipping the scales. This round, though, they are coming in less equipped. They do have Sting as Sheriff. So they still have that rifle on something. I mean, tools to work with as well. Showstopper yep. potentially here if one yet finds a kill. You've almost got the full deck of ults on the other side, though, right? You've got everything there. There's a full play stack. Here. Now, traditionally, we've, we've seen a couple of variations, but it's mostly Divide playing towards Long, so maybe just him showing his hand is, isn't going to give away too much. That, however, should ring a couple alarm bells, maybe hoping to catch him a little further up towards Long, but I might call patiently waiting. The dog, I'm not sure I'm how many of them spotted there. Seeker's in response here from Magnum. Everybody huddled towards his position. Smoke's about to drop here. Monier Thanks. caught in the open. That's Forsaken as well. Still oh, traded. Bit of damage here, and Device still around. Wait for something, left. though. He's the final boss, and TP comes in. Yeah, nice work from Carmine Core. Quick pivot. Something is trying to hunt them at a similar pace. He is getting to spawn. He might get around the back of Shin here, depending on the timing. But still, they're going to get the plant. I don't think anyone's close enough to stop that now. So that's going to go down for the back line. Who wins this out? I think it's going to catch Shin here. Orbital's trying to commit it. Mind goes down. Mind Freak did get the trade, but look at this. Something now getting closer. We're down to two on either side. Mind Freak still only with that sheriff, but it might be enough. Martin waiting in showers. He's going to take down Mind Freak. It's all on one. Something. And he makes something out of this. An incredibly hard round to try and break back into now with these positions. We turn back into the flash. No that. swing from Martin. Oh. Double swing. Yeah. Lovely, lovely work there in the post plant from Carmine Core. They're keeping this game close, Mike. They're, they're, they're building back now. They're springing their step. Four rounds still separate them. Frugal from both sides here in terms of investment of ultimates. Surprised to see the orbital strike come out there. Paper X must have felt pretty good about things. Alex, not so much. Penn took a beating. Yeah. But ultimates still available. Seekers and the showstopper being the headliners for Paper X. Still got that pit for Tamazi. Martin now try and fish out some information here on a site. Let's see. He's blocking him. Just <laughs> spotting him out there. How much can he get away with, though? Can he slip through towards CT? But all eyes on him, but it's Narrate from up above. Take it down Forsaken and something. Site's now open. Martin not going to be able to convert that kill, however. And they're getting quite paranoid of the flank. They're going to pop. The ult as well on top of it. Viper's pit to try and secure this. Monier with the first man forward, but Narrate with the spray. Just connects well. This might be enough. A showstopper gone. Paper X's opportunities now dwindling. You can see that. Now to consider the save here. So well coordinated. The value amongst these two, Narrate Thank and Martin, yes. to relay this information. Right, the sort of. Yoru execute that Paper X famed this sort of composition for. A taste of their own medicine here. Won't be able to string together much of a purchase after this. But two rifles nonetheless. Yeah, it's about a Paper X timeout with what happened yesterday. How quickly God. things turned around after calling a timeout. True. 
Carmine Core have built their way back into this map. Another buy round and a chance to tie things up. Force the overtime. And not many tools at their disposal now. The previous seat pretty frugal in terms of the investment, but a saving grace here that PaperX will only bring in two rifles, a couple of sheriffs, a stinger, a showstopper. Definitely a concern. Looking to see if they're up to anything, if we're seeing that stack anywhere. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if something goes walkabouts. Him joining them over towards B might be Time somewhat indicative of it, but again, just kind of scraping together a buy to try and even out the economy a little bit, getting what they can. Something's been a little off on his purchases in that regard, but still, Martin trying to test. He's going to get himself the orb there. Patient beginnings. Does that TP get taken on the other side as well? Looks like it might be if they do spot a player, but as it stands, it's only Martin considered. I was faking a little bit here, but that should be very indicative of, of what's going on. KC can read that correctly. Still happy to let the clock tick away. So they might pivot back towards an A site hit here. A deep smoke from Mind Freak. Potentially slowing things down. Nothing going to be found off the showstopper except for information. KC now dial up the pace towards A. Yeah, they've got to get moving and they've got to clear. Done by Narrate. That's a tick in the box now. Can they take towards the site? Mind Freak is waiting. Quick little heal. Going to get them topped up here. Flank is on the way, but that's going to be watched. Shin is on flank duty. He's got to catch Monier. CT has the rest of the team coming back through. Martin clears Mind Freak. And now to fight something shoulder to shoulder. We spotted him on yet, saw him. Spotted. He's going to be able to. Did he just get seen on the other yeah, side? Yeah, he got seen on the other side. Okay, so still, that's that's the threat noted. Monier should be dead here, yeah. Three-man squad waiting for him. Done. Quick turn of attention, because look who's on the side. That Device now here. Tomasi handles it well. Something can do nothing about this. Too many bodies, too little time. Carmine Corp. Flawless. They're back in the game. Double digits made. Maybe OT is now on the horizon. Went out this buy round here. I mean, especially with the showstopper being invested. This paperx just... It's itching to make something happen in this round. One enemy remaining. Yeah, it'll be tough behind this. That could give KC access to overtime. Nice, let's go, boys. Let's go! Forsaken, one of his ultimate something. Empress. Cutting through. Nothing else really here. The TP from Shin. Scatter. Well, the TP Ooh. from Shin's going to get right behind Spike. this. He's committed to it. Spike! No! Tomasi and Martin get caught on the cross. That could be it. That Spike is in a disastrous place. Shin doesn't get noted by the flash, but they're so aware. Monier sweeps back through. Oh, it's just one of those rounds where Paper X decide to walk on you. Round 23, by the way. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. You let yeah. your foot off the gas for a minute. A second. A second. You thought maybe, oh, we could just cross up towards who got... Nope. No, <laughs> you, you absolutely couldn't. And that might be the start and the end of this map. That spike being lost there. Because they can go back to their... I mean, I yeah, I love the, th the, the way the Paypex have just disengaged from this as well. So they know I KC have so many question marks here. They have to shift walk around the entirety of the map. Now got the spike, 40 seconds left and limited options. It looks like Narrate be a problem. Yeah. Pull rotation and pray that Magnum can outdo Forsaken. He's got one flash and a, a slow left. rotation coming his way from Monier as well. So he's in a real pickle here. Forsaken has the angle and he's got the shot. Spike now left. It's all on one. Narrate, can you do anything? Monier is getting audacious, but Paper X get to 13 and claim map one. Great resilience shown here from Carmine Court. It's tough to ever have to mount a comeback versus a team like Paper X where every round feels demoralizing. Feels as if you're just getting outfragged, basically. Yeah, this is a wake-up call. Welcome to the big leagues, Carmine Core. 10 rounds was good. 13 was much better.
Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us, only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings. Tengo mucha cosa que decirte ahora, pero antes de empezar quiero que le demos sin freno. Si tú quieres podemos empezar de cero. Sabe que contigo yo me atrevo. Hey guys, I'm here right now with Coach Alex of PRX. Now that map was uh, quite close. Um, it's interesting because PRX uh, has been described as like having five IGLs. So how do you as a coach manage to rank all of that? Um, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the way we practice. I think um, the most important thing is trust. Like we trust each other a lot and uh, anyone can take over anytime they want. And uh, we also do a lot of work trying to align, you know, that's pretty much it. All right, well, so far so good on this strategy. So let's see if PRX can close out this one. Definitely does come through with this team. We've always talked about it with PaperX. They're a squad that 
always, always, always just kind of like rise in momentum. They communicate with one another. Their comms oftentimes don't even lean on just one individual. For me, it kind of sounds like a Halo match sometimes where they're all just yapping at the same time. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah, it is wild. The, the first half of this game to me was quintessential paper rex. They were out there paper rexing all over oh, yeah. them, <laughs> dragging Casey down into the chaos. And that's what I was worried about for such a young team playing a squad like this for the first time. Them dragging you into that chaos, your comms getting muddled, you experiencing something you haven't really played against before, and Paper X thriving in that. And that was the case for quite a while. But I think we really saw a step up from both these teams to be forced to play a lot more strategically and actually to Carmen Core managing to gain some control in the second half. And loving those small micro plays that we love Paper Rex for. We're talking about the Reina denying those trade ins is something that she can do so easily. And it fits so well to Paper Rex and especially to something. Some of this round literally made no sense, maybe. Yeah, it was absolute chaos, but I, I think you're absolutely right that that's kind of what's defined Paper X for so long, but yeah. it's also true of what Carmen Core was doing. I think a lot of the good in this map was when they were showing us these Yori Walt combos. They were setting themselves up after that. They definitely learned more how to play against Paper X. It's just that this squad built themselves such a huge buffer on that attacking mm. side, and they're always going to steal at least one or two rounds and a half. It's really hard to come back from a deficit against yes. this squad. And not only that, we saw Casey actually getting lost in the sauce. We were seeing uh, a lot of ultimates invested in just one route to make sure. it through, as you're mentioning. Yeah. Uh, the Yoru, even the Showstopper, everything being used at, at, at wrong timings. We see also Magnum struggling a little bit uh, with his own ultimate on how and when to use it, just because of how overwhelming Paper Rex is. And that's exactly that. They're the team who is going to rip any hole you have in your communication, any hole you have in your practice. They're going to they're gonna rip that apart because of, of how chaotic they are. The question now, going into the rest of the series for me, is whether this team for Carmen Core can wrangle control of this one, because Lotus, yeah. our next map, it feels like for them, that is their comfort comfort zone, and I don't feel like these uh, these little combos, these alt combs that we talk about for Paperx are as strong on this next map. I'm glad you mentioned that. I do want to know what the coach of, uh, excuse me, of, of Carmen Core has to say. We have Eng standing by with Mika. Hey guys, Mika here, and now I'm with Coach Eng of KC. Now, um, Eng, uh, Magna mentioned earlier that uh, PRX can be a team that is pretty annoying to deal with. So I want to know what they were doing exactly that was so difficult to deal with, and how you guys were able to mitigate that as you as the side switch. Uh, first of all, uh, they are an amazing team, really with amazing play style, a very unique play style. So. Uh, I don't know what to say, to be honest, because of uh, it just, to be honest, it's a pleasure to play against them. Really, really, we're learning a lot from this game. So, yeah, uh, I don't know, like, but <laughs> what, what can I say? It's hard to read them because of this, like, unique style, yeah. And I don't know what to say, to be honest, but we will try our best on the second map, so, yeah. That was such a wholesome answer, so let's get to it, second map. It almost felt like Coach Ang uh, Kakuka was a little, little speechless there as well because I mean, he has he has expressed pay, praise for a lot of the players mm. that they've met on that stage. But there is something unique and special about this Paper X team. Yeah, exactly. Ang can be as wholesome as he wants, but he's going to need much more if he wants to face off uh, Paper X now in Lotus. This is the map chosen by KC, and maybe the, the, one of the reasons is what happened yesterday uh, uh, when Paper X lost this map. But again, I think it's going to be a lot of what happened on that bind just replicated and a lot of what happened against heretics happening again on this lotus a mind freak that doesn't respect any timings any position that's just going to push through and a lot of crazy and set plays again yeah it, it is absolutely a map where paper rex does that same style but for carmine core we we have to talk about the history of them on this map they've been playing the fanatic comp they beat fanatic on this map they have beat pretty much every top team they've gone up against on lotus here this is where magnum tends to put on a master class their attack side yeah decision making the way that they call is always near perfect you know quite hearing? honestly and i, I actually hearing. think their style if paper x is going for these forward places they don't yeah. have the rain in a combo they don't have the same kind of util setups it's crazy that i'm talking about reina as like the yeah. big <laughs> util agent but they don't have those rain those util. same they don't have those same tools to set up these combos like they do on some of these other maps so i think mm. this will be a bit of an easier time for kc to punish when they're playing their attack so you mentioned the the lotus situation and yes. them being so good at this map but i also have to say in the back of my mind mm -hmm. that if Paper X comes out just like they did on Bind with a big lead, and then you're like, oh my god, we were supposed to be good here. Ugh. Yes. I get a little worried about the young team on that stage in that situation. And not only that, we were talking about how, uh, how Monier is doing great in this tournament, how to this specifically, he's performing yeah. super well. Another the level. Other 
And he's going to be leading that race onto Wild. Forsaken. I and mean, then we saw Forsaken's debut on yeah. race last night. Loved it, loved I mean, well, debut, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there, that. This is a crazy switch to make, but it's Paper X. Rules don't matter. Agents aren't real. <laughs> I was going to say, it's Paper X. <laughs> this is it for Carmine Court. This is a team who went on a run in EMEA. From Melons to Madrid, they have done something no one could have ever expected of them. And now they're here in an elimination match, a game away from yeah. going home empty handed. These are all young players. For all of them, this is the biggest match, maybe, except Magnum Bay back when, but it's a very different time. It's now him as a leader, and they need to come back here. And for Paper X, it's quite the opposite. They need to close this in a very good fashion if they want to be contenders for those playoffs. Gen G is already waiting on the other side. It could be a great year for Pacific, especially if EMEA goes home this early. Well, it's now time to see what this Carmine Court team is truly made of against the game and ready Paper X to send it back over to Pan and Hypoc. Thank you so much. And yeah, this is putting question marks between us, right? Because that composition coming out from Paper X has surprised you and me. Uh, yeah, not, not so much the swap, but it's it's the fact we have the Astra in here. Uh, I mean, we're still running with this guy on Paper X. Again, there's, there's some dedication towards keeping that here. Yep. Uh, but it's the Astra. You, you can switch Mind Freak and Monia between. If this is just something that they pulled out after not being happy with the Lotus here in Madrid, yeah. a real head scratcher here to see how much is really going, because Astra has a lot of utility. Obviously, open up the possibilities, especially on a map like Lotus, a free site map. Paperx early on probe towards B, but didn't really catch wind of anything on the other side of that. Magnum will spot out the rotation. Yeah, no real progress towards site here, and they see a little bit disconnected from B once again. Looks like Paper X going to follow through this time. Oh dear. Oh dear. Forsaken's in a bit of a tricky position, but Monier's got the shot on lock. Going to take down one and Forsaken with a follow up. One Paper X just brawl out on the site and win out on the site. Heartbreak break for KC there as Nare just drifted on through. How does this happen? Got a beautiful setup here. The paint shell posted in between the two mollies placed on site. I mean, it, it, it's good to really get Eng's insight there, call it insight, <laughs> like saying, really, what do you do? How can you prep? There's, there's not an awful yep. lot you can do other than uh, the age-old kind of play your own game <laughs> sort of approach. But uh, then when you come out here and there's a different One composition, there's another set of question marks. Whether or not Paper X really even rely on these agents to excel in terms of utility or continue to run it down. Forsaken and something on your front line, you've got to feel very confident regardless of who's on what behind that. We're looking for that four play stack here. Because of that flash was enough, the Paper X don't like what they're seeing, and it's actually quite well timed that they drift away. They will have a completely open A site. They'll note the lack of utility after last round Magnum was there. I mean, it's not the biggest indicator, but now the fact that Forsaken has gone to the back of the site. Should give it away. Narrate, though, out How's does it, it with that? the classic. I do not know, but he'll be happy enough with it. On going to come down now, down to the Bye. four. It is just classics as well for KC. It's, there's nothing beyond that. There's not a frenzy. There's not a ghost. There's nothing. It is purely classic. So something going to take up the test now as well. I think they're a little bit conscious. Yeah. <laughs> Who's post off on heaven now? Identifying the judges there. Don't expect too many bodies to funnel in this way. No, right, punished on the second. Oh, Monnier's going to buy some time. Here. Yeah, a lot of time bought here. And something's on the case here, just prowling on the edges of those smokes. Opting to try and clear to farm through to try and hunt down these final players. But Magnum again with a connection. Can they make this really costly? It looks like they're going to try and exit through CT, which is the right call. Monnier going to double around. Spots them out. But hey, Carmine Core making this, you know, cost a little bit. Mind Freak and Divide do manage to escape. That Bulldog's still in play. I mean, I think they only lose the Judge, though, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> they just got taken back in, too, but yeah. You didn't see exactly what the purchase was, but regardless, something straight onto the operator. So another question mark in the mix here for Carmine Court. He doesn't really even have the benefit of having the Blade Storm kind of on the brink. So has to make this work. Has Dubai got anything? Oh, well, Sheriff now.
Drifting really deep onto this angle very early on. No resistance from KC on the other side, unless Magnum was spotted. Yeah. He was jump spotting that corner earlier. Yeah. But, uh, that might have to be taken away from the repertoire. I'm worried that someone else might be going to go. Narrate's very nearby to this. They've noted that operator. No bullets have been fired, but if they'd seen anything, you can't do it. You can see them trying to toy with it. Daring anyone yeah. to try and peek a little further forward, but no one is. Good control being shown by Carmine Corp. Mindfreak getting very close. Should have been considered here by Narrate, and he has been. They're really putting bodies behind this. A gap towards B here, but Spike not committed either way. So Paper X might resort to that now. I mean, it's only really Shin that's going to be able to cause any issues on the way in here. Narrate slowly <laughs> creeping closer and closer. Still not noting this operator. I mean, Spike's still not committed either. They're looking for a pick, but look how deep left. Carmine Core is sitting. They're not playing Paper X's games right now. Right cool as well. Reese smoking and the spike trying to make it across. Does anyone catch it in the heels? No, but something's cleared so deep here. They've got to be careful of door. They've got to be careful of the flank, considering how far something is cleared towards CT. Spike planted. Really doing. Unfortunately, <laughs> now a lot of questions. The KC need to figure this out pretty quickly. A real exchange of utility here as the retake starts to build up something rattling off a couple of shots, but Forsaken in a fantastic position as well. If he can hold this down, he can become such a thorn in their side. To try and maybe double up here with that something, but really there good. is the push. And look at these shots, just going to strike him on Yeah, do anything in a 1v3. Garmine Corflot in the sight, and he just can't find it. They put bodies in the right places. They time it well. They swing back through. This is one of those situations I was crediting on the first map, really. Paperx will keep pushing. You give them that space, but in case they are playing in spawn, they're still in by phase with 20 seconds left on the clock here. Yeah. There. Well, a really, really well coordinated retake. This is after there's, there's a gravity well to slow things down just inside Link. Don't leave oh. him hanging. Don't oh. leave him. Oh, no. Oh. Another 4K moment. It's a vibe killer. Vibes down, yeah. game's lost. Yeah, it's wraps. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Mike. Pace change, looking like. Uh, committed control towards mount this time as well. And yeah, look at this, very pacey. Gonna get the first real glimpse of this C site. Hadn't tested too much. And, and again, KC gonna evacuate. Why would they stick around? They've heard enough of this. Don't need any more of it. That's gonna be a plant. But look at that big flank coming out from Monier. His timing could be critical. They need to hold a fair amount of this space for it to really come to fruition. Looking to be a nuisance in the back lines here. This is not a good face off an operator versus a judge. Actually, Monier pulls the trigger at just the right time. Love seeing something swing as well, just to make sure it goes their way. And the last two being herded, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Narrate going to try and bully his way past, but it's not just one. The whole team's going to be here. Something going to be careful, doesn't want to lose the operator, but they're hunting him down now. The hunter becoming the hunted as Tomasi falls. And it looks like that operator's made its way out, at least until now. The door, was it broken earlier? I believe it was. Something holding. That's the finest angle. Trying to get away, Narrate. Got to be careful, though. There is the rest of the squad here now. And Paper X with that pace change, working out that seaside. A couple of uncharacteristic misses here from something. If you're going to continue to invest behind that operator. Too easy. Too easy. Really well coordinated here, Monye. And that potentially is the game plan for him on the Astra. Must be very disconnected from some of these sight hits. Again, that's the real benefit. If you can create this space and KC are happy to, to concede it. You have something like Monia getting behind all of these plays. Okay, some oh. real issues here, Forsaken. Push on the first hit. KC looking to get the hell out of dodge. You just can't aim duel against these guys. You just, even in a fair fight. And, and in the meantime, not only did they get the pick towards C, they've already started to make that progress towards A. Obviously, much better off in the weaponry and going to be rewarded. Monier going to be overwhelmed, though. Magnum going to get one back. 
That could be a weapon potentially recovered. Something on the case to keep control of it, and that's going to allow time for the plant to come in. Narrate still has that rifle, but that's about it. Beyond them, Stinger in play. Oh, that's rough. Not what he wanted there. Not what they wanted at all. There. Something gets pinged off that as well. Of course, back off that angle, but KC still need to get through this choke point. I don't know what they got to go with. Prowler's already sent down. They've got to just go for it, and Magnum out does something. Those misses starting to make a bit of a problem for Saken. Gonna find one, but falls. Narrate holding this down. Can, we, can he do this? Can he really pop off here? Three would be exceptional. He gets it to halfway. Oh, but Defy just oh he's got my him. God, he's got him! This time he gets his three. Clutch. Missed it on the first, but makes up for it in the second map here. The Red Bull clutch by his side. What a swing back for KC. It's all but done when they get held in this choke point. Magnum with a stinger outdoes something. Like I said, another miss coming through here. to be kidding me. No, I think as soon as he identifies, he's landed that headshot. Alex, probably not too happy about some of the overcommits here in this post plant. Not at that point yeah. where you can just swing onto them, run the clock down, force another two or three seconds yeah. off the defuse. Number eight, though, flipping it on its head. This early mountain challenge has not been going particularly well for KC. However, this time, do have a little bit more, but does he get caught? Magnum going to find Monnier. That was over towards the A side of the map, so. This could be working out. Oh, not at all. Actually, Martin going to spot the feet of Forsaken. It's going to be him eliminated. And that's two picks on either side of the map. You couldn't ask for a better start if you're Carmine Core. Tomorrow looking to flash through here, but doesn't even catch. Martin unaffected. Spike down. The paint shell's perfect as well. To slow mind freak down. Oh, Martin is having a go with things now. Uh, starting to have a round. Something looking to make up for what has been a dreary start for him. And that's not a bad way to begin it. And suddenly they're on red alert. This went from, okay, take a fight to, hold on, it's still something. Let's relax here a little bit. There's two players on CT. And he wants that. He wants to take that space. Does he? He's trying to work out if he's enough time maybe for a plant here. 35 seconds. He's causing them maybe a second or two of doubt. But the plant's something that he 30 wants. 30 seconds left. No one's playing his tune, though. No one's playing to his game. Problem is, with Shin still alive, opportunity to smoke off here, so he has to dig his heels in. Can't really reset towards mound with an open plant. He needs to have the blade storm. He needs to pick early. And if Carmine Core is as disciplined as we credited them, they shouldn't give him that. There should never be an opportunity. Smoke causes issues. Yeah. Can he under it? He no, he can't. I thought he might have had a little bit of a pixel there, but trying to play to the edge of it. And now they're grouping up. Oh my god, he's got the pick. Hold on! This is game on. Something is too much! Carmine Core, keep that control. Keep that heads up work. Playing together and getting the defuse. Scoreline all even. You see again winning out in the early round. Very early pick onto Monier. Really hinders that sort of slow play towards a post plant. Martin, though, looking really crispy with the operator here. One enemy remaining. Something unfortunately overwhelmed a little bit here. Not to finally manage to get the plant down. We'll see an early timeout from Paper X. See, Alex wasn't too happy in one of the post plants. That loss over on A site to narrate. I'm curious if this uh, overall is the approach that the Paper X want to take with this sort of comp switch up. The problem being, Divide just becomes, uh, I don't want to say useless, but, but it is, his impact is really limited mm. in, in these sort of kind of slow mid to late rounds. It's, it, it's not really going to cause too much pressure unless Paper X win out early on towards mound, early on towards rubble, get themselves towards a the site. And, and maybe maybe Monia is 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 on Astra to kind of counterbalance that. Potentially, I, I. But again, it's just a lot of these questions. I feel like get answered with one time and practice, and you can kind of find your way to work it out. But I, I don't know how much they play this. I mean, this is a new comp to you know to our eyes. I don't know if they've been running it behind the scenes. If this is just a very last minute change, if there's something they thought you know thought might work. Their traditional comp wasn't going to be the answer they needed. 
but to change it at this point is is I mean it's a credit to paper well, if, to be able the to answer do is it, to just but... get Forsaken on raise. I mean That's... It's, <laughs> it has worked <laughs> to an extent. Maybe you have to see how that uh, works out now. As it looks a simplistic start, but a great paranoia actually should facilitate them to the site. I don't think much is gonna stop them here apart from their own paint shot, but even then something fancies this go of it. Gonna get in there with a stinger. And look at this tempo change. Look at this. No plant, but they've drawn out the lockdown so early. Now gonna go you for this. Divide Divide's gonna go through. Yeah. And Martin's the one to find Monier. So that lurk's been removed, and they're gonna dive on in. Oh, you didn't get caught with the stun! The that showstop was huge! That's two! Three in the round! Two off the rocket, and now Martin, can he do any more? He's feeling it, he wants more. He's chomping at the one bit! He wants some dead! Magnum! Not gonna take down for sake of it. One more, can one man do something? Has to watch as the defuse comes in. And Carmine Core all too prepared for this. What a round for Martin again. The finest of margins to get past that trailblazer. I'm not even sure. Did he pick up an empty stinger at the end there? The way it looked like there's a little bit of a delay, but again, KC figuring out exactly what Paper X want to do with Monia on the Astra. The thing is, is what's the second layer to these post plants? If it is kind of tailor made around Monia buying time, Paper X aren't really achieving what they need to to make that work. Martin and Shin, and, and good to see Martin finding a bit of comfort here. He's been uh, not quite to the extent of what we saw online, or at least I say online, in the uh, kickoff tournament. He was, he was very much, uh, not I wouldn't say headline, you'd say you'd give that to Narate, but he was right underneath him, very close by. Good to see a little bit of that okay. form starting to really kick in here for him. And a quick adjustment for Paper X, eyeing up that A site after an early test towards Mount. And away they go. Forsaken. Gonna be cut off at the door though. And a quick adjust. Looking to potentially pressure. Maybe gets the timing right on this. They are all going towards CT. And for Narate here to post the nightfall. I'm waiting to see that pressure yeah, come back. Spike's still not planted. No. And something is screwed. Magnum clears him with ease and Forsaken finally strikes. But the rest of the team took a moment to back away, but it's narrate on the punish towards Monier. They're losing our numbers. Forsaken can only find so much impact, surely. They need to scramble away from here. The pit might almost act as a hindrance because Mind Freak yeah. can hold this. Now there's massive question marks outside this, but it's all four members of KC. They're flying Draw. through Martin! Finds Mind Freak. And that spike is over on C. It's going the longest yeah. way possible. So you're gonna need Forsaken to find so much. 10 seconds left, Divide will get Seekers off this. Still has a flash to work left. with. Forsaken needs so much here. He's gonna hear I've him got your this time. Shine, he's good for one, but Martin was so quick with the response. Divide next. In line here, jump on the first to draw the fire. Falls back, flash, buys a second. They've still gotta clear him. Does he get noted? Yes, he does. Oh, he's dead to rights. Carmine Core showing diligence now, starting to really get a grip on Paper X. This is rough. Timing a little off, uh, I guess the synergy a little off between Divine Forsaken here. Yeah. Forsaken commits to that early peak. He has the showstopper. You almost want them to come into this choke point here. Grenade. Out towards KC's spawn. And maybe. A little bit lost in comms there, but beautiful recovery from KC. It looked like they were going to lose out initially, but... The rates ultimate really the one to uh, give them access back onto a side. I'm carrying on. Yeah? Yeah. There. You? Uh, there's some, there was some temptation, but no, you're right, because look at this start. Look at Forsaken, right off the rip, trying to get the... Pro oh, <laughs> shut Forsaken the hell up. Not even going to get a voice line off, let alone the ult. And now what do they do? They've lost out on that early chance. You're down to four. Something's position's going to be noted. Already early rotation Here. from Narrate. And this map just doesn't look kind to Paper X now, Mike. It doesn't. KC. 
definitely in control here at the tempo. This first half. Magnum will potentially be called upon, spotted here on the cross, something. Maybe the dash across though, unscathed so far. Far will be uncontested. One yet disconnected once again. He's been red so often though. He's playing very late here, exceedingly late. So putting a lot of faith in the boys on the side, they can hold back this flood that's coming in right about now. One for one trade, but it's not enough considering they're down to two. Narei sweeping through, Mind Freak bites right back. And now Monye needs to come forward here. Needs to be part of this. Narei down low. Mind Freak toying with the TP. Monye can't hit the shot on the cross and now it's all on Mind Freak. What a way to come back in, Carmine Core! Get the job done. They are starting to really tip the scales here, Mike. The paper is really struggling. I mean, it almost has sort of echoes of the approach Fnatic had versus Paperx on this map. Concede all the space, happy to play the retake, and Paperx were just left scratching their heads in that series. Oh my court, look like they've taken a leaf out of that book. One enemy I mean, typically you credit for Paperx's ability to convert space into success. And this sort of play style, not really the approach to make, but Paperx really struggling. They are. Second time out called, round 10. Says quite a lot, just that in a fact, right? That. So, again, when we talk about this map for Wise, it did sit quite nicely with Carmine Core. We credited them very highly on this map. This is one that kind of put them, not necessarily on our radar, but it very much solidified what a lot of people were looking at. But the fact, as I said, that they're doing this to Paper, Paper X after was a very good first map. This has got to be a huge confidence builder for Carmine Core and kind of bringing them back to where they should be mentally because a lot of us kind of discussed this coming into this event as well. If they don't start off with a confident beginning, they could lose a little bit of that uh, I guess faith in the calling and executing the plans they've come up with, but so far it's looking absolutely on the money here. This could certainly spur them on as they go forward. But the timeout came in, a couple more rounds to play with, and a full purchase here for Paper X. With the TP for Shin. Three off the showstopper. Again, Martin not really been relying on that too much with how he's been hitting. Way to definitely more valuable investment in his hands than something so far. We have a pace change here. Paperx, no secrets about this on the way in. No slow creep. First time it feels like all five are actually working towards something. Normally Monnier was disconnected, but this time they're playing somewhat close to the pack here. Plant's going to yeah. come in. You can see Magnum creeps a little closer. Prowler are going to come through. They know Narate's nearby. Tomasi's still up. Flash there. Something trying to play ahead. Does really well with that. Takes out Tomasi and wants a bit more, but he's not going to be able to get back up that rope here. Forsaken going to be forced away as well, but they're still trying to stand their ground. Almost belligerent in approach, but it's divided by Magnum. Forsaken to answer one right back. Can they sweep the site? Narate, what you got for us now? You pulled off a 1v3 before. This is a lot, though, and he ain't got much time with this one. He's going to try and hold on to the opera. Oh, hang on. Still got back down rope here. Paper think he's saving. Oh, I mean, there's a star down, regardless on the spike. Oh. Looking to do some further damage to the economy, but I think running the risk, he should be safe to get out here. I don't think he's got time to get back in and get that operator. So, Paper X, a slight adjustment in pace. Coming out of the timeout. Get themselves around win. Yeah, we haven't seen this sort of play coming out so far. Uh, I think the, the the real thing to notice is Paperx have forced back in their shells a little bit. Which is strange. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? again, you can read this pretty well. It's like, yeah, as five, they're sitting back, they're in the CT, they're getting ready to retake. Usually Paperx will be like, cool, let's send two people in there. Let's, let's throw a flash in there. Let's, let's get a little deeper, but we haven't really seen that. That could have been more oh, the time wow. now. Uh, okay. You are lucky to be alive, Forsaken. That looked like it was about to be Raps and Mod. Come on! Still good for it. They're just taking straight up aim, Jules. They're standing here and fighting. I've got your trail. 
which team is which, it almost felt like it was Paperx doing that sort of stuff. Shin, you gotta be careful. Nine HP. Spike drop. And he was the last line of defense on this A site. A quick TP, but look who's reading it. Magnum, great. Oh reader. my god. No idea. Magnum just reads him like a book. I mean, there's almost an eternity that passes after these Seekers identify where Magnum is. Divine, this is tough. Shin's vulnerable, but now you've got Magnum with his entirety of his setup here. Spike, his position. Divine can't cross this without being spotted. This 56 HP as well. Yep. Here it is. Paranoia getting prepped. A little bit of free fire, left. but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, bye bye. Divide. Gonna go for the dog here. Couldn't quite close the gap though, noting that he'd fallen away from that close angle, but he's got 20 seconds. I think he knows this one. Yeah, just gonna yeah. slip through the fingertips here. I'm not sure if I, if I missed saw that, but I, I thought the seeker went to the left. Inve it's invested from rubble. Obviously, Shin took left. a ton of damage inside tree, but I'm not sure if we're gonna get a chance to see that on the replay. But the timing's just way off here. I believe if the door's broken, yeah, Magnum's broken the door. So I don't know if that information's just lost in the exchange or what. But a real gamble to, to take half. this TP all the way towards C site. Wait, if we do have any replay of that, it may not be the case. If yeah, I can't remember exa exactly what happens here because I was focused on it. Well, I've missed it there. Yeah. I know Shin took a ton of damage inside tree. Maybe they're thinking, yeah, we've tagged up the A site player, so surely Magnum's going to commit towards helping right. his teammate. Right, yeah. Oh. Bit of a critical issue there. Hey, oh, Magnum, Magnum. They're just taking mad challenges. Carmine Core, this is very out of character, but it's worked very well. Completely surprising Paper X with a change of pace, taking a somewhat late duel over by Mound. And it worked very well for themselves. Shin on fire there, taking down the fight. Monier noted. Very nowhere to run. Nowhere to run on that. Come on, Core. You've seen real different shades of this team in this half alone. Yeah, and winning out in that sort of round where Paper X are looking to get feisty. Get up in your face. Take an engagement. Squashed. And KC happy to throw bodies on the line. Let's go! Let's go, boys! Energy is doing it. Definite. Yes, energy booster. Yes. Confidence booster for Carmine Court. And now a chance to listen to one of the players who's really stepped up here, Martin. Hello, I'm Martin, and I play for Carmine Corp. Even though we know we can win against anyone, when our form is good, it's just not there at the moment, and I think the whole team is not feeling the well. We are not playing at the same level as we did in kickoff, and the team play and comms are just not on the spot. And then, honestly, we just choked. So I think that uh, Magnum obviously is a new IGL, but he's learning very fast, and I think his calls are very good. I don't think he fell short from Fijan QT. I think it was a team problem, not Magnum's problem. We for sure are better than that. 15 seconds, less, 10. Just no chance, surely. The only thing taps it, hoping that a few of these players will be out wide and open! Unbelievable! This time! Unbelievable! Ella seconds Celsius. available! Celsius is miles away. The Nightfall gonna confirm that he's not playing towards Rubble. The rate, nine bullets! For me as a duelist, I just need to not do stupid stuff, even though I'm having a bad game. I still need to make space and calm. If I ever don't do that, then the game is very hard for the others. So I think it's just me being calm because it's just another match. People shouldn't think that it's death or do match because it just adds on the pressure. It's just about us not having the greatest team play right now and we're trying to work on it. Eight to four, Carmine Court showing us a little of what really enamored us with them during that kickoff phase. Those retakes being very, very solid. Starting to see some of that individual flair coming out from not just Narrate, but also Martin as well. Some great reads from Magnum, some, some, a lot of those key elements. Now, on the other side here, flipping the script a little, Paper X, uh, 
it, was, it felt like a last minute change coming in with this comp. I, I'd be happy to be proven wrong if they say, hey, no, this is where we intend to be, but it didn't quite land where I wanted it to. No, no, and I, I think there's an opportunity to really, I guess, demonstrate it mm. in the second half here, but it just, it, it feels like in the mid round, these slow drawn out rounds where KC are happy to concede space, not use any utility, they're always gonna win out. You see, how calm my court are going to approach. Calling my bot. They get themselves up mount pretty quickly. The rest of Paperwork's making their way past Rubble right now. Cool. They're looking for Monyet to just disconnect, but Martin down to 20 Thank HP already. You. He's trying to stay maybe a little postured just to look a little more threatening than he is by a couple more seconds, but I mean, that flash it, should be noted. It's an open part, so KC looking to potentially reset towards mount, but actually, no, they're pushing spawn. Okay, and the turret's been dealt with quickly. That they, they should have an idea that everyone's here. They've seen three different pieces of utility and they're just going to flood CT. But already something's going to catch in. Can they try and disrupt these final players? It's going to be a playthrough back on short as well. Magnum going to be flashed off the angle. You can already see the smokes going to be coming up here. The defuse is going to be starting. It does get denied. It's going to be dragged away. Monier, something. Paper X. Look at fight. No way. Come off it. Come off it. you got five rounds. Relax a little. What are they up to? It's always the same Paper X underneath. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... What is that? Uh, the, the crazy thing is, it always almost looks like that's the plan, that's the call. Somebody's saying that. Like, I've got to reload. Oh, I'm going to knife him. I'm going to knife him. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Screaming. I can't believe it. it well, that's how they kick off the second half. Oh, no, I'm nervous now. <laughs> They're just going to do Paper X things like... Ooh. Hello. I've seen unconfirmed, but a ton of damage. That's a Monier. Oh, oh God. Mind Freak caught on, I don't back. know what he was caught on there. Did he have a smoke out something? I don't know, but he looked lost in the source. Monier, well, fortunately, though, going to make up for it and kind of bail out the player by door as well. This is... A... <laughs> Joe, Mike. I'll leave you to the an you know, well, analysis on this now one. There's action coming now. No, oh, look, it's time. Plant's going to come through. Martin oh, looking right. for something, but... Find something. Gonna happen. Yeah, find something on the <laughs> other end of it. The right post up close to a judge oh. Could do some damage. And again, good damage. Oh dear. Falls to divide. These rounds are getting weird. Shin left in a 1v2. Can he make something out of it? He might just be able to. Something with a judge and Shin with a dream. He knows it. He knows he's close by. What the hell can Shin do? Oh, a nice try. Something. <laughs> Making sure he's dead, by the way. It just cleared about eight different angles in half a second here. It's such an awkward spot here yes. underneath Seasight. But yeah, I, I was Mind Free looking to smoke something? Because he's out in he's out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, yeah, just side. drifting. It's I if he'd just come out of, oh, of the sending end. a smoke somewhere. Because it looked like he was reloading. But that was him just pulling back out the Wee. bulldog. Yeah, that was really weird on B. I don't know what happened. That <laughs> that whole round was just, you know, all out there. Uh, eight to six. Carmichael looking to continue pressuring towards mm. Mound here. It's a switch up, something on the other side of this. Well, I don't feel like something's going to do some nasty work here. He's, he's hanging around. Yeah, OK, just <laughs> get uh, out. Yeah, he run. <laughs> get out. <laughs> what the hell is going on? A late smoke towards main, but they might just disrespect it. They know they can. Something down a little low, but he's still trying to be ferocious about this. Shin trying to play ahead of it, but it's Magnum to find him. Oh, Monier with a belting shot on Martin. Still going to find value even just with that Sheriff. Where the hell's the rest of the squad, though? For a crunch back through the door here, potentially. KC in the danger zone. As soon as this opens up, though, it's a two-way street. Magnum. So get played in on this. It's Shin with the spam to catch him. And now the odds are looking less and less likely for Paper Expert to close that gap, but you can never write these guys out. Shin just controlling on the site, though, really keeping a firm grip. Magnum denies the door. And the options for Mind Freak have pretty much dissipated with those last couple of kills. Yeah, and going to be weird coming out of this round as well, because it's Monia and Devai to have some credits left in the bank. But Casey's round win here almost gives them a huge opportunity to double down on this. 
Knocking on the door of double digits as well. First ult cycle just about coming on for a few members of Carmine. So yeah, and the rate two away, Shin one off the TP. Magnum and Martin about halfway. There's something expecting to have the Blade Storm at least here, buying down to 550 and looks like actually considering throwing everything in here. It's forsaken us to concern that far away from the showstopper as well. He's only got a sheriff. Switch up here from KC though. Good luck, Devi. There he is hightailing it away, which is probably the right call. Now, if you're Carmine Core, you're still going to do somewhat of a diligent clear. You can't be too lackadaisical about it, but there, there's a pace to them. They want to get this early starting quite quickly. Going to note the player towards topside CT. There is a lot more there now. Narrate, though, going to take away something. He's just holding the line. He's willing for a fight. This guy's almost welcoming the fight. They haven't gone for the plot yet, so this is getting a little dicey, but they're holding for maybe this re-aggress. I know that Paper X is going to try and pre-take the site here, but standing. it's punished. It's picked apart by Carmine Court. And it's a flawless round to find double digits. The money coming into question now for Paper X. Yeah. We know there's no timeouts. There's no opportunity to take a breather. Carmine Court really starting to dial up the pressure here. Well, I feel like this echoes back to almost our starting point of this entire matchup is it's the question of form. We've seen what Paper X can look like in map one when it's terrifying, when they are in you know that full fight and flight mode, just flying at you across the map. And here, uh, uh, missing a little bit in that regard, whereas KC starting to hit towards where they'd want. Late swing comes out and they're hunting them down. Already Paper X not going to take the foot off the, gr the gas by any means. They didn't get the connections they want. But also, this drift from... Oh, dear. Oh, I just want to be careful, though. Yeah, no chance to get nope. that weapon cycled across. Should have a ton of information of how much presence there was towards C. Paperx haven't necessarily rotated just yet. Was it now, actually, yeah, the rifle is retrieved. So Monier has that in hand now. Bring them down. And with the loss of Magnum, there is a chance for some of these flanks to work, maybe, but they've decided against it, right? Opting against side's going to get cleared. No one there. Backfilling that space, though, you're going to see something try and maybe thread the needle, but look at the spike. Look where it's heading. Hook line Great and read. Up. Great read here. Yeah, Paper X have taken the bait. And enough time will pass here where they have a chance to at least get back on as long as KC are quick about this plan. Yeah, finally coming through an open plant towards Mound. And plenty of opportunities. Shin now in a position to play spoiler. Ooh, a glance from something, but not noted. Four through door though, that's a lot of players there. Martin this time in the position Magnum was in before, but again, they don't have the weaponry to really close this down. You can see that late look does get handled, but they've had no success elsewhere. I'm just no, eyeing up Monier. Done. Hold on, I'm huh? eyeing up Monier. What is this man up to? Huh? He's got to beat Martin and he's got to do it fast. Yeah, yeah absolutely standing. not. What is the plan here? There's no time for yeah. this. This feels... Wait, hang Wait. on. Is there time for this? No, it's not no. going to. No, 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 no. Close, but no cigar. Ooh. Yeah, not even. I thought it was way more than that. <laughs> I know. I was like, yeah, no, he's like a second right. off here. Mm. Huh? Huh? <laughs> KC find 11, though. Bloody hell, yeah. what a game. This is... Got a little close, didn't it? Yeah. A little touch and go. Uh, I mean, if anything else happens here, and it's Martin to fall first, yeah. then actually that divide pays off. Yeah. Right. Go back in, this time with a buy, though. Oh, just coming out for Paper X, but still, it's sticking the landing. That's been the hard part. TP gets taken and committed to, so you're going to have Shin towards CT. He can confirm, sight's clear. Just got to be careful over towards that waterfall side. Seeker's going to come through as the answer as well. So Plant going to be going down uncontested. Pressure's going to be coming back. And spawn oh. here, the paranoia a little off kilter. And Shin will punish. Oh, he touched. Beautiful, but he's found it. 
Shin is just unleashing. Oh, that's stunning from Shin. Three back to back. Full control in CT. He fancied a bit more, didn't he? But something gonna quell that aggression. Puts him into a 3v2, but again, they don't have step to sight. They don't have the ability to clear these deeper position players. And I wonder if Magnum might have caught an audio cue or two there. But still, this is looking like 12. Carmine caught. Maybe giving us a game here. Hoping map three could be that highlight between these two. As narrate. Let's take away Mind Freak. There's just no mercy no. in these players. After map one, after what was being done to them, they've come back with an answer. But a much more convincing map victory, it will feel like as yes. well. Yes. I mean, Eng saying, you know, yeah, you don't know, you don't know what to do. We don't know what to do versus a team like this. We've never been tested like this. To still come out of map one with a 13-10, and then play like this on Lotus, sure. you've got to be feeling fantastic. Puts faith back in the system, doesn't it? Stepping up to the plate here. This map, you could argue, was one of the crowning jewels of their map That's pool throughout right. regular play, but still, actually might get a bit of a fight here. First time we're seeing a bit more pressure put in by PaperX over towards this rubble side. So Carmine Core may not get the complete run of the house. Ah, they absolutely don't. Forsaken gonna take down Shin. Not gonna oh get my a god. Oh my god, there's a lot of players. That Only did gonna get so one. much damage. But he can't make it away. Martin, yes, left low, great down low. And something is behind them. Martin, excellent work from him. Heads up work from Martin. And now there was one. Monier with a judge <laughs> and three players. Yeah, not going to get played in either. No. I have to try and recover a weapon here. Up. Fully reset for the 1v3 elsewhere. And Martin down to 56, and they're eight on 42. Definitely a chance. I mean, he's got the right read on this as well. Yeah. He's going to be in a position pretty close by when this plant does come through. Yeah, he's not a million miles away. That doesn't really help matters for him. I mean, he's going to be on the outside of it, though. <laughs> oh, huh? my God. Huh? Where did that just go? I don't know, but monier has gone played in here. That's a freebie! And now there's problem. Oh, Martin! He's caught him. He just got a grip on him at the end there. Because there was a window of chance, Mike. But 13 to 6. Karma might actually have a game on our hands. I want this to go distance. I want it to be a damn good map three. I think we definitely do, Lauren. I mean, Narey and Martin, the two to really step up, stretch their legs on this map too. And like I said, if you're KC, you've got to be feeling good about that. Yeah, let's find out how this goes. Map three unlocked and on the horizon. Anoche me escribiste, ey, pero baby 
Baltimore managed to bring it back 13 to 6, and it felt like paper X were all out of sorts because Carmine Core just put them in their place. Now we get ready for a map three, and we'll see what both of these teams opt to. We'll bring out is this is it. Do or die now, right? It's now BO1. No, nothing. You got to forget about game one. You got to forget about game two. It's all about what's ahead. Of course, Golden Boy here with Mimi and Kukuka. And I mean, just this game has just been like so topsy turvy, it feels like. But for Carmine Core, they looked overall damn good on Lotus. Definitely a recovery from what happened on the first match. Again, on the first map, sorry. Uh, again, we see the KC that is very good understanding what is necessary in the map and also more specifically, understanding of how to break this composition that has so many holes. You're playing on a map that, that has three sides with no Sentinel. You don't even have a Viper, right? You're playing that double Duelist with double yeah. controller, but it's Omen and Astra. There was there was a lot of things that were lacking on that defensive side. The Paper Rex could only uh, surpassed by doing one thing and is being yeah. aggressive. Yeah, I feel like that fundamentally a lot of the issues with Paper X come back to this composition. And in particular, I think that Carmen Car called a really excellent defensive side around it. Mm -hmm. They were playing these really passive style, letting Paper X get onto these sites, knowing that they only have that sky you, so they have nothing to stall you out once they're into the site. And yep. setting up and playing these beautiful set retakes. And most of the time, honestly, Paper X, they, they don't, they're not the most disciplined team. They're gonna be fighting forward, they're gonna be taking risks into you, and Carmen Core was capitalized off in that, capitalizing off of that, and then fighting back in and winning these runs. Even the last two of the half, throwing in some forward aggression to spice things up. I thought this was a beautiful set oh, of I love calls this from moment. Magnum. And I mean, yeah, just look at it. <laughs> when you have this comp, you just don't have the util to fight back through oh. against these really oppressive retakes. And I mean, the poor guy didn't even know he had no bullets there. I think that's also the heat of the moment, right? He's pushing with the operator. He's pushing with his ultimate. He gets the kill and he's like, okay, uh, I, I have my shorty. Let me get a kill with this. Uh, shoots onto the other gun and it's not until the smoke is, is there. To me, for, for me, I got pulled into the allure of Paper X. Okay. These last two Again, maps okay. we've watched of right, them. Last night on Split, this first map as well. Here These we go. guys are so good. They can run around. They can play any comp. They can kill anyone. They're the best team in the world. And then you remember that they play double duelist, no Sentinel, no Viper on Lotus, and they're playing one of the best Lotus teams in the world. Yep. And it kind of brings you back down to earth a little bit, right? Because for yep. all of the you get shot, you die, sometimes <laughs> you get out called and you pick a comp that is outclassed by your opponent. I would love to ask them what made them make this last moment yeah. change, right? The, 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 the going and swapping things around a little bit on this map I mean, and I actually really taking yeah. it this direction out of all the directions that it could have gone, yeah. why this one? Yeah, well, I mean, it seems like the direction that they were going in were straight into the ascent to the gun to the bullets of narrate <laughs> honestly directly into ascent. Uh, and and directly to ascent but let's talk about narrate young man is going up on that stage right now and really lighting it up he's currently top fragging in the server across both games right at uh, this current time and that is what is expected out of this star player this guy's been so good remember that the NA tier two star showing up to Amiya winning there and <laughs> honestly he's been so good at the international as well in map one playing the race following up off of his teammates your waltz and here as well. I mean, just ruining Alex's day yes. with uh, some of these clutches. I am loving this montage because it's just narrated playing with such an important uh, and key part. The information deafening uh, their opponents and Alex just losing at every single round. There were some rounds that Paper Wicks were winning and Alex was just not happy with it. He was like, no, this was not the way. This was not what I thought. But definitely something that we need to keep in mind is that, okay, that happened, it is over. It is surprising that it has been this one-sided and, 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 and I would say both maps have been this one-sided and yeah. still the scores do not uh, resemble it as good. But then in Ascent, I feel that we also have bigger questions for both of these teams, right? Because Casey only played it once during the kickoff and it was a very funky composition, very much in the Paper Rex style. Yes. That doesn't really suit them, right? So the question is, moving into this third map, what composition are we going to see? Let's see it. Do they continue with the crazy comp we saw, or do they go to normalcy? No, something different. They're playing no the triple no. initiator comp. We've seen this in the past. DRX ran this comp in Tier 2 NA. M80 nearly won Ascension playing this comp. It is a very strong composition built yep. off these util combos, and if you're a team not expecting it, it's honestly really hard to play against. Very aggressive, extremity reclears on defense, and very, very strong retakes. Yeah, exactly. Look at it. The Omen, the Breach, 
much the chaos, so much utility. Even Tomasi, right? Everything to help Martin in yep. this situation. Now, Raid, we know what he can do in all of this initiators, but for, for, for me, this map for them is a new frontier. As I'm saying, no Sentinel for either of these teams. Yes, Paper X has that Viper. Well, it's been a comeback already for Common Core on this second map. The squad who impressed everyone in EMEA has made it this far. Now they're in an elimination game. It's either them or Paper X for that last spot in the final, in the playoffs. Darn right, Mimi. It's do or die. Let's see how the chips fall here and who's going to be sent home. Let's send it back over to Hypoc and Pansy for the call. Yeah, the final map of the series uh, coming up between these two. Only one can carry on forward, of course, it being the final entire map and it match itself, which feels ridiculous that we could be losing one of these two. Such high hopes for Carmine Core coming into this and Paper X almost just a legacy team. Yeah, the, se the seasoned veterans really of this matchup here. Carmine Core definitely looking for the first big international scalp to really claim. And what an accolade it will be. Oh yeah. To come out on top in an elimination game. Rex started off slow here, the Prowler will identify presence here. Again, really eyes on Magnum to be that, that mid-round swing for KC in this composition. Oh, yeah, the that line's perfect. But still, they, they get damage done, to be fair, but it feels like they were able to at least keep some alive. That looked almost like a death wish going through. Sight looking at least able to have a plant towards it, but the pot flash through the smoke that was so good. Standing. Lovely work from Narate there. There's just one left alive. Paint shell could be good, actually. Going to leave him scrambling. Yeah, there's there's opportunity. But the one player who's not affected is really Shin. All eyes. Oh, perfect. Come on, you've got to get a bomb. Oh, show me something. Oh, I believe for a moment there with the HP being lower, a chance beckoned. Wasn't to be Carmine Core. Gonna get the first here. The problem is with this composition, KC have so many opportunities to re engage, to catch your timing, catch Paper X off guard. In round one, definitely already an indication of that. Paper X gotta have their wits about them. Like you said, in that chaos, they would get a trade back, but so there's just a ton of utility to work with here. Might be a little bit of an exchange here towards A main. It's all retrieved here. Monier. He's back on the raise again and, and questions about just how turbulent some of these comp composition changes are. It's, it must be brutal as a player to be kind of, you know, almost getting whiplash from this sort of back and forth role wise. But again, um, Monier map one was exceptional. Really yeah. highlight credit to his uh, capability, but map two, I mean, wasn't exactly the headline star, but they've actually got themselves a sight here. Look where Monier's got himself into as well. Tucked into where market. Still waiting. To Mazzi. The timing on the reveal here. Gonna have his hands full. Gotta Just be careful. careful. Yeah. Did he hear anything as he considered it? Yeah, I think he's very aware. Except no naughtiness here. Spike planted. Now all of the Paper X players are going to be locked on that site. Here. Any kit, one paranoia. Night oh. Night. No uncertainty night. about that. Forsaken falls. This is just going to get very difficult. They can't really springboard off the back of that one utility one either. Night. Yeah. Just outgunned, overwhelmed. Five alive and a defuse on the board. And tough for Monier really gets himself into a, a very dangerous position here, but you know, weaponry and well played by Tomazzi to back up, concede once again, which has been the approach time and time again for Carmine Court. Allow this Paper X play style to really fizzle out. Looking clinical on the retake. I'll throw some weapons in the mix now. Rifles for Paper X. See where they can get done. And productivity potentially here from KC. Confirmation on the other side now. Martin. Oh, 
from Azzy. Unchecked, though. To consider it? Sure, right? I, I feel like they're not going to continue on that pathing, but a little bit of a glance there from Martin. Not going to see anything, so it kind of frees him up in position, right? Stall comes in towards Short. Shin going to hear enough that he notes there's more than one player here. Prowl is not finding some of the players in the corner, but it doesn't matter. Top middle is the end goal, and Martin's waiting. They actually outdo him there. A nice opportunity, but it closes, and Shin just going to try and play forward. Paranoia landed. But so oh. Still nearly wins yeah, it. Yeah, thought he had that one. Not the case. Paper X. Five standing, couple of them lower, but it's gonna be Tomasi the first to draw blood. Something on the trade out, and now Narate sweeps his way through middle. It's a two of two and three Magnum. If he can win remain. out here, but traded by Forsaken. Now Narate finds himself in a 1v2. Forsaken tagged up something, a 72 HP as well. Narate's been good. He's been very good, and Forsaken has to. Respect Look at the that. respect being shown, yeah. No, no one's on stairs or close by. Considers main now, considers lane. He's going through all of those options. Just a flash to try and get him on the cross there, but Forsaken, I think, was unaffected by it. So it just sits fine, plays patient, and you're right, it was respect being shown there and knowing who you're up against. Only two rifles maintained through this, but Monye, great progress towards the showstopper here. And KC in a position, really, with, uh, I, I guess, some of this utility invested towards short. They know it's a fake. KC know that this is go, the plan all along. Mm -hmm. Our team there. looking to potentially get a little aggressive towards mid. Tomasi. Time to run. And he's quite alone here. Oh, the backup! Perfect timing from Martin, holding them at the door. This is nice from him. Starting to heat up throughout the series, starting to find his footing. These international events looking much better now. Tomasi gets to play back in once that pressure got taken away. Three in this round. Once a fourth, gets a fourth. Flawless for Carmine Core in map three. So Magnum really the power player in this composition. Going to apply so much supportive utility to both sides. In this position towards Fountain, towards Spawn. And Another example already. Martin just really coming into his own now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Almost fell off the stage. Don't worry. <laughs> so many 4K moments. I oh, know, this game's been fine. Who was it that fell off at EMEA? Was it Magnum that fell off his chair? It was actually, wasn't it? Yeah. Probably would be, I feel. Yes. Is that Kakuka confirming? That was, that was Bayer shouting yes. That's what the analyst desk is there for. <laughs> that sort of information coming in hot. Appreciate you. I was trying to read that sign, didn't make it in time. Um, but it, there has been a timeout. Paper X feeling as though uh, they don't have a grip on this one. And I've got to say, in my mind, I-, I A recurring I trend, honestly, of yes. early timeouts. Yes. They're almost hitting the panic button, not letting one, wanting things to spiral out of control. But, but also, in my mind, this wasn't a map that I'd really seen Carmine Core lean on throughout regular season. No, I mean, EMEA, what was it? It was a, a hard fought overtime versus fi Vitality with a yeah. different composition, yes. So it's definitely not something you look at as, 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 as a comfort pick, but potentially if this is the composition that. I mean, it has a lot of potential. Yeah. A nasty little comp. Seen the breach toyed with elsewhere. Right there. I mean, four rounds of pass, right Magnum at six assists. You can already see. In some of these situations, just how much value that pick can have. I want to see if they start getting a little bit more creative here. Got to be careful in this sort of round, though. Narate's really sticking to this fight. Didn't want to back away, but has to be cautious. The sheriffs are out, and that rifle would have been a prized possession to bring into the clutches, but slow work in middle and a pop flash to follow. That's what I like to see. Just that tempered aggression every now and then thrown in. A dash of it. Controls mid and Narate feeling this, confident now, willing to fight and willing to win. Two big picks, even Mind Freak and Forsaken, not really in a position to make much of this. Losing one in mid and two by aim main doesn't give you a great deal of forward play here. And Magnum one enemy got it too. It was Shin in the end to actually claim it. He's yeah, all assists. Mind Freak, a 1v5 with a Bulldog. Looking like it might be another flawless, and it is. Speaking of recurring trends, yeah. flawless so far by KC. 
sparring that one blip in round three. Feeling very, very comfortable for them. Ultimate's coming online now for Paper X. Forsaken Monier and something. Divide one off the TP as well, but. I mean, on the other side, I think Carmine as well. Blade Storm, the Null Command, something to really shut down. A fast execute. We'll see Monier's showstopper a concern in that regard as well. If Nray is in range. And willingness to challenge it. 14. Unafraid, it's a little bit of a fight. He does have, of course, Magnum there with him, but it's not just one side of the map, it's both. This is dangerous. And now, monia has got to know there's something over here. What the hell was that? The Paranoia is going to go. Was one of the players ahead of it? I'm waiting to see. Oh my god! No! Come off him! What is going on? Monia flies through the air, finds all three of them, and the sight's theirs! I can't believe it! This guy is just unreal! What a round from him! A flawless in response. The no command actually gets popped there. I'm not sure of the exact timing. The showstopper went off, right? Did he get an extra boost in midair from the showstopper being shot down? Maybe. Uh, show me this again. He did, yeah. He got an extra boost off it. That is wild. That. Almost like a second satchel. Yeah. <laughs> that laugh is terrifying. That scared me to my core. What a way to nullify that confidence, put him back. Potentially a good position to work forward. Martin just got caught at the end of that. That's going to remove his ability to find impact and maybe paint a little picture of the adjustment he was going for on short. Something will be rewarded here in these reclearances. Through our main started around 30 seconds in here. Like you said KC happy to post up for these fights. Tom Azzi, lucky to get away. Something creeping closer and closer. Paper X almost attempted to take both sides here. Magnum will finally fall. Oh yeah! Monster on the loose! Some more space cleared through here for Paper X. Information garnered on the back of that as well. Oh, <laughs> oh God, do it again! Do it again! Oh, something falls away. They've opened up a bit of space here. 3v3. Mike Freak needs to fill that void, and he does it well. What can these players do, though? Shin down low. Last takes a... Okay, that probably wasn't the plan, but Tomasi just going to follow suit. Falls, and Paper X keeping three alive and just springboarding off the back of that flawless round. They've beautifully done an opportunity to fight their way back in. I think maybe Shin thinking that Tomazzi had cut aud enough audio that he could get away with such a TP. Oh, that's where the first comes onto Magnum. I want to see that jumping shot. Yeah, that's lovely. Came straight out of 2021, that peak. <laughs> Wrong agent. But uh, something still making it work. What is up? Carmine Corp pumping the brakes right back in. Eng, feeling it's time to slow things down a little, have a chat, check back in. And again, if you watch the regular season so far, at least kickoff, you would know that if there's a call coming that he didn't like from Magnum Potential or they made a choice before, they didn't quite like the direction they were leaning in, he'd happily try and chime in and offer his opinion instead, and Eng is one of those respected, but it does seem as though it's mostly the players having a chat. Eng's very quiet in this. Yeah, mostly coming out from Magnum Yeah, then. Magnum leading the discussion. Mm. And awareness shown here from Paper X, the way something's creeping up mid here to try and isolate Magnum all the way in spawn. You see they're trying to rectify the issue. I guess negate some of that mid-round power that they have with this composition. Well, you noted those six assists earlier. He hasn't had one since. Yeah. So he's losing a little bit of that efficiency in these rounds in comparison to the start where he was felt almost omnipresent, right? Like everywhere he went, he was finding value. So interesting to see that dynamic shift there. He approaches for paperworks again. Spike not committed, so makes me feel as if it's going to be a slow approach here. Try and put this operator into the mix. Oh, well, I say that. Mm. Monier's all the way up short now. 
Boom bot will go in, but won't spot Narate, but a wide swing will. Narate caught completely off guard by this aggression. And Tomasi, I just invested that, so you're going to be off with the timing a little, maybe feeling a false sense of security as Paperworks are just around that corner. Something clearing right as he goes. Worried about CT, but it's Tomasi close by. That Prowler is uh, very indicative of presence. He knows they're on the way. Bailout. Martin going to find the mood presence. Monye falls. Tomasi didn't get that timing right. Devai already over towards lane, and the site will be waving Paper X's banner as the plant's going to come in uncontested here. Spike Still got somebody disconnected as well. A couple more players, something. The operator posting up here, who wins out. It's Martin to find another pick. Yeah, this guy's on it. He's gonna lean on in, he needs help. Oh, I thought he had that. I thought he might have had it. Forsaken trying to hit up though in a 1v1. Forsaken up against Magnum. Forsaken's read him. He's ahead of it. Oh, he's just done him in. Forsaken gonna bring that scoreline right back up. Carmine Core thought they had maybe this wrap, this map on wrap, but it's absolutely not the case. Three in a row now. Hard to handle the aggression from Monier coming out. The rest of the team starting to heat up. We're seeing Paper X find their footing. A couple of crucial kills from Martin here. Winning out on that operator 1v1. Says so he's completely caught off guard by Mind Freak's position, I believe. Nonetheless, KC doing everything right on the way back into that retake. And it's no difference. Rinse, repeat. This time, Martin reads. Starting to calibrate what's going on in these rounds. Starting to assess what they're up against. But it's not just one attempt, it's two, potentially three more presents on short. Martin, has he got more? Not this time. Shin now left wondering, do I swing it, do I wait? But the Prowler goes past, but Device still checks. S just such good heads up work. Narek can only do so much. And even against numbers, Mike, they break through on short again. I don't know if something thinks he picked up the spike here, but... He hasn't. Well, no, good. the TP comes through regardless. Mind Freak will find the killing blow. And Paper X, their fifth. You see, putting Martin into that position to try and take this engagement. He's trying to counterbalance that early round aggression, but... Paper X able to follow through. Curious what sort of adjustment we'll see from KC, whether or not they start following through with some of this utility at the start of the round, denying some of this space, because KC have been uh, relying on uh, some sort of indicator. Relying on Paper X to show presence first and trying to play very reactive based on Magnum's utility. Looks good, yeah, Monet just sweeps past Narate, the side's theirs. Lots more present on towards short, though that could prove a problem on the cross with the spike potentially, but yeah, door's gonna be shut, so there's gonna be that safety net put into place. Plant's now down, and already in a 5v4, this is difficult to play back into. Oh, what, Martin's found an open, oh! no, he's found a second. Divide will fall, yeah, numbers advantage now. Absorbing all issues from the. What are you up to? Something! What do you think you're doing? And Shen is there, converting on towards Mind Freak. Where is this final player? Forsaken! They flood him! Carmine Core should never have had that round. It looked wraps, but Martin with a sheriff. Thrifty. Picks apart Paper X. Converts a MasterCard Thrifty. And ties things up five apiece. And it felt almost frenzied from something to jump back into that. I mean, he's back on another one of those jump peaks. <laughs> yeah, Mind Freak in a position that's not considered, but strength in numbers here for KC on the back of Martin's heroics. Martin was one of the missing pieces of the KC puzzle in some of their weaker games. If he had an off game, it wasn't quite feeling the same, but he's starting to spark a little here. But again, that was around in a drought. Shin's got to evacuate. Early utility going to force that open engagement. And Martin waiting. This guy's been on it. Does he get another chance here? He can't stick around too long. Does have to finally relinquish. And, well, that was an attempt from Monier, but there's too much presence there. 
Hang on, the pink comes through onto Shin. A ton of reveals going through, but it's actually narrated to find the spam. The null command's popped as well. This, this is just Fight's such down a yet. bloody battle. Both sides Ch just there. taking chunks out of each other. It's only Mind Freak left alive, and you're right. There was no plan. He doesn't even have the time on his side. He's looking for a fair fight, and he's not going to get too many of them. That opportunity probably just slipping away with Magnum now getting support, and Martin just puts the cherry on the cake. AC back in the lead now. before the switch. As well, Mind Freak's got the pit there. Nobody from Paperx able to get the plant down, and obviously once that pit comes through, it's that blanket of security. KC able to get ahead of the curve here. Again, the doors removed so quickly that that oh, was it. Three players huddled onto switch here. Let's go. Keep the energy up. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Nice shit. Nice stuff. Clawed their way back in here, and a chance to actually flip this on his head, get themselves a 7-5 half. Weaponry available for Paper X. Do have the pit as mentioned, but no other tools. What a close affair, but Martin could get his opportunity to shine again. Playing towards middle here. Here. I think, he, yeah, noting presence. There is late pressure towards A main potentially as well. This is hard to read, hard to gamble on. Does Martin get his play in? Doesn't look like it just yet. It might be Tomasi. <sighs> Again, how do you read this? You've noted a lot now towards that B side of the map. Sorry, Tomasi committed towards this anchor once again on B. Happy to throw him up for the slaughter and uh, timing this time. Not sure if the rotation will come through. Still, KC. Sticking to a three-man hold on a site. Oh. I mean, Tomasi just needs to... Uh, one and done really is enough for him yeah. in this situation. He can get the help from the TP, right? That's not too surprising. 30 seconds left. But can he get any help on the cross? The they're they're back in. They're, they're, look at the spike. Look where the spike's going. Not a lot of time for this. No, I mean, this... they have players on site, so they know that the plant's not coming on B. If somebody can get what? across to a site and deny... They're going short. Come off on short. Yeah, Magnum, this is it, that's stall. That this is huge. This everything, Magnum! That's everything they needed! What a moment for Magnum! Carmine Core keeping this in their favor. Absolutely Switching ridiculous. Side. And because nothing else has really gone on in this round, Magnum has everything to close the door on short. Paperx getting lost in the clock here. I thought KC were potentially going to be behind this. But it's absolutely beautiful. That's dreamy for Magnum there, isn't it? So they keep the lead on the half. Seven to five. It's a close affair. It's what we wanted for map three between these two. We'll be back in just a second. Hello guys, I'm Aaron, known as my freaking game, and I play for Team Paperx. Yeah, so basically, I think Moya took it personally, or maybe like this is the first time he get like talk in front of his face, that kind of stuff. Maybe like he took it personally. So basically, every time we won a round in split on the third map, and he's like screaming or whatever stuff, I say like calm down, calm down, calm down. You know, because like the matches haven't ended yet. So yeah. I mean, it's part of the game. I mean, he tried his best to take us down, but personally, I don't really bother at all because I, I was just like smiling at him. Wrap around players, plenty of them ready for the targets here. Heads could pop and heads could come clean off. Still watching the damage. Low enough. One shot in the chamber. Monier sends it. The bottom line was. We're just not informed like last year. We had this conversation like yesterday or two days ago. That's why our split today was a little bit better because we changed the comp for second player race. Monyet said that he doesn't comfortable playing race in split. So yeah, I think we definitely improved like a bit because now I think everyone playing their comfortable role. And I feel like it's a good match because maybe people trying to underestimate us, but in the end of the day, we take the W. This is the final map I was hoping for, Mike. I want a game from both of these where we see the best of their capability, seeing Carmine Core picking up afterwards. A little bit of an issue there, tipping the scales right back in their hands, but Paperx still feisty, still fired up. This 
is an elimination game. Only one of these two teams will carry on forward. So everything has to come out in this half. This is the final half of play, unless we get OT. See how KC looked to apply its composition in the second half here. Martin is revealed here. Well, maybe a little bit of a miscommunication. I don't think anybody else was spotted. Only him marked. We're going to force a rotation early on. We'll draw out a smoke on A-Main. Silges so Monnier looking to shoulder that. <laughs> a bit of a, a standoff here. Mm -hmm. it's the 60 second marker approaches. KC drift towards what looks like a B site execute here for the pistol. Flashback. High flash for the front part of site. Seize did come in, didn't connect. And the right then going to try and reveal who's towards the back of the side itself. And he's going to get one, so they don't quite know about who is it. It's Forsaken. Yeah, that's a surprise. They didn't get the information on great trade for Narate. But Mind Freak now takes that time to play out. Really playing with the push and pull of the round. And the cross now is not safe. The support's here. Martin's trying to clear back in. Spike back in hand, but for 25 seconds, where are you going to go? I mean, this is exactly the same amount of time that was left on the clock for Paper X to make the same rotation in the last round of the first half. Martin tagged up down to 51, Shin at 74, but they might just get the plant ahead of Mind Freak here. 10 seconds left. Yeah, they're going to get the plant down. Mind Freak close, but not close enough. 40 HP. Spike planted. But he's here. And he's going to spot he's one. Spotted. And now has to peel away for a second. I think right choice to wait for something to get close enough by to maybe you know, work on some of the picks they get potentially. I think that door got shut. What do they do about it now? Spamming out towards CT. You hear the door going down. Shin turns his attention, Run spots him. Sharp, clean work. Carmine Corp starting off the second half here with a bang. Yeah, enough damage done to make something and Mind Freak's chances of closing this out. I guess flipping this back in their favor. A little too difficult. Come on, call very cautious of Paper X starting off the second half explosively. One enemy remaining. Always got to be the consideration for them. Got to win this one out in the end. Gonna switch up here just to Mazzy. Over towards B. Information gathered towards mid and outside B main, but nothing confirmed just yet. Door of A site wide open though. Just divide over towards short. We tuck behind the smoke now. They've pretty much cleared everything else, so they should be pretty heads up that short was the only pressure point. But a late plan has allowed for rotation to come in. They've got it down now. Can Paper X make anything of this? The two sheriffs I'm keeping my eyes on with Mind Freak and Dubai. They're going to get themselves into that smoke. They've at least crossed that first threshold and attacked the spike, reveals the position. No chance to really close down on the two players in hell. So Devi, the only one to draw blood. Mind Freak now, last one to try and pull something across the line, but Just not get getting much out. play. Yeah, this is looking done for. Yeah, cool. Carmine Cop, convert the second. Into the third round as well. Decent inventory. A couple of rifles on the board. Martin going to be the one to lead the charge here. Three away from the blade storm as well. So good early progress. Paper X need to answer back. Need an early response from them. Casey already knocking on the door of double digits. Looks like it might be exactly the same setup here. Flashbang. Cover going out. Now, do Paper X look to explore outside B main? I mean, with the Odin, you'd imagine not in the hands of Forsaken. A three-man stack towards A site behind this Viper wall. But the Mind Freak suppressed, actually. Martin uh, but, looking to close the gap as well. Well, oh, that's a little uncomfortable there. Yeah, just about kind of evading detection on the other side of it. But Monnier going to be feeling that scrutiny on the side, though. Playing behind Dice, he's got to be careful that they couldn't creep up towards Jen, but... Look at this, though. Casey getting very aggressive towards short here. 
Monty on the side, though. That flash looking very good there. There's the retake towards Short. Monye turns attention and keeps his life. Mind free, keeping him safe. And Paper is really dealing with that very unorthodox pressure very yeah. well. Yeah, felt very comfortable for Paper X to, to back up here. Okay, see, uh, making the right noises, getting aggressive towards Short, pushing all the way through Tree, but unable to convert that. I think it's a crucial X kill here from Monye. Oh, yeah, Shin TP in the open. Sure, he thought he was going to get across the wine there, but. Nice, boys. Let's go, boys. We are back. Why back? Why back? Why back? Little bit of a slip up. It's a good opportunity, though. And if your paper actually will take it with both hands. A lot of the earlier round, got to say, Carmine Core have been having their way, really, though. There hasn't been much play back in now. Starting to see maybe at least a test towards A main, but that's it. And just jump spotting towards middle. It's going to be something. It does look like a 3-2 split again towards this A site. Difference being you've got Divide towards Wine. You're going to have a little bit of an adjusted setup here, but the close down going to try and come in. Martin gets dealt with. Quelled and slowed down, and Monier not really backing away either. Still keeping them both in their place. And Mind Freak just demolishing them on short. The, the sport's here. They're down at two, and they know where both of them are. The Magnum and Shin left to try and recover this now. <laughs> Ton of damage done. Still four standing for Paper X. Magnum's going to try and find something elsewhere on the map, but... He actually might just oh, find he something. He might just find something, yeah. He's already made his way across towards B. Shin spotted here with a jump peek as well. Paper X looking very, very well coordinated here in the second half, Lauren. Bye-bye. Yeah. He found him. Spike down. Oh, in the way he wants it, I'm sure. But Shin now forced to save. There's no good outcome for him in that scenario. But yeah, this is looking different now. Paper X starting to get a, a little bit more of a read, it feels like, a little bit more comfort here. So his first couple of rounds, it was rather uncomfortable viewing. Paper X closing the gap here. Shin. Ten seconds left. Shadows traveling. Keeping the rifle in hand. Five more seconds. He'll get out with what he came in with. Seven. Oh, dear. Oh dear, don't go that side. Something's there, something's there. Shin keeps it. But that was getting a little scary as well. Yeah. Nine to seven, Mike. We've had two now consecutive rounds. That has forced Carmine Core into a timeout. I think Paper X will have the upper hand in terms of these first ultimates coming online as well. But another example of a very comfortable hold on A side here, particularly towards short, where the focal point seems to be for Carmine Court. There's Monier on the other side of this as well to counterbalance that. Shutting down A main. Happy to stand his ground and Against fight. Two. Yeah. I, it, they just can't dislodge him. No. <laughs> and the way he was able to offset the timing with that was just fantastic. Allowed yeah. them all to clear back through short, give them that full focus once they swept back through. It's, it's what you'd be after. Now, this time you can see Eng being far more involved. Last yes. time around, it was yes. Magnum being far more vocal. This time, Eng is getting involved here, which, again, if you're if you're maybe not watching EMEA, original coach of Gambit, you know, he's coming with a big, yeah. big CV here. He's, you know, got some big names behind him, very highly uh, you know, revered in his job. So it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with as the next question mark for, you know, Carmine Gore to try and work on. It's like maybe a strategic adjustment here instead for Zeng to take charge of the timeout. Blade Storm burnt up, not necessarily a massive issue. Fun's still there to support some weaponry for Carmine Court. On the other side, I think it's actually Monier and Mind Freak building up towards their ultimate. Something to, like I said, the advantage in that regard. Right there. And switch up this time. I'm going to see, I, I mean, maybe not particularly switch up. Something there. does generally play towards middle, but at the very start, still trying to support Forsaken here. Early utility, that's a problem. Martin just about gets in front of it and tries to keep his head down, Somehow. not to be connected on. And that's a lot of information, and that's, again, no damage. Ooh, what? He just slingshot over it. This is ridiculous. Something's still alive, but he's nervous, and you know why? He's just seen a whole lot of players coming towards his site. Has his ult, has Monier, and he just popped his ult as well. Spikes down on lane. Oh, God, that's a problem. Devai's going to at least isolate that final man from Massey. They have no idea where he is. Hello? Hello? Turn around! Tomasi doesn't need to overcook this. He gets out of the way of the pain shell. And now a fair 1v1. He's got his reveal back as well. This is everything. You can see 
Monier tries to evade it, tries to keep undetected. Tomasi so close to the corner, oh. Monier's got him. Paper X take another step closer. Right down to the wire though. Tomasi slipping the net. And it's perfect timing here. Uh, Monier, two ridiculous kills to stop this pressure flooding all the way down lane towards site, bailing something out. Paperex bring it within one now. Carmichael back on a purchase. And with that investment in the previous, you've got to say the advantage now lies with them in terms of the ultimates. Something on an operator. Noted very early on in the round. Tomazzi commanding a lot of this space over towards B. I guess with the operator showing his hand early on, they feel like maybe something's rotated elsewhere. This KC will stack up outside B's site. We'll show it to the prowl up. Well, the C's actually landed Great. there. Yeah. yeah, that's really lucky timing to slow this down. And the follow-up, especially on the rate of all players, is so fortunate. Something gonna smoke or get smoked off on the cross. And look at the dive for Forsaken! The immovable object! Something dips his toes in, catches Magnum! But now there's counter-strike back. They start flooding back, winning these fights. Hey, Brex, that flash, they've got to try and make the most of it. That was so good to Massey. Invest in the ult with the flank. Look at Mon Ye. Getting a step or two closer, but the eyes have turned to Massey. The penny dropped, the plant's in, but does he consider it? There's the strike. Oh, it's exceptional from Tomasi. And something will be surely forced to save here. Wow. Surely. He's, he's going back in for this. Feeling confident, down to 500 credits, not an awful lot left in the bank. Not revealed up, but gonna try and find the kill onto Tomazzi. No, thinks better of it now. What a ridiculous Ooh. opener from Forsaken though. And even with all of that success, still KC steady the ship and find themselves double digits here on map three. I've got to see that again from Forsaken's oh, POV. Yeah. I, I want to see the whole round again. Just, it, it felt so... The Seas lands it, it completely takes the punch out of this execution. He then shuts down Narate. Who had his ult, yeah. by the way, going at that point. Here we go. Oh, counter ult comes out, and he read it. He was so ready for it. So ready. That's wild! It's one of those random shorty purchases that you're just like, wow. Maybe. Oh, Tomasi had a round two. Yeah. That kind of pressure he brought over towards market, taking that space away, making them so uncomfortable for the retake. So valuable there. That, that's, that's unlocked 10 on the board for Casey. Double digits is huge. Paper X got to start firing up here. This is tournament life. This is everything. And that's what they needed. Monier gives them two. Backs away. That's Martin. That's Narek gone again. That's with a stinger. Again, yeah, they we... get the sight, but... We talked about him being completely unfazed previously. Tomasi, oh! though, turning this back on his head. Vengeance served, but still tipped again Vengeance. in the favor of Paper X with that kill from something yeah. coming out. Plant is ticking, though. Something's going to get a rifle as well. That's in play. Right there. they got to start moving here. Magnum turns his attention. That could be an issue. That could be an opening. Forsaken didn't note it. Oh, Magnum, is this your moment to shine? Mind Freak only has a classic. Can he evade the stun? Mind Freak gets the upgrade, gets the rifle, and now they get this extended 1v1. One side now bite. locked off. It's not what he wanted there, but Magnum now feeling the pressure. He's closing him down. Ring a ring a rosy. Magnum playing with it. Oh, it's perfect. Magnum getting Casey up to 11. Oh, leading in game by example here. Absolutely ice cold from Magnum. Played to perfection. Mind Freak, a little bit of a fumble on the snake bite, but nonetheless. And all of these rounds just seem to start with big wins for Paper X. Big wins. Forsaken in the last round, you had Monyet this round. How much more can they do? They, they're giving you two at the very start. It's showing that depth yeah, of KC. Give me one. Let's go. They're getting pumped up. They might have Paper X on the ropes here, but. Let's find out. Still a good purchase to play with this time around for Paper X. They've got to make this count. The pressure is quick. Narate off to a good start, but there it is. 
Just forsaken again Spike on the bail low. He'll get you two if he can, but more team answers back. Look at what remains now. Look at Mind Monye. Freak on beat. And you're right, Monye's up in spawn. What a switch around of positions. Okay, see, slow things down now. They've equalized the head count. Desperate to find another piece of information, another scrap sent out by Paper X. And they're waiting for Paper X to walk around the map. They're waiting for that reaggress that yep. divide. I mean, he's not actively doing it. He's kind of repositioned towards B because they're putting a lot of faith in Monier's position. Obviously, short is open, but that's something you'll have to respond to. I think Tomazzi was just calling. Oh, divide, divide, divide! One for one trade. There's still a player on B. No Again, way. No way, no way they read catches that. No Last way he catches top mid here. Yeah. Yeah, not a chance in hell, Monier. Mind freak. And another 2K cut out from Forsaken. Gonna keep Paper X in touching distance. KC aren't out of the woods just yet. Look at that run of rounds. Three on the trot, the break back through from KC, and an instant correction. How's the money looking for Carmine Corp? Well, look too pretty. I mean, two away from the Blade Storm, so an opportunity potentially, Ooh, but. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tension's rising here on map three. Only SMGs to work with here for Carmine Corp. <laughs> I mean, if you monye, definitely an opportunity for something, start. yeah. Shut down Martin off the rip. No chance of converting that Stinger into the Blade Storm this round now. Big opportunity for Paper X here. Get a clean round, keep the weapons up, start taking back that momentum. This is huge. Cross should be catched. Yeah, perfect. Dubai. Oh, and the adjust really nice. No threats this time. Narrate, you got one. But with 18 HP and a Stinger and no upgrade close to touch, I think he knows this one is not going to be the round to make the impact in. <laughs> the ping's on the minimap already. I mean, nice. Something's going to hear it now. Lovely. Yeah. All right, oh, looking for the round the world. To try and find a cheeky kill, maybe an upgrade elsewhere. But This is game back on, Mike. Yeah. This is 10. They've got ults coming online. They've got rifles coming out. They've got Carmine Core back just uh, not under the heel, but this close by. Oh. Paper X, I guess, off the start of this round. An advantage here in terms of the ultimates. Look at the right side of the scoreboard here. Yes, Carmine Core on the brink. This is such a key round. It looks like the pit might actually lock Don't down A main here. How do they course, respond? Yeah, cause Carmine Core to reconsider. Yeah. At least we consider it plan eight in this round. You see something counterbalance this with the operator on short. But Monique just walked middle. What? That was a really bold play to bring out there. Maybe he felt he had that support from short, but didn't get what he wanted, and that puts a problem towards B. Yeah, Forsaken's going to have his hands full here. He has been good for two. Something's I got the cross. The cross. Don't, don't He's turn giving away. it up. Don't turn away. Go back to business. There it is. Finds Tomasi. That's got to be so revealing. Oh, my God. Oh, another one. Something. Perfect. Old now triggered. And he actually has face stunned. Magnum. That's massive. Forsaken. Teed up and knocks him down. It's everything you would have wanted for them. And now Martin being hunted down. How much resilience left. can one man have? Not enough. Something reading it well, checking back on that cross, and it all falling into place. I can't believe they've tied this up. 11 apiece now. In the 11th hour, they do it. And Carmine Core rocked in terms of the finances as well. Such fine margins here. Something giving up the cross, coming back to it, catching Shin on the second peak. Forsaken delivering time and time again as this B site anchor. Get out of back my down way. to SMGs, a blade storm to work with this time around. The paper X don't look like they're letting their foot off the gas at all in terms of aggression. A four man probe outside A here to get the orb. But it is an adjustment, right? They're not playing actively on the side. 
that is the only adjustment we're seeing here. They're allowing this space, maybe having enough faith in this ult. And these players, oh, it's so good. On the right. The timing on that, obscene. As soon as Narate popped the ult as well. Every time he pops his ult, it's just Go cursed, here. but Martin gonna get one back. Smokes off, maybe give them a chance on the res here too. This buys time and it's critical. And now, Paperx don't have that next springboard. How do they get to the site? This was with Stingers, Spectres, Sheriffs and an ult. Where is that next layer? Here it is, here it comes. Martin gonna be noted, he is in danger. Can he somehow weather the storm? No, Forsaken puts him away. Now, four on the site, something on the clear. Mike Freak joins in, Paper X! Starting to sweep the site, down to Magnum, down to Shin. Mike Freak again, that's his site, but Shin can't do enough! Paper X! Gonna put themselves up to 12! This game is ridiculous! Almost giving KC a glimmer of what that 12th round would have looked like. They had and a taken taste, it away. a taste, just a whiff of finding themselves on series point here, but it's Paper X to snatch away the hopes and dreams. Whoa, what was that adjustment from something there? Oh, here we go. More Starting of that. to get fired up. More of that. But they're not done yet. There's a buy still here for Carmine Core. This is not done yet, but that's big information. Martin, though, a lifeline given the Carmine Core of the back of his start. That is everything they needed, but with this man still standing, there is no safety. He could still change around. Does he read it again? The adjustment, not wanting to play from the catwalk itself, considering maybe they already thought about it, but it's his presence again. He is the one that gatekeeps this round. He needs to hold this angle. He needs to catch one. Two, is he ready for this? Are they ready for this? You can see Mind Freak moving closer as well. Starting to get curious. Oh, see just how close it is. Something gives it the up The timing! Here. The timing! What? I thought he was going to... Mind Freak? Mind Freak Play not going to be able to do much more. Martin is absolutely activating here. And it's all on Forsaken. Where are you? A 1v4. And Jort, this deserves OT. And Martin. The hero of the hour, the hero of Carmine Core, getting them up to 12. And of course, this game was going OT. Absolutely oh, fitting time. end to this map three in this series overall. Martin on the brink of 30 here, digging so deep. And KC just demonstrating such a solid understanding of how Paper X are playing in some of these mid rounds. A blank slate here. For round 25, operator in hand for something. <laughs> KC back on the defense now. What a great game. Absolute banger. <laughs> Man, you couldn't right ask there. us anything better than this. OT now. Something. Ooh, careful, Martin. Forced away. That gives something the angle. And <laughs> Are you shouldering that? You serious? Underestimating something when given that information is a critical error. And Magnum still positioned towards pizza, but Paper X very quickly disengaged. Spike not committed just yet, so Paper X looking to just find these picks. Tomazzi lucky to escape with his life here. Actually gets a tag onto something. Oh. And down to 80 HP. Him, so it was going to be a stun coming through from Magnum there, but. They pulled the rotation. Look at the minimap. KC stacking the chips towards B site. This is a great Justice adjustment. Now the knife does reveal the, you know, the horrible reality of the scenario. If you're a Carmine Core fan, that well, they're not coming B anymore. But they weren't quick on the uptake. They didn't overly dive into here. But the site will be theirs regardless. Do they go for almost the pre-take or do they wait? I think they're going to have to now. Monier very close by here. Gonna get himself propped up on Jen. Jamassi looking, maybe set something in motion here. Send the C's through first. 
Actually doesn't catch, it doesn't even go over the wall. No, that could have been big too. The paranoia is going to go through, but it's something to find a rate. Swing on in, Dubai stands and conquers Monnier, seals it. First in OT is Paper X's. Switching sides, match point. And a punch to the gut of KC. Who fought tooth and nail to take this all the way to overtime. <laughs> Something really starting to heat up now with this operator. He's a big game player. Undeniable value found by him. Ooh. Big timeout just came in. I just caught a glimpse of it. It's Carmine Core. We're in OT, so it kind of changes it. They're going to slow things down now. That's going to be, again, Eng right back in here. Magnum, again, this is very hard. Once you get into OT, calling becomes not impossible, but it's one of the hardest things, I feel, because it goes out of the normal realms of reality. You're not playing a standard game anymore. So I think this is a good time to pump the brakes and try and check back in, calm the nerves a little. You've still yeah, got a very sure. young this, team yeah, here. Exactly, yeah. Like we said, we talk about, obviously, KC's opportunity here to really claim one of the international titans of Valorant and a victory over them. Yes. Again, uncharted territory for this roster. Shin, the only real legacy really remaining from Carmichael, everybody else, newcomers other than Magnum to the international stage. Lots to consider here. Extremely tense as we enter round 26 here. Paper X drawing blood first in overtime. But back on the defense now. Same setup or similar once again from Carmichael. Actually, the, does the combo catch? No, it doesn't. Actually, finally, Monnier punished in this position. It's been so difficult to dislodge him from there. Oh, he's been near on prolific at his damage. How many rounds? Two kills, three kills, just impact. So a great adjustment and a really strong read. But there's bodies behind this, Mike. It's not just Monnier. They still have two other players, which I don't know if they're expecting that. But now, probably a lot of utility yeah. going to reveal who's present on this site. Again, the other switch up being Forsaken over towards a site. Look at the amount of space that Mind Freak has. Yeah, huge. A ton of information. But, Defy and Forsaken almost committed towards a site hold here. There's no getting out for the retake. No, you've got to stand. You've got to try and hold that ground. Martins in, but he didn't get what he wanted. Switching out to the shorty is Defy and Forsaken. Racking up bodies. They've held them back. They're on the verge. I can't believe it. Paper X. Keeping hope alive for themselves. Take it to OT. Beating Carmine Core. The European Reapers carry on. Heartbreak for KC. Some real positives to take away from here. And falling. So as we've already said, an international veteran like Paper X. The shining stars of EMEA. Yes. Gave it their all today. Oh, what a fantastic series from start to finish. I said, should be very, very proud of their performance. I mean, Martin becoming oh. absolutely electric towards the end of this series. Yes. Narey as well, potentially even, I mean, even bowing out here, potentially a top five overall statistically performance for him. Yes. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And bigger picture. Carmichael losing to Sentinels and Paper X is... Who's, yeah, who's going to turn the nose up for that? No, I, I give him credit where he's due, but on the other side, of course, the victors today who somehow have been almost sparked back to life. Whatever heretics did have turned these boys back into gods, and it is terrifying. The resilience shown, the... The, the sheer Paper X-ness that we saw on map three, <laughs> right? It was just like something that we I feel like I hadn't seen in a while. Some of that explosive potential, seeing just Forsaken, Monnier, and, and seeing now Monnier joining the others towards that top end of the board, 
is exceptional yeah, to me. Yeah, there's, there's, there's still some real questions about the comfort within this roster, sure, sure. the composition. I mean, Alex saying yesterday in the pre-match, we need to figure something else out. Like, W yeah. Gaming's in year three now. We need to figure something else out. But uh, still, they just look so good at it. They do. And I, 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 Joel, again, it's so hard being for, you know, the EMEA region. You're always rooting for KC in a way because it would have been great to see what they could do with such a young squad. But if anyone was going to put them home, I'm happy it was PaperX. What a fantastic run from them. Analyst desk, enjoy yourselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're supposed to like talk about the game, and then we're supposed to like break it down. I mean, I, I feel to... like all, all there is to say is that they've done it in the most paper wrecks way possible. <laughs> Going to map three, we're on an ascent game with with, with no Sova, with no Killjoy on either team. Uh, we we come uh, out okay. here and we see them popping off towards the end of the game. Something buys an up on Gecko in overtime. Bro, jumps he into mid swung and mid. There was no protection. He just went for it and then got a kill. And you're like, oh, just something, just doing something things. And that's the thing with this <sighs> team. They are they are inexplicable. They will yeah. pick a composition that makes no sense. They will make decisions that no one can fully explain, but they will win with it because they can seemingly make it work under any circumstances. And what a way, honestly, if Casey was going to go out in groups, there's no better way than this. Playing against a yeah. great team who pulls off some ridiculous stuff in OT. Yeah, I mean, you basically went to the wire there against uh, a squad that is no no shame in losing to. I mean, let's not forget, these are the runner-ups of the World Championship last year, for goodness sake. Only difference is, you know, they have a new player on the team. And if anything, I think that this just further confirmed for me that Monette belongs on this team, and he... Oh, that kid's got something special. He's got that dog in him for sure. He absolutely does. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and head down to the floor right now. We got Kukuka standing by with Monyet. Let's see I'm what he's going to say with the Horizon Monyet. Let's give it up for Paperx one more time. Oh. Congratulations on making playoffs, on making that top four. Before we even begin with the interview, real quick, if it were up to you, race, Omen, or Astra? Can I pick all of them? No, you have to choose one. I think I still say Omen, but... <clears throat> I'd say my race is speaking up right now. It's the momentum. Yes, exactly. We love that. Lo primero que le quería preguntar es, de entre todos los agentes que ha jugado, sobre todo por cómo le vemos cómo se mueve, eh, ¿cuál prefería? Parece ser que se queda con los controladores, pero dice que ahora mismo su su race está en ascenso, así que ya lo veremos. So, in two days, your team has defeated the two EMEA and sent them home. The two EMEA teams. What can we expect this time around from Paper Rex in playoffs? You'll never know what comma we're we using. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> do you say you do you see yourself lifting the trophy? I can jinx it. I mean, we'll see. Okay. Like one by one, you know. Le he preguntado que qué es lo que podemos esperar de Paper Rex después de que mandaran a casa a los dos equipos de EMEA. Dicen que desde luego lo que nunca vamos a saber es qué composición van a elegir y que bueno que no quiere todavía eh, como endemoniar, ¿no? Si si van a sacar ese ese trofeo o no. Uh, my last question is going to be. Tell us about, now that you mentioned the, those composi compositions, tell us about that composition in Lotus. Help us understand, right? You make those changes from one day to another, right? Like now you go with the Astra. It's a Lotus comp with no Sentinel. So, you know, help us understand why you make these changes. I mean, it's just like we're trying to watch comfortable for us. So we decided to change it to Astra Omen mm -hmm. since for a second was playing well on race like yesterday. So we decided to do that after we came back from the venue. And that's it? Did you just double duo the subway control and send it? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. I mean, we, sorry, we, we prepped something, but it's not like very big preparation, you know? Okay. Le he preguntado también por esa composición que han sacado en Lotus en la que deciden estar con el doble controlador y el doble duelista, pero ni centinelas ni nada de lo que solemos ver. Dicen que lo decidieron anoche, que Forsaken tuvo un buen game con Reyes y que, ¿por qué no? Estas son las típicas decisiones que te llevan a lo más alto. Well, thank you very much. We'll thank see you. you in three days during playoffs, but we're not done. Todavía nos queda una cosa por hacer. We're going now to the draw, so to see who is going to be facing off against each other in three days. Hola a todos chicos, estamos aquí para ver quién va a jugar en los playoffs, para ver cuáles son los primeros equipos que vamos a ver dentro de dos días. Uh, Victoria, let's let's do this. All right, so this draw is very simple and straightforward. Um, this is for playoffs, so you have two teams that are two and zero, two teams that are two and one. The two and zero teams will be higher seeds. They will play one of the quote unquote lower seeds. It is a new stage of the tournament, so there are no rules. Any matchup is is good to go, and it's a double elim, so there are no separation rules. Um, 
I think that's it. So if you want to just kind of um, you can give me one of these, and then we'll we'll see what the first team for the first match is. Okay. Perfect. All right. So the first team for the first match is going to be oh. Sentinels. Sentinels. Let's see. And then the well, by default, we'll do this. Okay. By default, the first team of the second match. So they don't play each other, but the first team in the other match is going to be Genji. Genji. Sentinels against Genji, dos de los equipos que se clasificaron eh, a los playoffs, los right. primeros. Yeah, there's two outcomes, so let's see who plays Sentinels. ¿Quién va a jugar contra Sentinels? Loud. <laughs> Sentinels contra... <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, by default, we're going to have Genji, Paper against Rex. Paper Rex, yes. Duelo de APAC, el Pacífico. Primero contra segundo. Bueno, estos son los equipos, chicos. Nos vemos dentro de dos días en los playoffs. Muchas gracias a todos por venir. Un abrazo muy fuerte y nos vemos. Thank you so much for that, guys. And <laughs> that was never was not bound happen. to happen. There Matt. was no world like... where Sentinels and Love didn't play each other first. <laughs> I round. mean, at some, like, I, I was saying, I was like, you know, I'd be fine if it was like, you know, yeah, a little America's fight, a yeah. Pacific fight, America's fight, Pacific fight. No, instead we're just gonna. It's just too fun. Let's, let's, let's run it back. Yeah. Let's run it back. <laughs> let's run it back. Yeah. Let's run our regional finals uh, back. Oh my word! Firstly, Mike, good to have you here, pal. Uh, that was insane. From from a from a, <laughs> yeah. from a color commentator yeah. perspective, just so that we can give the viewers at home just a little bit of context. How how fun is it to commentate I mean, uh, those games? I said this in the cast as well. It's always <laughs> nice to hear that insight from Ang, where It's just like, yeah, we don't really know what they're gonna do. And it's like that Who when you're does? watching it, you're like, well, Bro, what, what is going to happen next? Monet literally said to Kakuka, we didn't know what we were yeah. going to pick. Yeah. So it's like, how how can you know what, your oppo what you're going to do with your opponent? Exactly. And, and the number of times we've seen examples <laughs> of this on the international stage from Paperx, yeah. it just goes to show, again, you can't really take much away from KC. Like, uh, they played an outstanding oh, yeah. series oh, yeah. of Valorant today. They absolutely did. I, I mean, in particular, I was so impressed by that Lotus. Don't get me wrong. The paper X scum. Yeah, yeah, there were other discussions. Not the finest showing, but I, I did think their calling on that map was yeah. on point. We saw a lot of these players step up. Uh, the rookies, honestly, on this team, Martin and Nerite, both having exceptional yes. series here against Paper X and throughout this tournament. People will walk away from this and be like, oh, they got grouped. It's that one thing. But both matches, Sentinels, two or three rounds difference, they win that game. Yeah. This game against Paper X, same damn thing. It's over. Time. Uh, literally one round difference in OT. Yeah, that, that's it, all it would have been. It, it's a bit of a heartbreaker uh, for, for Carmine Corbett. It's not an indication of this team. They just happened to run it. They, they got introduced to the big leagues because they, yeah. they ended up meeting this paper team first time and you're just getting shenanigans. I, I mean, look at look at the run they've had to face it. They're yeah. up against Sentinels who are looking in insane form. Yep. Yep. And paper X, who, like we said, were an international veteran. Yep. Like they've, they've come to events time and time again and put up these sort of explosive performances and, and tested some of the best in the world. Yeah. But man, does that set us up for a wild yeah, playoff. I mean, yeah. We're starting with the regional <laughs> the rematches, graphics. which is like, okay, it's a regional rematch. But after that, the, the games we can get here, I yeah. want to see Sentinels Paper X so, so bad. bad. Yeah. So bad. I want to see Loud Paper X also, because yeah. both those teams are going crazy with the compositions and stuff. It is, I, I feel like all these matchups are going to be really interesting. We have such unique styles throughout this one as well. We have Sentinels balance of like individual risk and like pre-cooked stuff stuff and God, counter strating <laughs> you have genji's fantastic fundamentals you have inexplicable paper rex and then you have allowed who who are finally looking back in you know like championship form just as they get into playoffs and the concern being if paper x just start going down the rabbit hole before <laughs> playoffs i mean they've already started today right yeah, yeah. they're happy to just bring out a composition not really know what the hell's going it just on feels a lot like copenhagen it's got the Copenhagen kind vibes. of vibes. It's got yeah. Copenhagen vibes. Yeah. You, know you know what's wild, too? We're, we're having the tournament in EMEA, and both of the teams go home. And it, it's a tragedy for this crowd. But I, I'm also just so sad about it, because both of those matches, for Heretics and Carmen Court to be eliminated, both yeah. just a round away. I think this tournament is proof how close yes. every region is, how close every team is, that people were doubting Pacific coming in. Both their teams are in playoffs. People yeah. didn't know what Loud would look like. They've stepped up. They're in playoffs. People doubted Sentinels. They're like, 
everyone was here to play. I mean, Benji alluded to this, right? This year is going to be a very different landscape. There are some yes. new contenders here, and I think even there losing are. both EMEA teams, uh, I think it's a real positive in terms of the performance, in terms of the demonstration, the level that they've shown here in Madrid, definitely a positive to take away. Oh, yeah. this In no way, shape, or form is this an indication because I, we were saying it leading up into this, this is one of the most competitive, wild tournaments that we've ever had. You it was said impossible it, to predict. It was impossible to predict. Everyone came here to play. This is the peak. This is like what Valorant, what Valorant Esports, what this sport is all about. And it is, era. it is freaking awesome to watch, man. I'm having a blast. Just like a little little, little guy just enjoying it on the side. It's amazing <laughs> stuff. But folks, we're going to get Mike out of here because he just casted a game that gave him a headache more than likely. Uh, same thing for <laughs> Mimi Tambien. Yeah. But uh, yeah. guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you all at home for sticking with us throughout the week. We hope you had a really good time checking out the Swiss stages and all that good stuff. Make sure you let everyone know what you felt about the event. Use that hashtag uh, uh, Masters Madrid as well as hashtag V. CT. But the good news is we will be back here Thursday, and it's time for the playoffs, baby. This is going to go in, and I'm so excited. We'll see you then, folks. Take care and have a great week. It's the rubber band match between two teams that could very well go the distance. Two teams synonymous with their regions. EDG has been the number one Chinese representative, and Loud was the one to stop them last year. They have a chance to do it again. It's, they've got to be extremely oh. careful. Tui's needs to time this just right. Over for 4v3, and might be down to just one. Very few defenders left standing. In fact, now just one. Smoggy's on all fours. Ao Dong tries to get back no, to the no, 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 no. <laughs> Be right up behind them. First kills free, and he'll close it. Loud come in with one of the most dominant performance we've seen in the tournament. They are one step away from making it to the top four. We've hit a reset point. We've gone into sunset. Man, am I worried about EDG. And this is a confident looking Kong Kong. Combat, How Dong though wants to take down last force forward, and Tui's was waiting. A quick double for him, a triple in fact. The spam almost eliminating How Dong. Wall bang in, it's just one left. They're cleaning house. It's left all onto nobody. And the fact is, nobody is standing in Loud's way, closing out this series. A obliteration of EDG as Loud make their way to the playoffs. Both teams here looking to move past their opponent in this competition. This is going to be a tough game. Garden Court, they've been tested before, but this is going to be something they've never experienced in EMEA. Monier going to be put to test, put to task. Oh, that's rough. Blinded and Monier just popping up over towards Shybox. This guy's on for it. He's absolutely on the money today. Forsaken going to play enemy. forward. Paper X still starting oh. to thrive, coming alive. Divide and Forsaken in unison. They're not going. Oh, they do enemy. swing ahead. I mean, it's Paper X. Nare can see you just fine. It goes in for more. Carmine Gore just about staying alive. Monier is getting audacious. But Paper X get to 13 and claim map one. It's yeah. tough to mount a comeback versus a team like Paper X. Can, we, can he do this? Can he really pop off here? Oh, but Devi just... Oh, he's got my him. God, he's got him! This time he gets his three. Oh, he didn't get caught with a stun! The showstopper is huge! Monier can't hit the shot on the cross, and now it's all on my friend! Shit! Oh, what a way to come back in! Come on, my God! In here. That's a freebie! And now there's problem. Oh! Martin, he's caught him. Carmine Court are in the server. We might actually have a game on our hands for Paranoia landed. But so oh. was one of the players ahead of it. Oh. I'm waiting to see. Oh my god! No! Come on, Finn! I think the operator posting up here who wins out. It's Martin to find another pin. Him down, ring a ring a Rosie. Magnum playing with it. Oh, it's perfect! Back to business. There it is. Find Sebastian. That's gonna be so revealing. Oh, another one, something! Switching out to the shorty is Divine Forsaken, racking up bodies! They've held them back, they're on the verge! I can't believe it! Paper X, taken to OT, beating Carmine Core!